Good morning, everyone! I hope everyone is having a good morning. Welcome on in! Welcome on in, Zamboti! Good morning! And Sleeves, good morning! And Saki, good morning! And Cthulhu, thank you so much for the luck! Take care of yourself! Welcome on in, everyone! We are doing some cosplay to end the week. We last stream of the week. And then we're- I, I will say I've lost my needle, sorry. <laughs> I might seem a little distracted, it's because a minute ago I had a needle and it's just gone. Um, I have a sneaking suspicion I've sweeped off the, the desk with my sleeves. But it's okay. I mean, I can get another one. <laughs> I'd, I'm just worried. There's a rogue needle around here somewhere, but I'm not exactly sure where it is. Oh dear. Well, we'll, we'll find it eventually, I'm absolutely sure. <laughs> so, Bodie, good morning. I hope you're doing well. And Anime, good morning. Welcome on in. How you doing? Let me, let me switch screens really quickly. Hello! Welcome on in. I hope everyone is having a good day. I hope everyone's had a good week as well. Also, there goes my blanket. Fix that for me. There you go. <laughs> we're going to be working more on this today. So the plan is we're going to get all of the little bows done and then go back in and do some of the sequining as well. I don't know how much of that we're going to get done today. We'll, we'll do as much as we physically can. Oh, good. God damn it. It's been one of those mornings, you know, where it's just like, oh, busy, busy. But I'm also going very, very slow because it's the end of the week. So I'm busy, busy in the slowest way possible. <laughs> Ah oh dear, doing better at mum's place and there's pools and lots of trees here. Oh heckin' lovely, heckin' lovely. And Evie, you had to wake up early for an appointment? I hope the appointment's gone well at least. If you've already been, I hope that it's gone okay. Ah oh dear. Um, real quick, I'm just gonna double check because I just suddenly remembered I meant to look this up off stream. Are clocks changing for us this weekend in the UK? I think they are, right? Um... I do 20, 24. Uh, 31st of March. Okay, so it's not this weekend, it's next weekend. That's fine. Yeah, I was like, at some point I have to mention that we're going to have a clock's change because for everyone else, I'm going to suddenly start getting an hour earlier. But yes. Pina, good morning. Welcome on in. I hope you're doing well. Uh, next weekend. Yeah, you're right, Sleeves. It, it is next weekend. Yeah, this weekend we're fine. And so everything next week will be the same. But the weekend after that, uh, our clocks change and I believe I'll be getting an hour early f earlier for everyone. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, it's always it's always interesting when it's daylight savings times because everyone changes at different times and all, all countries pick different months, uh, what do you call it, different weeks. Because I know America went back a couple weeks ago so they're already done. Oh uh, dear. Heck. I made a pizza yesterday. I made it very badly smashed. Ooh, garlic oregano oil thingy. Ooh, I can fancy. Lovely. Ah, oh dear. Not yet, but I think it will go well. Just talking about the next second in this transition. That's very fair. Hell yeah. I'm glad that it's moving along for you. You're not getting stuck in one place for too long. That sounds good. Even if nothing's happened yet. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Ah, oh dear. Yee, yee. I don't think I have too much else to tell you, to be honest, about last night. Uh, we did game, and then I had to make a load of fo phone calls, which was really fun, but it wasn't actually that bad. I I'm being dramatic. It was fine. I was just on hold a lot, which is like, fine. And then I played Stardew Valley for pretty much the rest of the day, because I've started a new game, and I I'm enjoying it. I'm having a nice time going through all the starting stuff again. I don't know. It's just fun. I'm enjoying it. Oh, dear. Also, I won't be able to go to the pools yet, but I will hang out around the trees and the hammocks. Oh, I love a hammock. We don't get to go to hammocks very often here because it's just not really something you see around. But the few times that I have been able to hang in a hammock, although I say that, whenever we were on big boats, like, you know, the really, really big, like, like, uh, ships you, you sleep on overnight, but not cruise ships, like sailing ships, but you sleep on them overnight, right? Um... Uh, we would have hammocks instead of beds <laughs> because they sway with the ship better so because the ship is not big enough to like negate waves you still get pretty big waves but you're more likely to stay in a hammock when you're asleep so they'd all have these like blue hammocks everywhere so you'd see like triple bunk beds of hammocks effectively <laughs> going up and down the hallways where people could sleep which was honestly it's my main experience with hammocks and it's a good it's a good experience. I will say my my bed was right next to like the propeller, which meant every time we got stuck in a fishing net, it'd be like, uh, I need to go let someone know because the wall next to my bed is vibrating again. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, so my mom's even a vacation place that they rent out from out of fuel. So they have like many tables and pools and hammocks and cabins. It's awesome. And they all have pastel cap colors and nice wood. Hell yeah, that sounds incredibly aesthetic. <coughs> what an 
nice place to hang out. Do you get to hang out there for a while? How long are you there for, Somboti? I feel like that's a really nice kind of vibe to like, you know, how to put it? Absorb inspiration. <laughs> A nice place to absorb inspiration. I find going to the beach is a nice place to absorb inspiration. I don't know what the real word for this is, but like, you know when you go places to feel inspired, even if you're not inspired by the thing? Absorbing nature kind of vibes? I find the beach is a good place. I like to sit there and listen to the waves and feel inspired. <laughs> Oh dear. We went to the beach the other day with family, but it was really odd. I don't know what it's going on, but there were shoe soles everywhere. I'm wondering if maybe an event had happened and like a lot of shoes got left in the water, but there were shoe soles everywhere, but just the sole, just the bottom bit of the shoe. Oh dear. You go live right when I'm getting ready for bed, Mo! Oh, good morning. I hope you get some good sleep soon. I'm assuming you've sorted all the stuff for the, the show this week, so you don't have to stay up late today. <laughs> I'm just gonna hide for a second. Sorry about that, sorry about that. There you go, we work, we work, we work, we work. So, so sorry. Ah, oh, there runs in boobs chest scuba! Have a lovely look. If you're lurking today, I hope you have a lovely, lovely day. And have a lovely weekend as well. Ah, oh, dear. I've been working on printing some things and finishing up some little bits for the show. Nice, nice. Uh, actually, today, I'm very excited. So we're gonna do our normal stream today, probably go for around six hours kind of thing. But after stream, we're gonna go eat some cheesecake. I'm very excited. I say we, I'm going to go eat some cheesecake. I'm afraid I can't bring you with me. We're gonna go eat some cakes. I'm very excited. It's cake time, or mainly just because a newer cheesecake place has opened recently. And today is a good day for us to go see what they've got and hoping that it's good. Uh, yeah, because with not very many reviews because newer. So it's time to go take some notes, see if we like them. We don't have a local cheesecake place. So uh, yeah, I'm very excited. Well, we, I mean, we guess we do now, but we didn't. So it's exciting. Ah, oh dear. I had to rebuild part of my printer with an upgrade part. Oh, nice. Exciting, though. Sad time. I'm so sorry. I'm afraid I cannot bring you with me for cheesecake. Uh, but I will be going. I can, I, can, I can bring my review book with me and I can let you know how good it was or how maybe I didn't like it. Normally, I'm not too picky about cheesecake. The only thing is it can't be too sweet. Again, like, I think that's partly why I like cheesecake more than, than regular cake, though, a lot of the time. Because I think regular cake, they often do, especially with the icing, it gets really, really sweet really quickly, especially when you're buying it from a chain or something like that. Whereas cheesecake, I feel like, tends to be less sweet. Not always, but tends to be. Um, and I think that's probably why I like it as much, because it's soft and not as sweet, and I need that. I just can't do really, really sweet. Have a good sleep whenever, yeah! I mean, Vile should, I'm assuming, be streaming later, so we should be able to see Vile and we could be like, hey Vile, did you sleep? Did you get some good Zs? Good morning from Norway Pie, good morning. I hope you're doing well. Welcome morning, good morning from Wales. Also, I have finally had a stab and, oh, stable house connection here, nice! Uh, and I'll be able to watch for not all stream. Oh, if you need to nip out any time, you're more than welcome to, Zombo. But lovely to have you here. Hell yeah. Cheesecake's the best. I'm I'm such a big fan of cheesecake. I love it so much. And Shondala, how you doing? Welcome on in. I hope you're doing well as well. What place have we selected for the cheesecake? I, I can't tell you the place because it would dox me because it's a local shop. But it is, it, I listen, it is a, it is a new and I'm excited to try it. We also don't really get new places opening near us that often because it's like not the biggest place. Um, so yeah, exciting. All I need though, I will say, the one thing that this area needs, well, I'm sorry, I'm like itching my forehead a lot because it's like really dry at the moment. Um, yeah, what we really need near us is a cafe. I don't have a, a cafe near me. <laughs> Which is probably madness, Danny, but we just don't. We have no cafes near us. Um, I think the nearest cafe is about like close to a 45 minute walk. If, well, maybe like a bit longer than that. Uh, so it's like not super close. You can't just like nip out the house and go to the cafe. So I I would love a cafe to move in nearby. If if anyone who, who happens to be living <laughs> wants to open a cafe, that would be great because we just don't have that here. Oh dear. Look, I do housework. Oh, good luck with the housework. I hope that it goes well. You're currently running on four hours of sleep. Oh no. I hope we manage to get some more sleep soon. Heck. 
uh, partially why I need to go to bed. Yeah, because you're streaming later. Go to bed. Val, go sleep. Don't worry. You're not missing out on anything. What we're going to be doing today, uh, I'll, I'll take you into other cam to show you because other cam will give you a bit more detail. Um, we're going to be working more on this piece, which is for the collector costume. Uh, we did start doing the bows at the bottom the other day, but I started to get a migraine on stream, so we had to cut it a little bit short. However, we have done a lot of work. This is a jacket piece. It ends up sitting around here, goes under the arm, over the shoulder, and across the chest like this um and it will be edged and have pretty goldy bits on it and stuff like that but we're just not at that stage yet what we need to do is get the base fabric ready for the rest of it excuse me sorry uh no issues i'm excited to hear your reviews yeah unfortunately if it was a chain i could be like well you could try it elsewhere in the uk kind of thing but it's a bit it, it would kind of give away exactly who it is <laughs> Lazy, good morning. Welcome on in. I hope you're doing well. Welcome, welcome. We have an amazing mini cheesecake place. Mini cheesecake? It's like two inch... Oh, no, two bite size uh, cheesecakes with various flavors. That sounds so good. I don't think that's what this is. I think they do like slices. But this might be not so dissimilar, I guess. I'm very excited to try it. Ah, oh, dear. If, I mean, I kind of hope they do some kind of variety pack where you can get like a little bit of everything as well. I don't know. I don't know. I guess I'll find out when we go down there. The place Teacup uh, got, has got cafes and restaurants all within walking distance. Yeah, we're a bit probably more remote than, than Teacup because, yeah, we don't. <laughs> we, we have within walking distance a small, sh a couple of small shops. Um, but nothing like, yeah, no, no, no like cafes or anything, unfortunately. It's okay, we, we've got a car now, so we can get to cafes. But yeah, without that, it would be a bit tricky. <laughs> Reminds me of bubble wrap, you want a pot? I saw that in Discord. They are little pillows. So this one, it's like each of these feels like a softer little pillow. So it's like, it's a little less like bubble wrap, but more like, I don't know. I feel like it, if you were resting your head against it, if you had like a full pillow built up behind it, it'd probably feel really satisfying because it's like tiny little pillows on top of a pillow. Yeah. I just want to squish the fabric so bad. It's got a really good squish to it. It's it's very squishy. Yeah, squishy is the right way of putting it. Yeah, it's squishy because these are all like tiny little pillows. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> oh, Danielle, good morning. Welcome on in. I hope you're doing well. I wish I was in the UK. I would definitely have opened a cafe near you. Someone's missing an amazing cup. Aw. Yeah, but like literally, I will <laughs> I will go there every day. Open a cafe near me. I, <laughs> I have nowhere to go for coffee. I would go. I think that's the other thing is I, I, I find for me, it's really relaxing to just go to a coffee shop without your phone and just drink a coffee and not do anything else you know and so like in previous places where we used to live that was what i would do <coughs> when we had a cafe near us um unfortunately this is not even it like the last house also didn't have a cafe particularly close to it either i think if anything actually the last place we lived the the coffee shop was even further away because you couldn't physically walk to it or it take like a two hour walk um so you had to catch like a bus to get to the coffee shop um, and the, yeah, it wasn't a quick bus either. It's like, you're thinking about half an hour on the car or bus to get to the closest coffee shop. <laughs> so we are less remote than we used to be technically, but, um, yeah, no, it still, it still takes a while to get anywhere for like just a simple cup of coffee, you know? Uh, do, is the image on your screen how you're making the collector cosplay? Yes. So we have the, the p two pictures. One of them is the collector as they appear in the show. And the other one is my redesign of the character using only techniques from the 16th century and making it fancy, fancy, fancy. <laughs> super, super fancy. Oh dear, for you, Gav. Thank you for the hydrate as well. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. Ah oh dear. I'm okay, trying to chill before roughly. Oh bless you, I hope it's not too bad. I hope it goes as well as it physically can. It has been no. This place is a coffee shop. I know. Where are my coffee shops? Where can I just go sit and do nothing for like an hour? That's so cool. Thank you. Yeah, that's what we're working towards. It's a big project, but we're getting there. You know, every every stream we get a little closer to finishing something. I I, I can't wait just to finish the jacket at this point. But we have some things we need to do, and also some things I need to purchase. And yeah, I I. I <laughs> I gotta work some things out because uh, at some point we need to do some clay, like monster clay modeling to make a silicon mold for resin uh, for part Fish. of the back piece. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. We can manage it. I, I believe in us. It, I did clay like 10 years ago. It'll be fine. <laughs> I'm very out of practice with clay. I think that's the thing that's really putting me off. And also, I don't like the feeling of clay on my hands. 
<laughs> so that's also putting me off. No, what that means. Fish whispers are all that you need. Thank you for the fish whispers, Gail. Happy fishes. I'm glad to hear you're doing well. I hope you have an absolutely lovely weekend as well. I'll be taking one day at a time. Yeah, that's fair. Clay, yeah, so we need to do... Like, so there's gonna be, the basically the back piece is gonna have like an emblem in it. There's also one here, but I think that end, might end up being 3D printed, but the one on the back's a little bit bigger. So what we need to basically make is a collection of beads that will lock together and, and with a couple of bigger pieces in the middle, right? Uh, we can't go too big with any one piece because then it's gonna make it very difficult to like flex in it and such. And while it's not a stretchy thing, you know, I, I don't want it to be too big, but it's gonna be larger than my resin printer would have allowed, which means we'll be making it in clay, um, <laughs> which I am a little nervous about, but we've got this and I believe, I believe in us, we can do it. I'm just not that good at clay. <laughs> um, I, I think a lot of artists have areas, right, where they really struggle. Clay is one that I've considered consistently struggled with. I did a two year course to be good at clay and I still, I cannot, I, it just never sunk into my brain, you know? Um, so <laughs> yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have to do that at some point because again, I, my resin printer is not big enough for this piece and I, I need it to be like pretty nice, but I'm nervous, to be honest, I am nervous. How was the game yesterday? Maggie, good morning, welcome on in. It was really, really good actually. Literally, I left stream and I went down and talked to Shiny and Shiny was like, did you enjoy it? And I was like, yeah, like it was actually fantastic. Definitely one of the better games I've played recently. Like I wasn't experiencing any bugs. The, the, the puzzles felt a little easy, but fair. Like I actually had a really good time with that game yesterday, genuinely. Like I'm very excited to play the rest of it next Thursday because it was really fun and really smooth and very satisfying. Yeah, it was good, I enjoyed it. I loved the art, the music was pretty good, a bit intense at times, but pretty good. Yeah, I had a really nice time. I wouldn't say it's scary. I, I understand why it comes under the horror tag at times, but I wouldn't say that it's scary at all. But I would say like it, it genuinely is a fun puzzle game. It's really, really good. Like, yeah, if you like, definitely, I see why people say stuff like, if you like Little Nightmares, you should try it. Cause it does feel very Little Nightmares-esque. I think as well, considering that I had a lot of issues with my Little Nightmares playthrough with bugs, playing a similar game that hasn't got those same bugs in it has been really nice. This isn't a dig at Little Nightmares specifically, just to be clear. Like I also did enjoy Little Nightmares and I do think Little Nightmares is a little darker um, and I did enjoy it. But uh, I, you know, we did have some problems at times, which did take away from it a little bit for me. Whereas, yeah, no, I've just been having a really nice time. It's been really smooth, enjoyed it, would recommend. And it's on half price sale right now. I think the only thing is to bear in mind, I think it is only gonna be like a six hour game. So if that's like, you want a longer game, maybe not. And again, it isn't actually scary. <laughs> so if you're looking for horror, it's not really horror to be honest. Uh, that you can have a resin printer. I have a second-hand resin printer, yeah. You know Amazonia Cosplay that sometimes pop into uh, chat? When they upgraded their 3D resin printer, they gave me their old one very, very kindly. Uh, as a surprise, I will say, I didn't know that I was getting that. Um, so I have it downstairs. It just needs to be unpacked, which means resin printers, very smelly, don't really want to be in the house. We do actually have a really well-built shed outside. So we're going to pop it up in there and then uh, that way I don't have to smell it. <laughs> I can keep it out. It's like a proper insulated shed. It's it's very nice. So it'll be nice and safe out there. Don't worry. But we just can't yet because we're still renovating everything else. <laughs> uh, have you heard the fan main Owl House song based off the collector? It's called Make Believe. I have not. And I might have a little. I'm interested in what other th things people are making for the collector because obviously I'm doing that too. Oh yeah, I'll have a look at that after stream. Thanks, Peanut. Also, Clues, good morning. Welcome on in. I hope you're doing well. Good morning. And unlike have a lovely welcome back. I hope the cleaning is going well. Mikey, good morning. How are you doing? Uh, it's called Guilt. Uh, G-Y-L-T though, like guilt. <laughs> and I believe we don't, I don't know that this is true, but somebody else mentioned it might have been a Stadia or Stadia exclusive, but it's now on Steam. So anyone can play it. And it's like, yeah, if you like Little Nightmares, it's like very similar. And no, it's not called Gat. <laughs> no, guilt. <laughs> y is in the same place, but ends in LT. Oh uh, dear. But yeah, no, it was really, really good. I really, yeah, it's simple. It's not difficult, I will say. Like, it's not a complicated game and it's not scary. I don't know, but was Little Nightmares scary? I feel like Little Nightmares has a lot of horror elements and there's a lot of horrific imagery. 
But I don't feel like Little Nightmares is a scary game either. So, I don't know. I, it may, maybe that's just me <laughs> and my broken horror brain. But I just don't think... I think both of them fit into the character category of like taking inspiration from horror while not really being that scary themselves. I like Little Nightmares and I liked Guilt. Uh, and I've, I've enjoyed both of them. I haven't finished Guilt though, so I will say... I have to hold off on the story review because I haven't finished it and you know I'm a <laughs> Come, I, I hope that by next week I don't suddenly hate it but you never know you never know I'm also still a little nervous about where this needle's gone but until we find it uh, I think this needle should fit through the beads just fine and we'll do that one just said not yet <laughs> Uh, one of the other D&D group has a resin printer, so we had our minis for our current campaign! Yes! Yeah, once I have it set up, there's a lot of things I would love to use it for. Uh, I'm, I have done 3D modelling in the past, and I have used 3D printers, but this was when I was still studying. So, like, it, it was... <laughs> 3D printers have come a long way in 10 years, right? And when I was using 3D printers was when they were, like, well, 10 years ago, right? So I have done 3D modelling, but not on a resin printer, or not for a resin printer, I should say, and not... I guess with a lot of the new stuff that's come out, with a lot of new things, with things being able to be more detailed. Because, like, back when I was using that, even if you're printing very simple models, you would be left sanding for hours, because you'd be, like, have these little lumpy, donutty things. Uh, they were very finickety. I mean, I think they are still very finickety. <laughs> I don't think that's changed about 3D printing. But uh, yeah, like getting details was just not an option back in the day. Like that's not something we had. So I, I will need to probably retrain myself quite a bit because I'm used to 3D printers being a, it's kind of annoying to work with. <laughs> as cool as they are. Uh, I remember them being very annoying. So I need to re-jig re my brain with that at some point. Oh, also I should set my timer, shouldn't I? Yeah, we'll do, we'll do, there we go. There we go. We, we, I have just kind of started, sorry. Oh dear, I don't know when it shifted for me. <coughs> oh dear, but I treat short as a real bonus selling point for me regarding games, like something you could finish in a day off. That's very fair. I think, God, I have a lot of opinions about horror games these days, to be honest. They're not like unpopular opinions or anything like that, to be honest. Like, I think a lot of people think the same sort of stuff. I like a good horror game I can sink my teeth into and play like a few times, you know? And like, especially if it builds over the, over the, what do you call it, over the weeks while I'm playing it, I love that. But I just don't feel like it happens very often. <laughs> and I feel like a lot of people kind of try and it's not quite right. And I'm not going to call anything out in particular. But uh, yeah, no, I just, I, I like, I like feeling genuinely scared playing games. And I, I don't get that very often at this point. And I don't think it's because of me. I've not gotten harder. <laughs> It's, it's, I think unfortunately there just aren't a lot of games that are doing that anymore. I don't know why. Do people like not like that anymore? Has that gone out of fashion? I feel like it hasn't. But maybe, I think I'm also biased because I hang around in a lot of communities that really like the same kind of stuff as I do. Oh dear. But no, I, I can get behind a short horror game like, like Guilt, to be honest. Something like that where it's, again, I had a really genuinely good time playing it. It's not scary. And I, I don't believe that it really is a horror per, per se. But it's a really good puzzle game, and the setting is fun. And I, I will say, as much as it took me by surprise, being able to do stealth kills <laughs> in in a game, it, it, I feel like it adds something. I don't know. There is something about being able to, to a little girl sneaking up behind a monster and doing like a doom-like finisher is very satisfying. I don't know. I enjoyed that. <laughs> I, I'm glad, I, you know, again, it took me by surprise because I wasn't expecting to see that. Because it is very Little Nightmares-esque otherwise. But it was kind of fun. I liked that. I'm kind of glad they added that. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad that's a thing. Makes me very happy. Oh. No. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. Ah, oh, dear. Yeah, it sounds like you would scream up playing guilt. Honestly, maybe. Maybe. I got a filament printer, but I haven't used it over a year, sadly. I should be using it more. I mean, when you have the time, I'm sure it'll still be there. But I don't think it would, you know, when you have it, you can use it whenever you want, right? As soon as something comes up that you want to print. Oh, is that the short list? Oh, wait, do you two know each other? Thanks a lot for what you do, sir. I've been following you for years now. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah, I should say, for anyone who doesn't know Mikey, very, very talented artist. Whenever they stream their art on Twitch, it's an absolute joy to watch. Really fun, uh, I don't know, there's a word for it, but someone who's really good at chatting. 
very very good at chatting like you can just chill and lurk and listen to ridiculous conversations happening in like history while they do really beautiful art it's a very nice place to hang out i am a chronic lurker <laughs> could they always stream in the evenings and it's like it's late i will be quiet because at some point i will fall asleep but uh no they're a really really lovely streamer to watch and genuinely 100 recommend if you haven't gone and checked out their art before it's so good oh dear what there we go we would have would have uh, the eye friends. The eye friends were cute though. They were cute. They did get the one good jump out of me. One good. I got one good jump there. I'll take that. That did freak me out a little bit. I'm trying to think of stuff that I I wanted to play, and um, like I, we've got through a lot of it. I want to go back for the old Resident Evils. I will say I have some experience with old Resident Evil, but like not the remade versions. Like just the old ones. <laughs> I don't know how close the remade ones are. I'm assuming pretty close. So I might have quite a bit of experience with those. Uh, but it's difficult to say until I play them. I want to go back to 6 at some point. 6 is a terrible game. That's not a terrible game. That's, no, 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 I won't be that harsh. 6 is a ridiculous game. But I would like to go back to it at some point, I think. Because, you know, sometimes you need that kind of ridiculous gameplay in your life. And I, I like Resident Evil 6. I'm going to be a... That, that is a controversial opinion. But I do like Resident Evil 6. It's stupid and it makes me happy. <laughs> Oh dear. I really enjoyed Big Friend. I liked Big Friend too. Also, Pigeon, good morning. Welcome on in. I hope you're doing well. I uh, had a bad experience with leveling it. Oh, I see. So the first head dig down to the printer mat. Ah. Yeah, stuff like that can easily put you off. 100%. Oh dear. Sub 20 hours is ideal, but I get scared easily. The RE2 remake was terrifying last time around, but nothing recent jumps to mind. I haven't played the remake for, uh, for two. The main thing I remember about the early games is there are certain, like, it's a toned down. It's a little toned down, which I, I know is because I've played them in the wrong order. Like, I played some of the later games, went back to the, 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 the earlier games. Order was out the window, so I was used to stupidity before, you know, before it went off the rails. Oh, dear. Cheers saying that, but I'm just another crafty fan. No, no, they are, you are very, don't you dare. <laughs> How dare. <laughs> no, you're a very, very talented artist. And it's amazing to see the work you make. And it's amazing to watch it come together on Twitch. Very, very cool. Ah, oh dear. Good morning, Happelin. Good morning. Welcome on in. How you doing? How goes? How goes in Happelin land? Ah, oh dear. I got my printer back up and running over a week ago. And I'm printing something almost every day. Lots of stuff needed. Well, yeah, because you're doing your big competition. Which I guess you have like a month left on now at this point. How are you feeling? You gonna make it? You get? You, you got this? We believe in you, Vile. Uh, you know, if if necessary, I'll I'll stop distracting you on stream this today. Well, no more. No, I won't even I won't even redeem a race even once. <laughs> if it means you get it done on time. I heard six is all about the co-op. It is. Uh, so uh, I will say six is buggy. <laughs> it's ridiculous. The story goes completely off the rails. Um, it is not scary, but it is stupid. <laughs> and uh, you can play it co-op. But it is, uh, so we, I played it with a friend, a friend who had never experienced Resident Evil at all. The first Resident Evil they ever played was six. And it is a joy. It is a joy to play a game like that with someone else. I think you need to play it co-op because if you play it on your own, it's gonna be frustrating. But if you can find someone who's relatively new to the Resident Evil franchise and make them play six, <laughs> it, it, it is a joy. Like I played it with Shifty, who's been a mate of mine for like 10 years at this point. And uh, yeah, he never played Resident Evil before. And we jumped in with six. There's just some really stupid stuff in it. Like one of the bits that really gets me, which I, I love to this day, in the I think it's in the first chapter, they have a mechanic for making the floor shake. And when the floor shakes, you cannot avoid it. Your character does this weird, massive stumbling animation. <laughs> And, and, um, <laughs> and basically it stops you for like a good 10 seconds where everything can catch up to you and it's completely unavoidable. <laughs> it's stuff like that. So like on your own, it's really frustrating because you're like, God damn it game, why are you doing this? But with a friend watching someone else go through it, it's like, I was laughing so hard I couldn't even see the screen at times. It's like that kind of fun. I really, really enjoy it. I really, I, I'm a, I, six is a terrible game, but <laughs> it's really fun. Oh dear. 
And like the boss, it, it does the, like the classic Resident Evil thing right from the start of like the bosses just gain in intensity every time you think you've killed them again and again and again. It's just, it's 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 great. I love it. Um, if you can't tell, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Six, even though Six is not a good game. <laughs> uh, I'm sleepy. How goes it here? I'm also sleepy, but I'm also excited because we're going to go try. There's a new cheesecake place is open nearby Haplin, and we're going to go try their cheesecakes after stream, and I'm very excited about it. So <laughs> as sleepy as I am, I'm fully ready to go completely sugar high later, trying all of the cheesecakes. It does mean at the end of stream, I need to remember to take the, the cheese pills so that I don't die, but I'm very excited about it. Ah, dear, food is very important for us beings. It is very important. We have foodies here. We love food. And also just generally it is food. Food is important. Ah, dear. I've been a good friend. Yeah, Brecky, nice. Very hecking good. Very good. Um, oh, is that Blapple? Oh my god. Ew, Blapple. How did the charity fundraising go yesterday? <laughs> went really well i passed everybody on to kit afterwards because i saw kit had just gone live so it was like perfect we'll send them all on to kit ew ew is that blaffle disgusting ew in my chat how'd the charity go <laughs> i thought it's selling a short resi wants to be like this isn't even my final appearance a hundred percent i don't know if it's different in your eye at mcdonald's i hit back on the back they are yes which is probably good yes no, you're right, they are. They put it on all the bus stops nearby. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, every time I leave the house, I am reminded. But it, it was one of my favorite wraps and I missed it for a while. I mean, not that we really, that's a weird thing. They've put a lot of McDonald's stuff up. We don't even have a McDonald's that close by, but I am aware <laughs> they have more, more menu now. Cheesecake, so jealous, yee. Oh, you were there? Okay, okay. I wasn't sure if you would have been asleep by then. Why weren't you asleep by then? Sorry, I've gone from concern to judgment. What? Why were you awake? What the heck, Blackwell? <laughs> why were you asleep? I'm excited, but also not because a flight to Iceland tomorrow. Oh, good luck! I hope everything goes as smooth as it can be. I hope that it's not not too late. I hope that it's running on time. I hope whoever you're sat near is is chill. Hell yeah. Excuse me. Ah, oh, de disgusting. We reached boobs. Hell yeah. Oh, good on you. Good on you. That's that was my last charity for goal as well. Was also boobs. <laughs> oh dear. Now it's at a dumb number. I was watching all you people, and someone needed help with the getting ready. Yeah. No, I I completely understand. I kind of assumed you would have you would have gone to sleep, but yeah, people are needing tech support. I guess it kind of is just you and DJ, because I know nine point five is a starlight ambassador. I think. Amishes as well, but I don't know if they are like uh, what do you call it? If they're uh, are, are they? I guess you could probably ask. I feel like if you ask them for tech support, they'd be very helpful. But like they're more ambassadors, right, rather than like the team support. I could be wrong though. Please do correct me if I'm wrong. I know we ended up in uh in 9.5 yesterday because uh, <laughs> again I was I after like. I think actually, I think I was in phone calls from or on hold for most of Kit's stream, which is genuinely quite impressive because I was on hold for several hours. And then, yeah, I went and got a cup of tea. And when I came back, we were in 9.5. I was like, ah, I see we have moved. Oh, dear. Oh, sorry, we've 8,000. Oh my god, 80,000 and yeah, that's amazing. That's heckin' amazing. That's heckin' uh, boobies. Yeah, next, next, next five. Wait, is that 5,318,008? <laughs> That's the next goal, right, Blaffle? <laughs> oh dear. I'm not worried about who I'm sitting with. I'm pretty sure. Oh, it's gonna be your sister? Nice. That's, that's good then. That's good then. That makes that a bit easier. Booba. Booba. Oh dear. Oh, there is like Amish is an ambassador. Yeah. I thought Amish was an ambassador as well. Hell yeah. Uh, definitely a Starlight supporter. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They do every Starlight event. Same with, with 9.5. Both of them are like very, very good. They're very dedicated charity streamers. Like, they do a lot of pack and stuff for charity. <laughs> and yeah, specifically Starlight. Oh dear. Clue, my little word pro, how you doing? <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Heck yeah, Clue, Clue is a well-known word pro. Yeah, Clue Clue's always does get a lot of words, actually. Often, often in top three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Clue's as good at words. Oh dear, good. Lurking here, not lurking, who knows? Mm, look, looking around, have a lovely look. Have a lovely look. Yeah, I think. 
Oh, there we go. I still need to do a lot of editing to be honest. I've, I've been putting a lot of stuff off this week. Basically, I've got really excited about doing this jacket and getting all the stuff done for this and I've put off everything else. So I feel like this weekend, I'm not streaming this weekend. Uh, I think we have people coming over. Um, actually, we have a bit of a weird schedule in the next couple of weeks. Next week should be fine. It'll be Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and I'll do Wednesday if I feel like it. But the week after that, I think I'm doing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then, I, actually, I don't think I've mentioned this. I'm away for like a few days. I'm really excited. Uh, I am uh, joining, f you might know them from their own stream and all of the stuff that they make, but I'm joining a uh, fellow streamer Cthulhu at a craft, a craft event. And I'm very excited because I have never, never been to one. I know that might sound really stupid because obviously I do crafts, I've never, I've never been, <laughs> I've never been to any kind of craft show or craft event ever in my life, ever. <laughs> I, we just didn't have them near us growing up and like we weren't able to get out that easily. So I just, I've never been. And then as an adult, because I don't drive and a lot of them are like not in city centers and stuff. Again, it's just something that I've never been to. So I'm super, super excited. Um, so I get to get to go with them. And also, it's nice to hang out with Cthulhu, so that'd be cool. You can all be really jealous of me because I get to hang out with Cthulhu for like a few whole days. Be be jealous of me. <laughs> oh, I can spend my week with an eldritch being. But also, yeah, no, I, I, I'll be away for a few days and I... <laughs> it's very exciting. I'm, I'm excited just to take a few days off. It's gonna be nice. I say a few days off. I, I, I am helping them out with stuff. <laughs> but it's it's still like not really that any much compared to anything else. And I get to see everyone else's craft stores. And if I ever want to be like someone who does craft stores myself, it feels like it's important to actually go to craft events because otherwise I have no idea what I'm trying to even build up for. Um, which again is a bit of a stupid situation to be in because I've been an artist for a fair while of time at this point. But like, yeah, no, I've just never been. Uh, but now that we have a car, now that we have options, I can actually go see things and I'm excited and I get to see everyone else's crafts. And I'll, I'm really looking forward to it. So next week will be normal, but the week after that, I'll only be streaming a couple days and I'm going to go away four days. Maybe probably I'll say five because I'm going to assume when I come back, I probably won't feel the best. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, for like, like nearly a week, nearly a week away. Very exciting. Ah, did I top the leaderboard a few times? It was a really good break. It is. I I love words as a break game. It's great. It's great. Ah, oh, did oh my away from us? Yeah, I'm running away. I've had enough. I'm out. I, every every day I see Blaffle, I'm like, ah, oh, God, it's Blaffle again, and I'm I'm escaping. I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm write. Uh, I'm gonna write a twit longer about how I keep seeing Blaffle around, and I just I just pff, I have to go. It's disgusting. <laughs> Oh dear, cool, dope. Yeah, no, I'm super excited about it. Wow. <laughs> I can't take it the bin to the end of the drive an exciting day out of the house. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in the same sort of boat. I just don't get to leave the house very often. Uh, so it's like, I'm, I'm very excited to go outside, see people, talk to people in real life, see, meet other people who also do crafts. Madness, I'm so excited. <laughs> Luckily, I am an exceptionally chatty person, so I'm and I am very much an extrovert. So I get, I, I've, I've, been, I've been waiting for this, <laughs> going to go, gonna go and talk to lots and lots of people. Oh dear, hell yeah, I'm super excited. I want to protect with this nice slime shape. It's a bit of a butt. It's a bit of a butt. Grab it. Good morning. How are you doing? How goes? I hope you're doing well. Oh wow, don't worry, charity event was always over, going back to doing like one day a week. No, we'll miss you, Blapple. I understand why though, I understand. You have, you're you a busy bean with a busy life. And also I feel like taking a break after such a big event, honestly, is probably quite a sensible thing to like, not not keep upping the hours when you've, you've done so much already. <laughs> but we'll miss you. God, speaking of Blapple, it's like... <laughs> the Blapple, does it ever get confusing about where we stand? It goes, it goes from, from I hate you to I miss you. <laughs> I think we have an unhealthy relationship. I don't know if we should see other people for a while. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's getting a bit intense. Oh dear, I can't wait to hear the stories of, but yeah, I get to talk to lots of people and see lots of other artists. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to collect business cards, like, like trading cards. I'm going to be like, guys, look, look at all these business cards I found of all these artists. Very exciting. I have an extra excited day leaving the house because I'm duck poop. 
delicious. Great manure for the garden. Yes, that actually. <coughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Oh dear. No, we'll, we'll miss Blapple. It's always lovely doing Starlight events where we get to see so much of Blapple, but I do understand, like, yeah, of course, you have you have a proper job. Uh, you've got lots of other things going on. You've been busy with charity, I'm assuming, for, like, several months straight can be toward, between the 12 days of Starlight and then straight into March day, because there's really not that long between them. You've been pretty busy with charity work. I feel like it's about time you had a nice little break. Do you, do you actually get to take a break at all, like, from anything else, or is it just that you have, like, a little time off streaming? Oh, dear. I'm not sure, I'm not sure how things work for Blackpool. There we go. Let's just- uh, this bit, by the way, is not gonna look right, and that's fine. <laughs> it's- it's not really meant to look right, it's- it's a weird one where I just kinda need to, like, wrangle it in and be like, yeah, if you could just stay there, that would be great, so that it doesn't- pop up and be 3D. It'll get sewn into something else at the end anyway, so it doesn't matter if it looks a bit funky because you'll never see it. Ah, oh, dear. But yeah, no, we got got an interesting schedule coming up. Get to go to a craft fair for a few days. Get to uh, also like just generally hanging around other crafters because like, don't get me wrong, Shiny's great, love and places, but like he doesn't do arts and crafts, which means like maybe once a month I get to meet up with people who also do arts and crafts, but like, that's for just a couple hours, and I love that, don't get me wrong. I, I absolutely, I, I look forward to it whenever it happens, but it, it's one of those things, I suppose, that maybe because I'm a little bit more extra it's just like, like, I could do that more often. I'd be okay with doing that more often. I actually have a, a pretty a pretty good schedule coming up in April. It does mean it's going to cut a little bit into making the animation, uh, but the other positive is, is I can do a lot of, like, storyboard. For those who don't know, actually, I should probably mention, next month we're going a little bit off track for a while because I want to try making another embroidered animation. Um, for those who don't know, we made our first, like we did not basically an embroidered, <laughs> we animated a clip for an animation competition but only using frames of embroidery. Um, so we ended up in three weeks embroidering 124 frames to make a 30 second animation, which you could kind of do the maths, it's not very many frames a second but it's about as many as I could manage. Um, but the thing is, when we did that, we had like that really strict, like, you only have three weeks and then there's a deadline, right? Whereas I would quite like to do something where we don't have that same deadline and it's not like the pressure of getting it done before so-and-so and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, I think... But basically, I have an idea in my mind of what I would like to animate. This is the other thing, is it's been a minute since I've actually had something that I wanted to try and experiment with. But I've been really enjoying making our little goblin characters, I've really enjoyed that. And I think having a little animation for that would be really, really fun. So we're basically gonna do a little, a little bit of an animation with the original characters because then I don't have to worry about anything else. <laughs> and the, it'll be a little bit, I think, I guess I could probably talk about it now because I've done a lot more of the planning. We're going to have the bit right at the start of the story. I want to do like the little, like a little bit of a lore animation, kind of. Um, so I want to have, God, maybe this is a bit too intense for what my skill level is, but it was the same last time and that's what I enjoy, I guess. But um, I want to have the scene where they're doing the goblin necromancy. And I want to have like the whole hand coming out of the ground. I have an idea of a panning, kind of similar to another animation that was entered into that other competition that I really liked. The panning camera going from the hand going down so that you could see the side of their face. We'll be doing a lot of it in black and white because that way I can bulk buy a lot of black thread for those who don't remember. Uh, just buying the embroidery floss for the other animation costs near a hundred pound of thread. <laughs> <laughs> because um, you use so much of it. So we will be looking at ways where we can keep the price down and bulk buying stuff, like doing stuff in silhouetted uh, and then having chosen bits in color would mean that I will save a lot of money. So we're going to do that. Um, but that's what's gonna be happening in April, probably into May, probably April, May. We'll be looking at making that animation. So there will be like a little bit of a break on other projects just for that, because it's something that I wanna get better at and I'm, I'm okay with dedicating time to it. Uh, so if that's not what you're interested in, completely understand. We'll be back to other things in uh, in probably June, but for a couple months, we're gonna be just making animation frames out of embroidery again. But I, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it last time, and I'm really excited to try something a little bit more complex and a little bit more. 
Uh, for anyone who didn't see the one we made before, actually, I can just show it to you. <laughs> we entered the Iron Mouse animation competition and we won, uh, which was madness. Um, I was so sick when we found out we won as well. <laughs> oh my god, what a, what a heckin' weekend. But we made this. Uh, it is a tiny bit lewd, but it's also embroidery, so I think it's fine. Uh, I'll be a little quiet because I don't know how loud the media source is. First, this know. is the clip we animated. Um, I, I say animate, you can kind of see the frames again, it was quite messy, but that's because we we had to do it all in three weeks. It was a lot of, a lot of frames, a lot of frames for three weeks. Um, but yeah, we did all of this. What the? <laughs> Mikey! Thanks for leap! Is it quiet? I can make it louder. You want four big guys but louder? You can have four big guys but louder. I think it's maybe finished. Thank you so much for the leap! <laughs> That's very kind of you. <laughs> I get so much black thread with leet. Thank you, thank you. I see you. Oh, dear. oh yeah, that's just gonna say the end bit. You don't need to see the end bit. You actually, well, actually, no, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait a second. Yeah, you can see this bit. There's all the frames. You can see the same frames over and over and over again, right, right? Yeah, oh, thank you. Amazing, you just ended like that? Wow. Uh, but yeah, no, you can see all the frames. And I have, I wanna do something more intense more intense than last time well because otherwise if i keep doing the same thing i'm not going to get any better am i um so i've been watching more animation guides reading more about how to animate over the last few months and gaining information uh so that we can give it another go it's probably not st still not going to be perfect but we'll get there and i'm i'm okay with that i'm a masochist fight me <laughs> i'm just enthusiastic i'm not sure i've been getting better at doing maybe two days a week but when we do charity work i try to fit as many streams as i can around work so we just go back to the regular amount yeah i i think that's very fair to be honest because again when as soon as charity does hit blapple you do so much like so so much um you are basically on call 24 7 for weeks i feel like that's a that's a lot embroidered lord of the rings i mean it might not be so dissimilar it's definitely a fantasy setting i've been making little original characters because i want to I wanna, uh, actually, I don't know, Mikey, if you'd know about this. You probably do. I feel like you know most things about art online <laughs> at, this, <laughs> at this point. Um, we did something called Chroma Core last week, last week, last year. Uh, we did that and it was really, really fun. And I really had a good time doing like the daily art challenges, but instead of doing them in drawing, we did all of them in embroidery and it ended up really getting me into embroidery. And because a lot of people there were like very talented animators and stuff like that, I ended up getting to, getting to talk to a lot of people that were really, really good at animation and could give me a lot of advice and stuff like that. And it was also just generally a really supportive community <laughs> where everyone was really nice and chill. And, and so I had a really, really nice time and I'd like to do that again this year. But I am not someone who makes original characters. I make cosplays. Cosplays are pre-existing characters. I might make an original cosplay, like as far as like a redesign, right? But I don't do my own thing. I, <laughs> that's not what I do. Uh, and it's never really been what I've done. And so I have literally no experience with making original characters. I have no experience with making my own stories. I, ha I have none of that because that's never something that's really interested me. I just like making costumes. But when I entered, did and did Chroma Core last year, it was like, a real emphasis on being able to make stuff from scratch which i think was a really good exercise for someone like me who never does that uh, i always at the very least have something i can be like well it's inspired by this this and this but, but like make something up from scratch nah i don't do that so uh yeah no i had a really really good time with that but i want to do it again this year I, I will say i just do it casually i don't do it as part of like the competitive element as much as I am a competitive person, I am not on the level of the other artists there, and I'm quite happy to admit that. So I, I am quite happy taking it at my own pace and just, you know, doing doing my embroidery and having a nice chill time with it. And I say that, I say having a nice chill time with it. We were embroidering, God, like between 8 to 16 hours a day for 30 days straight. <laughs> But we did it again a few weeks later, so it can't have been that bad. All right, let's just catch up. I'm so behind. Welcome back, Peter. Uh, we've been talking a little bit. It's quiet. Sorry about that. Yeah, it was too quiet. I I've turned it up for next time. I the only time I saw an animation was like, was McDonald's ad. Hell yeah. Well, I'm not the only person who does embroidery animation. To be clear, I've not made up anything new here. Other people have done it previously uh, using embroidery machines. It's a bit easier, but there are other people that do it by hand as well. It's definitely not just me. Uh, I'm not the only bean who does that, but uh, I think it's really, really cool. And I think it adds like, I guess it's like an interesting mix of a very very traditional thing with something a little bit more modern and i like that it gives me good vibes and i enjoy it a lot 
but it is definitely again i'm not an animator i don't have any training in it and it's definitely a bit of a, a learning curve but we're getting there uh my cool animators amaze me animators amaze me too like being able to, i was <laughs> felt so lucky to be able to talk to so many and have a lot of advice from people like a few of the people that we were chatting to are like people who have been animators in the industry for years and it's like god damn like it's it's so useful to be able to talk to people like that and hear what, what how they approach projects and stuff which has been really really cool and again it's the only reason that i even attempted to enter the iron mouse animation competition because it's like i had that then but i thought it's really cool can we have a link to it yes <laughs> two seconds i am I, I know where to find it if i go to me here and then if i go to this yes I'll pop it in there for you. There we go. Um, that's it. That's it. Wah. We got it. We got it. <laughs> the very slow yes, <laughs> because it takes me a minute. Oh dear, you've got this. Yeah, I'm really excited to make it. I think it's going to be really fun. I think it's going to be really, really fun. I have taken a lot of reference images. I don't know if you're ever going to see the references, because basically we have. I, I, it's difficult for me to visualize without having like something first, but I knew what I wanted the motions to be. So it's like pictures of me pushing my hands through a pillowcase <laughs> so you can see something coming out of the ground. And then like, I don't know how to describe the cruel but like <laughs> a really weird like <gasps> kind of cruel across the ground but like from the side like with the panning camera I basically I need references I don't know if you're ever gonna see those <laughs> oh dear we're embroidering god we've already done that don't worry I won't tell you which one but we've already done it I'm just a guy on the internet I'm just a guy on the internet Vile actually helped out a lot yeah when we were we, when I was planning like before before we'd even really announced that I was entering the animation competition, I took my stuff to Vile and was like, Vile, is this gonna work? <laughs> Vile, will this all come together? Is this gonna is this gonna be a, a possibility? Vile, I've put all this effort into something. Is this stupid? <laughs> Vile was very nice. <laughs> Vile helped out a lot. And they were, they were very supportive and they gave me a lot of advice. Ah, oh dear. Yeah, if you weren't here during that time, I did make a video because basically I had a few people afterwards, and I, I understand why, and I'm not even that mad about it, but I had a few people claim that it looked like AI or that it wasn't handmade, stuff like that, making a few claims about the animation. If you, if I mute it really quickly, you'll probably see why, and if you've seen AI videos, you know they sometimes have that shifting effect where it looks like they're shifting between pictures. I'm gonna mute it so you don't right. hear it this time, just so you can concentrate on it. But do you see that kind of shifting effect is on all of it? And it's because it's done by hand, right? Which means it's not perfect. The outlines don't perfectly match up, stuff like that. But that kind of shifting look, um, yeah, I had a few people ask if it was if it was AI. So I, I actually did a behind the scenes video on how we made it with all of the evidence because as much as it, it didn't really bother me. I was also like, it, it kind of might, if people think it's AI, they're not going to be interested in giving this a go themselves. And it would be a shame if somebody saw it and was like, oh, I'd like to try that. I do embroidery. And then was like, oh, but everyone's saying it's AI, so I won't give it a try kind of thing, you know? So I made a video. But because of that, like, silver lining is, it does mean I made a video with all of my behind the scenes. So I guess if anyone saw it and was interested in how we made it and didn't have to be here, um it didn't happen to be here while we were making it which was only three weeks last year right so it wasn't a very long project um yeah if anyone missed it uh they they can go watch the catch up and you can see some clips of behind the scenes of how it was all going together and stuff like that only if you're interested but it is there again it was mainly just to be that it wasn't ai that i did do it all by hand and again i'm not offended by people thinking it's ai but i i don't want I don't want people to be discouraged from giving it a go if if they saw it and was like that's really cool because again we had like a lot of people commenting like oh i do embroidery i never thought of doing this and it's like oh yeah no if you'd never thought of doing this and you're interested you should definitely give it a go it was really fun and it wasn't that difficult um well i mean it wasn't easy either but it was it wasn't insanely difficult you know it was it was fine it was manageable um but yeah no i wouldn't want people to feel put off if there was a lot of comments you know claiming that it's ai and such so I kind of nipped it in the bud. It's not like I didn't have the evidence. <laughs> we streamed like the whole thing, so I had it. And uh, yes, there you go. But again, silver lining is it means that exists, which it wouldn't have existed otherwise. 
that going out of a boy in hand with hand pure legend oh it's so much fun though being able to like do stuff like that it's it's just there's a lot of texture with embroidery which is like a main difficulty element is that you're kind of working with a lot of texture uh, and the texture can change if you take different like for even to the extent where like if you photograph one piece from further away and one piece from closer even if they're the same size it can affect how the texture looks um the other thing is like Embroidery threads are fluffy. It's really small level of fluff, but like trying to green screen embroidery thread is really difficult because you basic you basically can't very easily. There will always be that level of fluff around the outside, which and if you remove the fluff, it makes it stop looking like embroidery thread. <laughs> so it's tricky. You either have to like remove it so that you can green screen it and have it look less realistic, or uh, what I did, which was just make sure that I was embroidering on the same colour background as what would end up being the background, so that I could have like a, a couple millimetre outline on all of the pieces, so that it doesn't look like, yeah, <laughs> it doesn't look like it's lost its fluff. Fluffy was important. Me is back! Welcome back, anime! How you doing? We are slowly but surely going through and adding all the beads and making this nice and pretty with lots of bows. It's sad that you have to prove something like that. It is, and I'm not happy about the way that AI is going particularly either, but I also think that at some point, it, as much as I don't like it, it's like, it, I have the ability to prove that my work is not AI. I am in a good position for stuff like that. And so I can. I'm not happy, but it's again, silver lining is that, uh, that it, you know, I got a video out of it and I haven't had any one, I, know, I think I've had like one person claim that it was AI since then, but that's like one person. It's not, it's fine. It's, it, as long as it's not a lot of people saying it, it doesn't really matter, you know? Not to me at least. It, I just wouldn't want people to feel discouraged from trying it. Oh dear. It's a stylistic choice. It is a stylistic choice and I like it too. I love the smear that happens when the eyes move. Thank you. That's like one of the only smears I did because I was so new, fresh and new to animation. I was like, I'm too scared to put in more smear frames, so I'm not going to do it. But that's why what I want to do more this time. Uh, so we're going to practice a little bit. This is the other thing that's with the Iron Mouse competition, because we had such a strict deadline, I couldn't redo frames. So if I wasn't happy with something, it was like, well, you kind of just have to live with it. You have two weeks, uh, oh, sorry, three weeks, and I, I made, I think I finished the embroidery the day of deadline, basically. Um, and I did all of that editing in the final day. So, <laughs> you know, it, it was very, very tight, and we didn't have the flexibility to redo anything I didn't like. But that's okay, because this time we do. And I'm happy with, I, I'm still proud of that one. It's just, and it was a really good learning curve. But yeah, I would love to do more, more stuff. Ah, oh dear. Ah, uh, can, well, I was gonna express my anger towards how powerful AI is going to be to bring people to this. Ah, oh, yeah, I'm not gonna go into a massive chat about AI because it's like, obviously it's not a happy topic. It's a very upsetting topic for a lot of artists. So I'm like, it's Friday. <laughs> But um, no, I, I am not a fan either, obviously, um, but uh, yes, for the most part, again, I, I will say as well, the reception to it, I was expecting people to be a lot nastier in general, because on the internet you can say anything without consequence. So when I posted that onto YouTube, I was expecting people to be a bit more critical and rude. The only rude comments I really got were, you know, I think that it's AI, which, again, it is probably not even coming from a bad place. People are just concerned because that is such a big thing these days. If I won with AI, that would be a concern. So, like, I completely understand why I, I don't even particularly see it as a rude comment, especially one that is it's very easy to disprove if you've actually made the up for yourself, especially if you streamed the entire process, right? It wasn't difficult to disprove. That's like the only rude comment I got. And I genuinely expected so much worse. It's not like, you know, of course people dislike the video and stuff like that. But like, generally people have been really, really nice and really supportive. I think uh, a couple people have gotten a bit confused, but like no one's been outwardly mean or nasty at this point. Uh, and I expected worse. I expected worse. When I posted that, I was fully expected people to be like, Go back, sit in the corner, granny. Do your embroidery somewhere else. You were old lady, you no, no YouTube for you. Get out. Silly embroidery. <laughs> but no one was like that. Everyone was really nice. <laughs> oh dear. Maybe I'm too paranoid. Maybe I'm just a little too paranoid. Oh god, I've lost it. Oh no, I've put the needle in a really bad place. Oh no. Oh, okay. <laughs> Excuse me. I think I might have sewn for a knot there. Ooh. Is it okay? 
Are you alright? You are you angry at me? I'm so sorry. I didn't realize there was a knot there, otherwise I would have moved like a millimeter to the left. My bad. I would say the texture's a plus point. It makes the entire animation look alive. I think so too. I think, you know, if you're gonna do something like, you know, embroider an animation, you might as well really emphasize that it's embroidery, right? Because it's a feature. It's a feature, not a bug. <laughs> Uh, you can say anything about consequences, I disagree. True, there are definite consequences, but I feel like people see the consequences as smaller online than maybe saying it in real life. In real life, someone could just punch you. Whereas online, it's harder. Harder to punch people online. Not impossible, but harder. Scorch and stretch and smears are two of the things that bring so much oomph. Yes, so that's kind of why I wanted like this really dramatic like hand shooting out the ground, going down and then crawling to the side kind of thing. That's kind of why I wanted that because that's a really big stretch in skills because that leans so hard on smear and like uh like smudgy kind of things to get it going so uh, yeah that's that's why i wanted to do that particular shot because that's a hard shot and uh i know that it's gonna push me uh again i'm it might not be perfect first time but we're not in a we're not in a rush this time this time we could do several iterations of it and all have a look at them together and be like what's working and what's not all right let's have a little review well how do we feel about number one well it's okay it's a bit bulky i feel like we're spending too long on certain shots all right how do we feel about number two everyone you know that kind of stuff well we can actually we could embroider up several options and then see how we feel about them and if we like him or not. And then if I'm sewing with the wrong side of the needle, that's very silly. <laughs> and then if we do, amazing. If we don't, if we need to alter things, we can. We've never had that with the Iron Mouse. When people made suggestions with that one, I'd be like, that's a really good suggestion. Unfortunately, the time limitations mean that I, I couldn't do anything like that. But this time, we can. We can take suggestions. We can take ideas. Once the full thing is planned i probably will go through with it just so that because otherwise you could field ideas until kingdom come but there will be a stage with that one where we'll be taking ideas and we'll be taking like what other people are seeing and stuff like that and yeah i think i think that would be really really nice because we never had that option with the iron mouse one wait did you make an animation shadow i did actually wait shadow i might still have the copy paste link uh let me see if i do there you go, there you go. Uh, the, 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 if you haven't seen it, there you go. <laughs> this was back in November. We made it in three weeks, a really tight deadline. We had to, like, I think this is the other thing is like, it maybe doesn't sound so bad until you realize 124 embroidered frames in three weeks. <laughs> like that is, what, how many days? I think we did it in 20 days because I had to submit on the 20th. Uh, so it was from the 1st to the 20th. We would have embroidered in 20 days. Oh god, 124 frames, which is like six frames a day on average, which, yeah, it was quite intense. Oh no, five, no, 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 it's six days of uh, frames a day. Oof. Ah, oh, dear. Ah. Uh... I don't know if other people are think to blame me. They are. Poor needle constraints me. <laughs> Fine, fellow bed pillows. Oh dear, oh dear. Cheeto Puffs, thank you for the Cheetos! How you doing? I hope you're doing well. Mink, welcome on in. We're talking a little bit about animation right now. Yeah, yum yum yum. Animation, em anima embroidery animation reminds me of a TV show I used to watch called Patchwork Pals. I don't know what that is, but that sounds adorable. You sound like an optometrist. Does one look better? Or two? Yeah, how about with this glasses? You like this one? <laughs> yeah, I'm actually, I'm just becoming your optometrist. It's, a, it's an ASMR roleplay, actually. Uh, Jelly is your optometrist, and she keeps showing you these animations she's making and asking you which one you like more. <laughs> uh, I just realized, I didn't ask, what is the process of making the embroidery animation? I can tell you what it was last time, but it'll probably be a little different this time. So last time, uh, I did a lot of this doing boobed over, like, behind the scenes, because I wanted to get the storyboard done before bringing it on Twitch, because I knew once I started embroidering that I'd have to go pretty full force. So during October, whenever I had free time, which bear in mind was not very often because we run Boobtober, um, whenever I had free time, I would be doodling like an, uh, ideas for what I wanted. I, I knew very early that I wanted to do the four big Clark guys clip because I love that clip. It's just so funny. And so I, I knew very quickly that if I wanted to enter the competition, I wanted to use that clip. And for the Iron Mouse animation competition, the only thing you had to do was animate a clip of Iron Mouse. So that's what I did. Um, and so I knew I wanted to do that one, so I started building up ideas 
um, for what I wanted in different areas and how many different scenes I wanted and so, and also like where I was going to put the most effort so I knew quite early on the hula hooping with the butt gif and the and the flip were both going to be two of the most intensive parts to do so I did a lot of planning into those uh, I knew that I could get around certain bits by instead of doing two separate animations just re oh, sorry, two separate frames just restitching a frame twice um it still takes time it's not a quick process per se but it makes it a little easier to line up later so we would do stuff like that again if you're interested in the full like how we did it if you go to that link which i just posted uh, the the which is specifically the animation um there is a video on that channel called how we made the iron mouse animation right and it goes through a lot of those behind the scenes of what my thought processes were and what i was leaning into and what i was avoiding if you want everything in like a lot of detail i did actually make a video where i went into pretty intense detail about it um where yeah but only if you're interested oh and again but i'd say if you are interested if you're someone who does embroidery anyway and it's something you're interested about it might not actually be as hard as you think it is time consuming yeah but like hard depends on what you're trying to animate i feel like there are things you could do which wouldn't be too bad at least five days at least five days yeah it's so good yeah can i put jelly in a pool and take away the ladders are you trying to kill me in the sims you can do it i'll allow it sure just make sure that you put my gravestone in the middle of a hedge maze and then it's fine <laughs> god that's incredible thank you there's a lot of sunlight i remember hissing a lot <laughs> that was one issue actually we came across so it was a really good learning curve happening the whole animation thing but one of the issues we actually had was sunlight because oh my god because yeah, i take the pictures of the frames whenever it was finished the weather in wales is all over the place which would mean that sometimes we take a picture and it was raining outside sometimes i take a picture and it's sunny and even if i had like the same light set up it would look different and it's like ah then I'd have to take it into Photoshop and I'd have to do color correcting and I could never get it quite right and I was on such a short deadline that a lot of the frames are unfortunately slightly different colors and I just didn't have the time to fix it and it was like gah so this time we'll be doing that differently probably not a quick process what the heck it takes so long to animate just draw drawing her like I can't imagine boy doing that much we I had so much fun with it though. It's the, this is the thing. I wouldn't be planning to do it again if it wasn't so thoroughly enjoyable. Um, I will say I am someone who enjoys deadlines. I know that's not a, <laughs> not a not a not a positive, not a happy take. Most people do not like deadlines. I love deadlines. Oh my god, make me work to the hardest deadline possible. Force me to have to submit things three weeks earlier than it's physically possible. Because, oh my god, I love that. I love that so much. <laughs> I love being on really tight deadlines. I love the pressure. I love the stress. Uh, I, I, I thrive in that environment. It gives me good, good vibes and really motivates me. But I know that's maybe not normally how it goes. So for me, I was like, oh my god. I was basically high as a kite most of November because I was embroidering, which I really, really enjoyed already. I was allowed to work for up to 16 hours a day, which makes me so happy. And I didn't take a day off for three weeks. And I was just like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly what I like, but uh, unfortunately, it is not good for long long term. Um, I wouldn't have been able to physically go much longer than three weeks, uh, and I did do myself a pretty bad back injury, which is the one that we're still trying to fix now uh, from overexertion. <laughs> so I have to be a bit more careful in the future. I just, I just, there's something about working yourself to the bone, right? I can't explain it, but it makes me really happy, and it always has. It's probably just my brain's a little broken, but I really like it. I really like it. And so, like, having such a tight deadline of knowing that I had to submit in three weeks. Uh, and then also, I had to get all these frames done. I had such a cool plan. I was so excited. I had such a good time. But yeah, no, this time we won't be doing that. I'll be, I, I won't have such an intense deadline. I will be good. I'm going to be good. I'm not going to push myself for 16 hours a day. Oh dear, can I share this with my friends? Oh yeah, absolutely, I, I really appreciate it, it's very heckin' kind of you. Um, if anyone is genuinely interested ever as well, I know <laughs> I know that it's probably a small group, but if anyone ever is interested in making an embroidered animation and has any questions, I am not the monolith of it, there are other people that do this as well, but I'd be more than happy to try and help. I can't guarantee that I can help, unfortunately, uh, but I can. I, if you had a question about how I did something, I'm not hoarding the information. So far, no one's asked me how I, you know, f to make it themselves. But maybe one day someone will see it and be like, I want to try making one. It's like, yeah, you try making it too. 
Further interested what brand ideas on how I could approach squash, stretch, and smears. Yeah, in embroidery, what's really interesting though, so Sean, look, consider this, because this is this is a really cool feature of embroidery, which I think is actually a really good thing. The direction of the thread matters a lot. So for instance, if you're doing a stretch, the direction of the thread can make it look like it's stretching even further. If you're doing like a squish, the direction of the thread can make it look even more squished because normally you don't have that with art. You don't have the direction of the paint strokes in, in you know, Photoshop or something. You just don't see that. But with sewing or with embroidery, you do, which means you have the extra exaggeration of whatever you do with the direction of the thread. So if something's reaching out, you draw it going in that direction. If something's squishing, you do it curling out at the sides to make it look even more squished. So you can make things look really, really dramatic, <laughs> which is really, really cool. And you don't really get that in other mediums because again, you don't get the strokes normally. Uh, unless I guess you were doing traditional animation, like be even then, strokes are generally pretty disguised. So if we really lean into that, that is a feature of animated embroidery that you just don't get with other things. And I think it's, I think it's really, really cool. I'm very biased, but I think it's really, really cool. You're interested. I'm interested. If you have, if anyone has questions, I'm always more than happy to tell you at least how I've done things. With the Iron Mouse in particular, there is the the whole video which I would recommend if you were curious to watch because. I don't normally recommend my own videos, but it really does show a lot of like the thought process behind the scenes. Like, I can talk you through it, but that was, I have like images popping up on screen where you can see the progression of where I started versus where I ended and stuff like that. So it just gives you a more thorough explanation of all of the steps uh, because it also has the picture evidence and such like that. Uh, it also goes over a lot of the stuff that didn't work. Uh, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm very aware when things didn't work as well. And there are things that I definitely learned from that project that I wouldn't have had I not attempted it, which was really nice. Shifty! Gonna be lurking around? No, you're fine, Shifty. Good luck with work today. I hope that it goes well. I'll see you around. Have a lovely look. I missed you. Explain exaggeration, which one of the basic principles like uh, D Disney World Gold. Yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really cool, right? That you can do like the, the, the direction of the threads because again, that's just not something that normally comes up. So I avoided smear frames in, in the first one because I was scared of them. But now I feel less afraid and more enthusiastic. But this is something that we can really lean into that you can't get out of other mediums, which is exciting. <laughs> Styles like oil or glass could show stretch They could, yeah, oh, 100%. And like, listen, if anyone wants to make an animation like that, I bet it would look stunning. You could get like, especially strokes on glass, you could get some really dramatic shots. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's uh, there's so, there's so much that I'm excited about experimenting with. I just had to do a bit more research and I had to do a bit more practice because that was one of the main things I took away from, I, and I know it's very vague, I just wasn't experienced enough as an animator to do some of the stuff my brain wanted to do. I just couldn't put together the steps of how I would get to that next stage in my brain because I just didn't have the experience. So a lot of stuff that I needed to work on was not just like, you know, learn this, this didn't work. It was also just like, I need my core knowledge to be higher. I need to do more research. I need to read more. I need to watch more videos. I need to do all of that. Um, I, I need to learn, basically. <laughs> Not maybe the most exciting process, but it definitely a process that I have been doing over the last few months of whenever I can, listening to people talk about animation, listening to uh, uh, audiobooks because I there are physical books but I, I'm not very good at reading uh, a physical book because the text is normally too small for me so <laughs> audiobooks has been my my go-to but yeah like listening to that whenever I can listening to principles watching watching people do smear animation and doing like I, I've also taken part in I like myself off stream doing the tutorials myself so watching someone do an animation tutorial and then doing it myself kind of thing based on the tutorial so because the thing is for embroidered animation you need to be able to do the animation first really because you have to draw out every frame anyway so yeah if i i i at the moment i can do the embroidery but i can't do the animation bit or i couldn't i'm hoping i still think this is going to be difficult i still think this is going to be quite the challenge but i'm hoping that with our our practice and with the knowledge gained from doing the Iron Mouse one that we could make something really really cool and it's going to be very specific because I'm using original characters but that's kind of the idea so with the Iron Mouse one 
as cool as it is, and I'm really, really proud of it, just to be clear. Uh, Iron Mouse has a huge community, and it meant that I had a lot of eyes on me that I normally wouldn't. And I know for, as a content creator, that's a really, really good thing. That's something you want. You want more eyes on you, right? But to be honest, as someone who's trying to learn a new skill, it's a little intimidating having so many people looking at me <laughs> while I'm trying to learn. So I think for this next one, the way that the, the, the reason I've decided to use original characters is because it doesn't have that pre-existing fan base. Like, yes, I could do like a Star Wars animation or I could do an anime animation or I could do an animation of another content creator, but I think they'd all come with that pressure of the community behind them and the potential of having more eyes on me, <laughs> which I know again, as a content creator, that's something that you should be doing. But personally, as someone who's trying to learn a new skill, it is a little bit intimidating at times. Um, the positive, I guess, is that you do get a lot of advice from some very smart people. Um, basically, in the in the when we talked about the video of how we made it, one of the things I said is, you know, if anyone has any advice, please put it in the comments below because I'm looking to learn. And I actually did get a lot of really, really good advice from that video. Um, so there is the positive of when a community comes along with a lot of talented people in it, like Iron Mouses, uh, that I did get a lot of really, really good advice. But I also think, yeah, I in some ways would just prefer to learn a little bit more in a bit more of a enclosed space. So like this stream where it's just this community and I think using original characters is a good vibe for that. And again, it also helps us having something cool to show for Chromacore next year or this year. So it's a win-win for me. Uh, plus I get to do more goblin stuff and who doesn't love goblin stuff? So yeah, the, the animation is not gonna be very long. I doubt that it'll be longer than a minute. Uh, we, I haven't drawn out all the frames yet so I can't actually say how long it's going to be but it's not gonna be that long. Um, but it's going to be the scene. So I, I guess I might have to give a bit of backstory here <laughs> because I, a lot of people here are not going to know the little original characters I've been making up in my head, making them go on little stories and stuff. So maybe I'll give you a little, give you a little, uh, a little backup, a little, a little, uh, back up a little bit, give you a bit more explanation then we'll go from there. You have to bed? No, you're fine. Take care, Vile. Thank you so much again. Obviously, Vile, very sweet bean. They are streaming later today. Uh, they're doing Merge Masters, they're making these really cool Nerf Blasters, but they also were one of the people that really, really helped me when I was, like, planning that initial embroidery uh, for Iron Mouse. I got on a call with them and we discussed a lot of ideas, and honestly, that helped a lot. It also helped settle my nerves a lot because I was so nervous about starting it. I was excited but scared. So, yeah, no, very sweet bean. We love, we love Val in this house. <laughs> oh, dear. Texas is a decent feature. It is! Hell yeah! Oh, they're gonna lurk now. You're fine. Good luck with the poop collecting and I hope your garden really appreciates it. Ah, oh, I can't hear the moan. Oh, thank you, lady. I appreciate it. I'll do the heart so you can see. <laughs> take care. Take care. You've inspired me. I'm the heckin' thank you. That's very heckin' kind. Listen, if you ever make anything, like animation-wise, like you can always post in the Discord. We'll have a little look. We're, speaking of, we're actually about to do our first Discord art share of the day uh, where we look at what other people are working on while we're working. Um, but yeah, no, if you if you ever wanted to share any stuff, like obviously there's no pressure because I also get the not wanting to share stuff when you're still learning. I feel that in my soul. I am also there. So don't, there's never any pressure to share anything. But if you wanted to, you could, but you don't have to. Yeah, I, I am someone who very weirdly still struggles to share stuff when it's unfinished, even though I stream the whole goddamn thing. Does it logically make any sense? No, <laughs> no it doesn't. I'm very aware of that. Yeah, no, I don't know. Just feel weird about it. Just still can't unweird it. I wish it wasn't so weird for me. Maybe one day. Ah, uh, I've made a gif so far. Yeah, yeah, heckin' do it. If you've made a gif, that's an anim- that gif is an animation. However simple it might be, the first ones I made for the- for the Iron Mouse one were gifs. Uh, I can actually show you the gifs. You know what, we're about to do in a break anyway. Let me turn my thread off and I'll show you, because initially they were all gifs. Uh, like, because I, I had them in plans, right? Um... If I find an image, get it there, and then browse, and then pictures, uh, animation, cadet, zoom zoom, and then bubble, and then Iron Mouse, there it is, and then where's one that's like done? This one, right? Yeah, there you go. It's a very simple GIF that I used to make the animation. Yeah, because I had to obviously draw it out first. Simple, simple, small gif. 
Still, still difficult. <laughs> so I have to work it out. How do the butt move though? The butt move like this. Yeah. I don't know. We we have a, quite a few of those because that one I turned into a gift, so that I didn't have to animate it over and over again. Oh dear. Amazing. Very excited. Best of luck with the animation. I'm so excited. Oh yeah, I was going to give some backstory. Was <laughs> I'm sorry. My brain is. It's the end of the week. You know, my brain is is it's having a day off. But uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna be doing the goblins. Uh, the goblin family that I've made. I've got a really good Christmas picture of them, and that's it. I will at some point make some proper art of all of them. I'll need to for the animation anyway. But um, yeah, here they are. But it'll just be these two. These two are the main characters. So this guy up here and this guy one down here. This is Charlotte. This is Waffles. Um, but I want the scene of Waffles being resurrected from the dead. <laughs> Basically, resurrected, reincarnated, um, basically the, the bit where they necromancy and uh, we have zombie waffles come out. So what I would like to do is, uh, I have been storyboarding how this is going to work in ways that will be as simple and work well for embroidery as possible. We're going to have the day of a funeral and then over time the, the grass growing up and over the, over the, what do you call it, the gravestone, it's, so it looks like time has passed kind of thing. And then uh, after a set amount of time, we're going to have a shadowy figure walk up to the grave and you'll see like some magic-y stuff happening around it uh, with a book. And then you have the whole hand coming out of the ground, crawling towards them so the camera angle turns around until they're crawling up to the person who is in shadow. And then you'll see Charlotte out of shadow. So the majority of it is done in shadow. Yeah. And then I need Waffle's arms to fall off. That's kind of important as well. So Waffles is going to crawl out of the ground, stand up next to Charlotte, threateningly, and then the arms are going to fall off. Yeah, because he's just a goofy little guy and he doesn't actually have arms. The arms leave. Here we go again, eat an apple pie. <laughs> there it is. I have so much unfinished stuff to share if you want to. Um, uh, to be fair, like it's one minute. I can I can stop one minute early and we can do our Discord art share now. If your whip folder isn't overflowing, are you even an artist? Resurrected, revived, based on the bit where they did the necromancy. It's a beautiful quote. <laughs> you know what I mean. The bit where they come back to life after being dead for a few hundred years. That bit. <laughs> oh dear. So the whole idea with the goblins is I have uh, th the adventures of chicken and waffles, which is Charlotte and Waffles the zombie. <laughs> The idea is that in the Goblin Empire, the current king sitting on the throne is not doing a very good job. They're being kind of an asshole and it's making everything very difficult for the normal working goblin, right? So Charlotte, a, a, a younger goblin, decides to get really into necromancy. So the way that it works in goblin times, uh, you you have to have royal blood to sit on the throne, which means right now, as there are no other descendants, only the goblin king can sit on the throne. Uh, however, <laughs> What if you resurrected an old goblin king? Then technically they have they have royal blood and could sit on the throne, right? So the idea is that uh, Charlotte finds the abandoned grave of a very, very old goblin king and goes to resurrect them. However, they've been dead for several hundred years. So when they are resurrected, while yes, they do have the blood of the king, they have none of their memories. They, they are complete, they've, they've literally got grow flowers growing out of their head. Uh, they are completely useless. And uh, so the whole story of Chicken and Waffles is basically uh, Charlotte teaching <laughs> Waffles, the zombie, <laughs> how to be a good king <laughs> so that one day they might sit on the throne. Tis a silly story that I have written in my head about these goblins. They are really my first proper original characters and I'm very attached to them. And uh, that's why we're using those because they have no prior, you know, connections with everything. They're just something that I made up. So there's no pressure on me. Ah oh dear. Oh no, I'm in the office. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. Okay. When you get home, I get you, I get you, I get you. Also, have a lovely lurk on the YouTube anime. Thank you. And temporary good board and welcome on in. Uh, do these have blood though? Yes, but only a little bit. But it's royal blood, so it counts. <laughs> That's the whole story. It's very simple and it's just with a couple stuff that I've made. And eventually I will get proper references out for all of them. Because we have four characters technically so far. We have, uh, they're my breakfast, they're my breakfast goblins. Because we have Charlotte, who is the necromancer. We have uh, Waffles, who is the necromance E, <laughs> the resurrected. <laughs> Uh, a very, very old king. We have uh, Charlotte's mother, Mabel, and then we have their pet slime syrup. So we have chicken and waffles and maple and syrup. 
and they're my breakfast goblins and I love them very, very much. <laughs> oh, Helix, welcome in on YouTube. Thank you so much for the look. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm very attached to them and I look forward to making more art of them at some point. Yes, maybe soon, maybe soon. Maybe at some point we'll have a stream where we get all of their references done because we kind of need that for the animation. We need like all of their side profiles and everything like that. Like I've drawn them a fair few times in my own time, but I need... I need some proper references at some point. Sean, I was rather better. Oh no, you're fine. Go get some Z's. And I will enjoy the cheesecake. I'm so excited. All right, tis break time. We have hit break time, which means I'm going to be going over stuff that people have posted in the Discord. And I'm going to start with this one because it was posted, I believe, yesterday. Uh, but I would, li I would like people to see it anyway, uh, which is if we go to here. There you go. And so this is uh, a a double zipper pocket going on an apron which is complicated this is hardcore hardcore sewing stuff but this it's gonna look so pretty though a double a double pocketed apron yeah so you can see like it's got the zip at the top and then like the second one it's gonna look really really cool so basically when you have like a small pocket in front of a larger pocket that's what this is gonna look like so it is complicated but i think it's, they've done a really good job like it looks super neat like look how how clean that that zip is in there like really really nice really really nice and i'm, I'm sure this top one will be the same once it's finished and attached they've done a really good job making this look really neat <coughs> gina good morning welcome on in sorry two seconds i'm just gonna mute Sorry, I'd have a good cough there. Gina, good morning. I hope you're doing good. Good morning. Welcome on in. Sorry for muting as soon as you popped in. <laughs> Just bad timing. I had to cough. But yeah, no, this is really, really nice. Really, really nice. I think that one shows the best because you can see it from the back here. But I think, I think this one shows, yeah, professional quality. Genuinely very clean. Really, really clean. Really nice. Heckin' well done. All right, we go down to art. Some art. We have a few things to show. So this was... I'll, I'll go all the way up because this was posted late last night, so we didn't see this on stream. Uh, this is done by Zomboti. Zomboti is working with Copic markers for the first time. For the first time, by the way. <coughs> I will say that Zomboti is a very established artist already. They are very, very good at art. We all know they're very good at art. They have a really beautiful style. But yeah, they've been experimenting with, with some physical art, and it's really, really nice. Really heckin' nice. I did see these yesterday. I did love them. I love this character. They're so cute. Uh, I love their ears. I love it. I just very heckin' cool. Very heckin' cool. Really, really nice. And then if we go in, as I wanted to show the old ones first, because then we have the colored version again. I think this looks really good. The shine on their hair, Zomboti, is so good. Oh my god. I know that you said the other day that you had limited colors, but it doesn't look like from, from the way that you've been doing your art, you can't tell. Like it looks really, really good. It looks like exactly as it should. From from an outsider's point of view, at least it looks perfect. <laughs> <laughs> really, really nice. Ah, oh, I colored it. I finished it some hours ago. Nice, fantastic, fantastic. Really, really nice. Yeah, I hadn't seen this one. Oh, let me, let me get my hearts in there. It looks really lovely. And then Saki has done. Oh my god, finished this yesterday night. Saki's been doing typography, uh, which is basically making these really intricate. Uh, typed pieces again we say this every time i think sometimes people overlook this as being a very simple craft it's not if you've never tried to do typography before i i challenge you to go make typography without you know your own your own stuff uh, without copying someone else it's heckin hard it's very tricky uh, and yeah no they've been doing a really really good job with it their shading their highlights the color choices really really bold it's also difficult to make things look really ornate and beautiful while still making them legible and i would say that these are very legible i can still read that very easily as Wishmaker, and yeah all the other ones before as well really really nice really neat work very hecking cool impressive as always ah then there is shadow me and a friend were doing a 10 second 10 minute oh 100 minute yeah here's the 10 second of the 10 minute one oh so this is i'm assuming the 10 minute and this is a 10 second <laughs> We were talking about doing this in life drawing class the other day because they'd make you do stuff like this Where they're like, oh, yeah, here's like a whole hour make a beautiful piece now do it in 10 minutes now do it in 10 seconds like, <laughs> But it makes you take your art less seriously and it, it is good I think it's a really good mental exercise to do uh, and this is very hacking nice. This is very hacking nice It's a very hacking good job. I love this too <laughs> 
I also love this. Tis silly, but I love it. Oh, wait, I have a mushroom here. There we go. Get a little mushroom emote. Very hecking nice. Oh, Dasaurus, good morning. Welcome, morning. We're just doing our first Discord art share of the day. And then, oh, I have a thing. Oh, wait, this is really good. No, wait, wait, this is, I, this is great. What the heck? Yeah, it's a great gif. Oh, dude, like a little squishy guy. I think he got the squish on the mushroom really good. He's like, he's squishing down. What you need now is like a hand coming in and pushing him. So there's a reason that he's squishy. But like, squish, squish. <laughs> Like, like, how about, like, for the satisfaction of looking like something is squishing the mush. But, uh, no, this is really, really good. This is really nice. Hell yeah, he looks really squishy. I love him. I love him. Oh my god. Hell yeah. Very- wait, you should have the mushroom one again, shouldn't you? Oh dear. Oh, have I lost my mu- that's gonna say, where's my mushroom gone? Get the mushroom in there as well. Alright, we're gonna go to general crafts now. And we have- ah, yes, Vile's been doing their printing before they go to bed. This is, I don't know if that's on purpose, but that's really pretty. <laughs> the changing color, wow, wow. For a 3D print, that's really nice. Oh my, I, I can never tell if this sort of stuff is on purpose, but I really like it. Oh my God, it's so pretty. Whoa, <laughs> kind of looks like you've painted it almost, like dry brushed it or something. I would like to be more drawing to my friends, but most have lighter colors that I don't have, I see. So it's gonna be like a collection over time that the more colors you get, the more you can make sort of thing. I made an amphibian of my name. There's a lot of typography that I've done, but calligraphy is fun too. It is, it is. Oh dear, this is yeah, very, very pretty vile. And then we have Gina, who is still cracking on with this massive Game of Thrones diamond painted piece. Um, you can kind of see the difference between like, so for instance, like you have this kind of like shiny gold color and then like the knot next to it. So you can kind of see where Gina's been, been cracking on, getting more of it done. This is huge. Uh, if you can't tell by the, the things for scale, this is absolutely massive. This is a very, a very, very big diamond piece, but it's really cool and it's really ornate and it's nice to see it. It's nice to see the work in progress. It's nice to see it, it growing over time. Ah oh dear, did I finish? Did you, where did you put it? You put it in cosplay and sewing, was it? Is it up here? No. Is it in embroidery? It is! Oh yeah, we had clues as well! So yeah, this is anime set of baubles. So these are all uh, the, the symbols in Genshin. If you're a Genshin fan, you might recognize them already. So you have all the different types of Genshin. And yeah, it's really, really pretty. And these are all, you can kind of tell. Can I zoom in at all? No, I can only zoom out. But um, you can see like the beadwork and such on these. So these are like 3D beautiful beaded pieces. And they're all like a little hanging baubles. They're really nice anime. They're really, really pretty. I did see these uh, already, but they are, they are very, very, very pretty. And I think you should be very hecking proud of them. They're lovely. And then we also had Clues, who has managed to do this in just a few days, which is very, very impressive, because this doesn't look like a small embroidery, who's made this really beautiful, flowery, ferny, springish piece. A really lovely springish piece. Hell yeah, it's, oh, don't want to copy it. <laughs> it's really, really nice. And it, I, I genuinely, wait, you posted that yesterday. When did you post before? Because you posted an, didn't you? Oh, was it not here? I thought I saw... I thought I- oh wait, did you post it? Is this the one that went in the wrong area perchance? I think it was, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was on the 19th. It's just a few- a couple days before. Jesus, you were so quick! You were so quick! My god, yeah, that's what it was. I got it, I got it. I'm gonna go to bed to find get some Z's. No, you're fine, get some good Z's! Heckin' proud of myself I did all that. You should be, you should be! It's very heckin' impressive. Alright. I am not gonna do uh, an intense one. I might just, wait, can I, is there a way that I can do this without just hiding my screen really quickly? Uh, I, yeah, there we go. Two secs, I'm just gonna do a very quick workout. For those who don't know, I'm trying to build up some back and shoulder strength because to do long-term embroidery and such, you wanna have nice strong back and shoulders to make sure that you're not injuring yourself. So every hour when we take the break, we are doing a, an exercise routine, basically, but I'm just hiding myself so you don't see it, just because um, sometimes people clip some of this out of context and make them into sexy, sexy clips, and listen, I am many things, but I am not sexy, sexy, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, you're in the wrong place for sexy, sexy, I'm so sorry. Um, we talk about piss and shit here, which I guess is sexy, sexy to some people, but it's not generally, it's not generally what we do. Oh dear. 
I'm so fucking proud of myself. You should be. You should be. Dang, no. Who would do such a thing? Not this chat. Well, to be fair, I will say it's not actually this chat. Oh, the chat's very good with that sort of thing. Um, it's more like strangers coming in and then <laughs> I'm taking the clips. People that I've never met before <laughs> that don't even follow me or coming in and, and making a clip or two and being like a bit suspicious. A little bit suspicious. Ah, oh, dear. Not that, to be honest, the workout is even particularly sexy. I'll be honest, it's not. Only do it with consent, yeah. I don't know, it's just a, a weird one. Like, I don't mind people making clips of me most of the time, to be honest, but if I don't want a clip made of me, I hide myself so that even if you made a clip, I wouldn't be in it. And that's just kind of how we do it here. Like, 99% of the short time, I don't care. But like 1%, I'll hide myself. It's the same with like coughing, for instance. I, uh, I hide myself if I have to do like a really intense cough. Just because my coughs make me gag sometimes, and I don't want to do that on stream, first of all, because it's not comfortable for people to watch. People don't want to, funnily enough, don't normally want to watch people gag on stream. But also, yeah, I'd feel like a little uncomfortable if anyone made a clip of that, because it is just quite, <laughs> quite intense. So yeah, I always hide my screen if I think I'm going to have to cough really hard, just in case. Uh, I don't always gag with my coughs, but on the off chance that I do have to start gagging, then I'm like, yeah, at least, at least there's not a, a, a video of me online doing that. <laughs> All right, let's reset the timer and we'll be back in an hour. Nice. Ah, oh dear. Premium content, exactly. It's fair. Safety and comfortability is fine, yeah. Like, again, 99% of the time, do not care. Could not care less. It's just like that 1% where it's like, oh, I just don't know if I want to deal with that right now. Uh, so yeah, I just, I, I hide myself. So it's mainly, it's mainly the workouts and just like the intense coughing. And to be honest, the intense coughing I also hide because it's uncomfortable to watch. Well, I'm, I, at least I imagine it's uncomfortable to watch as a viewer. And I don't, I, you know, I don't claim to be a comfy space, but I don't want to be that uncomfortable, you know? <laughs> I don't want to be that uncomfortable to watch. Oh dear. All right, flippy, flippy fabric. Right back into it again. Getting all of these little beads in. It does, can you see it like looking very different? <laughs> At the bottom, it's a really little thing that we're doing. We are just doing like one stitch here and there, but it makes a really big difference. It's very pretty, and I, I really love this smocking. It's very nice. Uh, it's fun, but I'm also a customer for Mocha Made Offensive. Oh, exciting! <gasps> You'll have to share when you're done with it. I'd love to see it. That would be really cool. Oh, dear. Is Mocha Made doing like a charity event or something soon? Or is it something else? Unfortunately, Moko is on at the same time as a couple of other people, so sometimes I lurk their stream, but I can't always I can't always watch because I'm moderating for somebody else or something. Oh dear. But yeah, they're doing a charity thing in June. I see. Nice, nice. Uh, I'm happier now, although my days have been weird. Yeah, you have you've had a bit of a turbulent week or so. A lot of stuff going on. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. I think anyone would feel a bit off sorts. Ah, oh dear. For some Jude! Nice! Hell yeah! Honestly, what a lovely thing to do. I hope that it goes super, super well. If anyone here is 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 taking part in that charity event and raising money for charity, you can always let us know. We, we do love, when we can, raiding into people that are doing charity and such. I, I can't always promise it, so it's always like, if you fancy telling me, you can, but I can't promise anything. Like, if you're going live at midnight my time, it might be a little difficult. But if you are, I'd love to know more about it. And at the very least, we can like shout out about it. Oh, they're kind of same as what we did with Starlight. You know, I'm not taking part in Starlight this year, but we still make a deal about it in the Discord so that if people are interested, we can share the Stream Stars team and we can raid into Stream Stars. We are. That sort of stuff. That sort of stuff. Ah, oh, dear. My mom told me, you know, instead of pursuing a career that you don't want to study, why don't you take this year and make a manga? Honestly? I think that's a really cool idea and I think it's a really nice thing to do if you are in a position like setting a deadline because I think that's important I think you know long term it, it is important to have like goals and set dates and stuff like that but something like along the lines of hey see how things go for a year if it's not doing well after a year, if you don't feel happy after a year if you're not having a good time stop but give yourself a year to see if you enjoy it see if it's something that does pick up for you see if it is something you can work with long term and, and like that kind of stuff, it, it, it's like a really healthy way of trying something different. I know a lot of people do that with streaming. Um, like a lot of people will will be like, right, I'm going to start streaming today and see how I'm doing in one year. And if in a year 
I can make it my job, amazing. I'll keep doing that as a job. If I can't make it my job, make a decision about whether I actually enjoy it or whether I'm just forcing myself at this point because it was something I was trying to make a job and go from there. And like setting that kind of like, all right, I start on this date and I end on this date and we see what, and, and then we make a new decision based on the results kind of thing. I think it's a really healthy way of approaching stuff like that. I, again, I, we, you do see it relatively often in the streaming sphere because people are like, listen, I have enough money and I have enough savings or I, I'm in a position where I'm living with my parents and I don't have to pay for as much. Or maybe I'm in a position where I have this, that and the other going on that's helping fund this. Uh, I'm in a position where I could take a year out of work and see if this is something I could do full time and give it a go. And if it doesn't work out, nothing lost. You're prepared. You've set yourself up for that situation where you know that you're supported during that time. Like, I think it's a really, really good way of doing it, genuinely. <laughs> again, I, it helps as well because if, if things don't work out after a year, again, you've not, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained. You've not lost anything from that time because you set yourself up to take that time. So I think, uh, I, I think it's a really good idea. It's lovely to have that kind of support from your mum as well. I, I, that's that's really really nice. I know a lot of a lot of people can't be as flexible as that as thinking about stuff like that. So it's really nice that you have that support to to try something that you might be interested in. Ah, oh, they're really really nice. It's different from a charity event. It's just for fun. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Ah, oh, dear. So the one in April. Oh, it's in three weeks. Oh, okay. Ooh, we'll have to see them around. I am away for a week in April, but only only for like one week. So. We'll see, we'll see. My mom was like understanding that I have ADHD and that I should make something that I can work with like list deadlines and goals. Yeah, yeah, I think I think it's a really healthy way of approaching it, honestly. Oh, because otherwise you could end up pushing yourself forever for something that you're not getting as much back from that you want. But I think it's, it's good. Because I have some very complex stories by her words. Oh, what a great mom. Yeah, no, genuinely. How heckin' supportive is that? Really, really nice. I think it's realistic. I also think it's realistic. You know, I am a, a bit of a dreamer myself, but I think I think having it based in realism and, you know, give it a year, see what happens with that support. Yeah, again, nothing, nothing ventured, nothing gained, and you're not losing out from anything from it. I think that's a really, really good way of doing it. You know, you do hear stories of people who give up everything and they don't have the money to do it and they decide to become a full-time streamer without without backup funds or without support and it's like and i think again putting that kind of pressure on something when you don't even know if you're going to enjoy it yet because i have you ever made a full manga before because if do you do you know if you'll even enjoy it it's difficult right if you've never done that sort of thing and uh yeah it can be it can leave people in the red and it can leave people in a really bad situation so yeah i think that prep is really good Ah oh dear, currently not in necessarily spreading my money apart from living expenses, so I'm currently still living with her and family, which is a really good time to give it a go if you can do it when you're still living with family. That, that's that's ideal. I only focus my stories and commissions and I'm happy. Yeah, I know it's going to be difficult, but I think it's going to be good to try. For sure, for sure. No, fully, f fully on board, honestly. Good heckin' mentality. Really supportive from your mum. Honestly, really nice. Really nice to hear. Hell yeah. Oh, dear. I, I can only wish everything to go the best and I hope that it goes really, really well for you. And I hope you get whatever out of it that you wanted to get. I hope that's what you get, whether it be lots of sales or whether it be meeting lots of other artists or whether it be just like, even if it's just cementing yourself as a consistent artist who posts every month kind of thing. I hope you get what you want out of it. Hell yeah. I'm thankful for everyone for the support and advice. Yeah, no, that's really hecking nice. I mean, that's basically what my parents were like. Uh, I'm also in a very lucky position when my parents have literally no idea what streaming is most of the time, <laughs> but they're very supportive. Um, so like, for instance, when, when I lost my last job because of the migraines, they were like, why don't you just stream until you start to get better? <laughs> it's not, I know that it's not gonna be a job for you, but you like schedule. Why don't you just make that your schedule for now? And so that's what I've done. And for me, my goals might be a little different because I'm not necessarily looking to become a full-time content creator. To be honest, I actually really like working. I actually really like working underneath someone else. So I'm not, I'm not like against the idea of going back to work at some point, but it was honestly really nice to have the support of them being like, we're happy that you're doing something uh, given the situation. And it's like, yeah. I'm glad. And I, I didn't in some ways expect that from my family because my family is very, very work orientated. So I didn't think that they necessarily would be like that. Uh, and I was always like, I'll get back to work. I'll go back as soon as I can. As soon as the doctor gives me the glow of I'll go straight back. And they were like, well, why not just, you know, you keep going through this process of losing jobs and you're not getting any better. 
why not actually just take a bit of time? And at this point, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I would say that I got what I wanted out of it. I've been very happy here. It's given me a schedule. It's given me a place to be, and I'm very happy. Can I, I can share this in the Discord of the event if you like. Would you put it in the live stream chat, honestly, anime? Because then I can click, because I, I, I am also interested. Not that I think I'll be around, to be honest, but I'm genuinely quite curious. If you would be okay with putting the details in the live stream chat, just so that I can have a little look after stream myself. Obviously, everybody else can look now, but for me, if I want to do a little bit of a dive, I can look after stream. <laughs> I'd really, really appreciate that. Uh... My sun signs first, and also been drawing for around 11 years almost daily, which did give me burnout of three days. I live weird and fast. <laughs> well, that's the other thing. Yeah, it's not like you're also having to become an artist. You are already an artist. You're someone who has a very recognizable art style and makes really beautiful art that a lot of people already like. So you're not starting from scratch. Oh dear. So I'd be fine to draw a comic if I focus on doing some daily work. Sure, thanks anime. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah, honestly. It sounds just like a really smart decision to give a go. And again, doing it in, in the safety of knowing that you are supported from home, I think, yeah, really, really nice. Because that's that is the one thing when you hear I, I always want to support artists and I always want to give them my my absolute absolute. But sometimes it does worry me when I hear that they don't have necessarily that support, especially when it comes to financial stuff, because it it, it can be difficult in the beginning financially if you don't have someone who's supporting you. Um, or if you don't have other streams of income. So it sounds like you're doing it in a really smart way where you're not, again, putting yourself in the red for it. And I, I yeah, I'm just excited for you. I hope it goes really well. Do you know when you're going to start your year? Do you have like a date in mind of when you're going to you're gonna do like a whole year experimentation? Somme! Zomboti is planning to make a manga. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Som oh, manga! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's. Let me just fill you in on the conversation we're having real quick. Yeah, so they, uh, Zomboti, uh, they they're gonna be doing like a yeah. They're gonna be doing a year where they're gonna give, give making manga a go and see how it goes. And we're, we're all very excited for them. And they're doing it in a way where they are supported by their family, so they're not gonna be going financially in the red to give it a go. And yeah. It honestly just sounds like a really healthy way of seeing if you can turn your hobby into your job and I'm very excited for you. I hope that it goes well. Ah <laughs> uh, dear, I don't quite have the date to start yet but I'm gonna start fixing one story uh, of many to do it. Nice, got you. A very heckin' exciting, very heckin' exciting Zombody. Uh, honestly, I, I know this holiday and like this trip has had some ups and downs but that's such a big up. I, I don't, I hope, I, yeah, I hope, uh, I hope that it goes really, really well. Really, really well. Even if it's a bit nerve wracking. <laughs> I hope it goes really, really good. Hell yeah. Ah, oh, dear. And you'll have to give us updates. When you have, like, when you, uh, it, I'm, I'm, I don't want to overload you with questions when you are literally just starting your planning, but when you have a place that you plan to post it, or when you have a place you plan to print it, or when you have more stuff about it, let us know. I think people here would be really interested. Uh, whether it's on, uh, uh, you know, like a webcomics, oh, that's the wrong side of the needle. <laughs> whether it's on a webcomic style uh, website or anywhere else, like, I think people would be genuinely interested. Uh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Also, did I make myself bleed? I think I'm fine. My thumb is very thick, so I think it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, anime. I'm oh, very excited for the bean that's gonna make the mangas. You can do it, yeah! Oh, dear. actually, this story the last character I drew. It is. Yeah, let us know. Let us know. I might print it and make a translation as well. Hell yeah! I mean, I will translate. Yeah, because you speak more than one language anyway, don't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. You got that multilingual. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just, like, we'll just want to know. I don't want to overload you with questions when it's, I'm sure it's new news to you as well, and it's, it's something you're also in the middle of thinking about and planning, so I don't want to overload you, but when you have more information, <laughs> people here would, would probably love to know. Uh, yes. So please do share it with us when you have when you have stuff to share. Yes. Yeah, it's it's tricky because I'm also a very excitable being, so I'm very excited for you, but I also don't wanna, I don't wanna, you know, I don't wanna scare anyone. I don't wanna scare any people. <laughs> I want me a scary lady who's too enthusiastic. Oh, uh, nah, it is really exciting. Really, really exciting. 
It's always really exciting when someone here takes up a new art venture or is doing something new, whether it is for a job or if it's just for a hobby. It's always really exciting. It's always really exciting to hear what people are doing. Uh, when, when people are like planning to like maybe start streaming their arts as well, that's always really exciting. It's just very hecking exciting. What, a, what an exciting Friday. Hell yeah. Oh dear. Got the English and Spanish fully covered. Hell yeah. Feel free to use that. I have my brain planned and brainstorming. So if you ask me questions, oh, it makes you think. I see. Okay. Right. Oh, okay. In that case, do you think you would do any digital posting like on something like web comics or would you keep it completely off there? Or would maybe you would do like a Patreon so people could see new chapters and behind the scenes? Or do you think it's too early for that? Or <laughs> would you would you be because some people as well, I don't know if this is something that you would do, will take pictures of the manga to some music and put parts of it on YouTube as like chapter previews and stuff like that. Would that be something you'd be doing? Would you stream the process of you making it or would it be completely behind the scenes, secretive, so that people didn't get to see it until the release? Oh, good lord. L listen, I told you I can be a bit much. <laughs> I'll do a hacking support, hell yeah. Oh dear, Jelly, enough questions, but I have more. <laughs> I got so many questions. Oh dear. <laughs> so much, I'm thinking about so much. No, I got so much to ask. This is the problem. I'm, I'm too much. I know I'm too much. <laughs> I'm under no, I'm under no hidden. I know I'm too much. I'm just curious. I think it's too early for Patreon yet. Yeah, I think it'd be cool to start with some streams to some pages. Hell yeah. Yeah, we were. So I, you know, I'm very goblin based. I love goblins. I love goblins a lot. I, I love watching goblin artists. Uh, actually, because of Somne, they raided us, which meant that I got to go back and see them. Uh, we got to we got to meet Grey Mouse, who is making a zombie web comic, and that's been really really cool to watch. Do you watch a lot of streamers that make web uh, comics? Because a lot of people do, and it's it's always really cool to see. Even if they don't do like the main parts of the story, they'll like do the you know the art pages, the character design pages, all that kind of stuff. It's always really cool to see. Like I don't know, there's something. I am, again, very Twitch-based, so I'm a very biased person when it comes to this sort of thing, but I think it's really cool when you get to see people's ideas coming together live on stream before stuff is released. I don't know, it makes it makes me big happy. I like it a lot. I'll admit during the cliffhangers and stuff. Yeah, they're being careful on stream. Also, Blocker, good morning, how you doing? I hope you're doing well. Uh, Zomboti, who you can see in chat right now, is planning to make their own manga. Uh, and they've basically got the, the infrastructure in place so they can take a year out and give it a go and see if they can make their own their own web, well, like, manga comic, right? And so we're all very excited for them and we're all quizzing them, but maybe mainly me, because I'm very excited. I should get back on the comic stuff. Hell yeah, Somne! Oh, I'd love to see more, more art. More art from Somne? Oh, wow. You don't have to, you don't have to ask me twice. I'd love to see that. <laughs> oh, dear. We definitely would not be against it. So I'm just gonna try me draw my own web comics finally. I mean, I'd love to see that as well, anime. I'm not, I'm not gonna complain. Oh no, what a shame. More art. It comes on in October, but it's only in Chile and Spanish. Oh, so I found out the one that you complimented the hands of for the first time. That's gonna, oh, the third book of the manga. Hell yeah. Oh my God. Oh, so much planning. Hell yeah, I love a good bit of planning. Love a good bit of planning. Oh, maybe I'll have to make a, a arguably not as good webcomic, <laughs> but with goblins in it. Oh dear. I used to in 2019 make a webcomic strip style about a barista and his love life. Slice of life stuff. Lovely. Hecking lovely, Somni. I like that very much. I, I think stuff like that, that I do, I do read and watch quite a bit of stuff like that because it's like the stuff which is relatable, but also like chill. Nothing... You know, sometimes I'll have twists. I'll be honest though, I'm, I'm someone who doesn't do big dramatic reads or big dramatic stuff. I just like simple stuff every now and again that I can, you know, chill to. I, I understand like massive epics and people loving them, but I love a little bit of chill stuff, a little bit of chill vibes. It's on the Instagram. <laughs> okay, well, I have something to look at after stream now then. <laughs> oh dear. I would love to make a webcomic like someday if only I had the patience. That's fair, that's fair. I feel like stuff, because Shifty, you were maybe considering if you had the time doing Chroma Core this year, right? I feel like if you were curious, because Chroma Core, a lot of it has to do with designing your own original characters, having a backstory for them and then putting them in different scenarios, right? 
you know, that, that not all of the prompts are like that, but there was like a fair few prompts where you're doing either your character interacting with other characters and stuff like that. Um, so there was like a fair amount of stuff that kind of forced you to do original work. I don't know if maybe you could, because even if you were going to do Chroma Core casually, you could probably just pick out those art prompts that would fit you growing in that direction and maybe just do one a week or two a week. If you didn't have the time to maybe do all of them. Because yeah, like there is a lot of focus in Chroma Core about being able to do your own original designs and characters and then put them in different scenarios or doing different things, which was really, really fun. And like, that's kind of what got me into making, well, I know you've already made original characters, but that's what kind of got me into the idea of making original characters. Because before then, it, it was very much not in my wheelhouse. But then it forces you to do it a few times and you're like, okay, I actually don't hate this as much as I thought I would. <laughs> oh dear. Shmifty, it's Shmifty. You should, yeah. I started a sketch of an NLP comic and I have three pages and I'm thinking of making them digital. Oh, why? Yeah, because you've been doing a lot of uh, redoing old art recently. Yeah, why not? Why not? Even a short four panel is good. My first comics were about Zelda. <gasps> Love Zelda. Oh my God, speaking of Zelda. <laughs> what, a, what a hecking segue. Ophie, how was your stream? I hope you're doing well. The reason I say speaking of Zelda is because Ophie is working on an absolute, sorry, sorry for the damage, is working on an absolutely massive piece uh, from Zelda uh, of a massive mural all in cross stitch. It's very, very beautiful. It's very stunning. And watching Ophie slowly chip away at it over time is just mwah. Chef's kiss, wonderful. But how was your stream? I hope you got up, well, I don't know what you were getting up to today, but I hope you had a really good one. For anyone who's new here, hello, hi. My name is Jelly, I'm a cosplayer based in the UK. I have a specific interest in embroidery. We're actually talking about animation right now because next, next uh, month we're going to be making an embroidered animation. We've done it once before and we're gonna do a second one. I could actually just show you that instead of the cosplay stuff because I, I'm doing cosplay right now and we are slowly chipping away at it, but what we are going to be doing is animation in embroidery and I have done that once before. Maybe I show that one instead. Heads up, uh, we are a mature stream. We talk about butts here sometimes, uh, and this also talks about butts. So this was what I made for the Iron Mouse animation <laughs> I feel like I should competition. get my class first, you know. You have uh, to be a part of the smash or pass. Kid, what the heck? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd love to join the country club. Good morning. And Karen, good morning. And Karen, good morning. And Weird, good morning. And Jackson, good morning. Ophie, of course, good morning. Liam, and Onion, and Alizara, and Rato, and Stitchin, and Zip. Welcome on in. Oh, come on in. I hope you're doing unbox as well. I'm Valiant. Good morning. I hope you're doing well. Welcome, welcome everyone. And Rambon. And Stitch, thank you for the follow. Thanks, thank you for the follow. It's very happy kind of you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm probably speaking over my animation. It's probably making it very difficult to understand what's going on. I'm so sorry. But yeah, we did this before. It was the first time we ever tried to do an animated embroidery, especially because we use only hand embroidery. We made it for the Iron Mouse animation competition. Here's all of the frames. Here they all are. Look at all these frames. We did 124 frames total. Uh, it was a big old project. We did it in three weeks as well. Three weeks. Uh, but yeah, no, this time we don't have a strict deadline. So, yes. Yes. No strict deadline this time. We can make whatever we want and we can take as long as we want and we're going to do goblins. Oh dear. You cut your hair off? <laughs> <gasps> what? What? <laughs> What? <laughs> Ophie, what? <laughs> what? Wait, what? Yeah, wanna see a clip? Yeah? <laughs> yeah, okay. Hold on. What do you want me to see? Okay, okay. What? Oh my god! Oh, you're gonna look so- I bet you look great with short hair though. You got such a pretty face. I bet you look fantastic with short hair. Oh no, it's sideways. Spin, spin, show me, show me, show me the cut. Okay, are we ready? Oh, you're doing a Ramadan fundraiser from Doctors Without Borders? Oh my God. Well, okay, two sex. You look ready? stunning. <laughs> Oh my god, how dare you look so beautiful after like hacking away at your hair, what the heck? Unfair. You're the reason people like me get high hopes when I'm like, oh yeah, I could definitely... And then it's like... Oh god. 
Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you look amazing. Oh my God. Okay, so if you're doing a charity stream, let's just quickly talk about that. Doctors Without Borders, is this for Palestine by any chance? If I'm wrong, let me know. But I know Doctors Without Borders because I've been doing some stuff behind the scenes we don't talk about because I never talk about any of it, to be honest. But uh, yeah, with Doctors Without Borders, is it for Palestine? Because I know they've been doing a lot of really intense and good work over there recently. Um, but yeah, if anyone here is looking for charities to go support, Ophi has cut their hair off for Doctors Without Borders doing the Ramadan support, go send them some love. Big, I'll, I'll do them another shout out because this was doing another one. Um, blah, 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 Ophi, so you can all go over because we love a good charity stream here. We love people putting their heart out for good causes. Hell yeah, Mr. Mittens, oh my god, welcome on it. <laughs> Hope you're doing well. Uh, you never saw it finish, Billy, and we won. We, we were one of the winners, uh, we, which is really, really cool because it means it's funded me to keep doing stuff like that, which is madness, but fun. Insane animation. It's very silly, but it was very fun. We're making another one next weekend. Thank you for the clip. I needed that. Went on a traumatic journey. It was honestly awesome. It's a charity goal. Hell yeah. She looks so pretty right now. She does. How dare. <laughs> I know, rude, right? How dare you hack away at your hair and still look so good? Why do you look so beautiful with craft scissors? Yeah, everyone's very angry at you. If you need to go, if this is too much rage, I completely understand. Also, if you need to go clean up hair or anything like that, please do. Yeah, I completely understand if you don't want to, you know, <laughs> spread hair over everything. Maybe you do. I mean, maybe that's what you like. But if you do want to go clear anything up, please go do it. You're all good. How dare you be so beautiful? I know, right? So no web comment, but yes, Patreon, but later publishing is going to come out whenever I can. And if I make updates on the manga, I'll show also if there's ever goes over the world of digital, I'll translate it and I'll show away. Hacking lovely. So we've been gushing a bit because Zomboti's planning to make a manga and they're taking a year out to give it a go, which is really exciting. It's really cool when people have that kind of plan where they can go give a year to doing something they're really passionate about. So we've just been gushing a bit about Zomboti doing this. Uh, in general, Doctor Who borders, but yes, they are doing a huge thing in Gaza right now. I thought they were. Why well, say I thought they were? I knew they were <laughs> because I, you, I am a bit of an awkward bean, and I, I have not been actively doing any charity stuff for a few weeks, months, because of some stuff that happened behind the scenes, which I can't talk about on stream because it's very unfortunate. But it's a, it's a situation that must be private. But I'm still doing stuff. I'm still doing secrety stuff though. <laughs> secrety, secrety stuff that no one's allowed to know about. Until someone posts it on Twitter. <laughs> if I hit 750, uh, I can... I can't make fun of the United Kingdom for a week. Oh my god. That's very mean. <laughs> we deserve to be made fun of. Oh dear. Oh, 750? How close are you to 750? Brilliant, yeah. Oh dear, I hear something about a win. Yeah, I won the... I was one of the winners for the Iron Mouse animation competition. There was meant to be five winners and I was the fifth one picked. My heart... <laughs> oh dear. Gross, Jelly. Why point out our kinks? You like sh shedding hair all over the house? You like a little bit of hair just like marking your territory with a little lock of hair? Understood. I'm not gonna blame you. Oh dear. Back to the important bit. Tally Tubby smash or pass? <laughs> like smash them to the ground or like fuck? Which one? Because I think pushing a Tally Tubby over would be kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a very good person, but like, I think, I think if you, I think if you pushed the Teletubby over and just went, it'd probably be very satisfying, if not very friendly, but I have no interest in having sexual relations with the Teletubbies, I'm very sorry, it's just not for me, like, if you're into it, I'm not here to judge, but it's not my cup of tea, you know? Oh, <laughs> uh, the Lala is smashed, really? I don't know, I'm not into it, but fair enough. I have three main comic ideas, but I want to do one of them first about character I post in art, so it's going to be really fun. Dinky Winky is daddy, of course. <laughs> he's crying. Thank you, Kian. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, this all happened back in December. But yeah, we, we won. And it's really cool because it means that it funds me to do another one next month. So we're going to do one next month. Not for a competition, though. Just for funsies. Just for funsies and trying to improve. In the spirit of getting as better as an artist. If I'm smart enough, I'll decide if I can make like a manga or a comic. I think a manga will be easier to spread because of paid quality. I kind of get you. Yeah, and also comics are often in colour. And if you were looking to do like some black and white pages, get stuff out a bit quicker. Yeah, I get you. That's why I undershave. So that you can like spread the locks around the house. You want to fuck? Fair. <laughs> but you can, can, you can watch television at the same time. I guess. Nunu got the vacuum though. Oh dear. I don't know. 
Nothing about the tubby Teddy Tubbies has ever s screamed like sexual deviance to me, but I'm also just one person with one set of interests and one set of likes, and so I can't speak for everyone else here. And like, I'm not here to shame. It's not for me personally, but if you're interested, you're fair. You're fair. I have to leave. I have the world of the Teddy again. I might explode. Yeah, no, you're fine. <laughs> worry about it don't worry about it honestly if anything i'm relieved because i don't have to worry about people coming in in here and being like why is this embroidery artist talking about weird stuff because i know that they're already talking about weird stuff with you <laughs> also yeah you got a shower no and I, you look stunning and i can't wait to see all of your new hairstyles and all that kind of stuff and yeah if anyone by the way i know we've been talking a lot about random shit but if anyone hasn't checked out ovi before and they are interested in embroidery if they are interested in stitch work crafts uh, especially really detailed big projects uh, definitely check out ovi like outside of all of the memes they are an incredibly talented artist and they are also doing a really good job raising money uh, we've been shouting out a lot of people that have been fundraising because of because I have not been able to fundraise this spring, which is the first spring that I have not been able to do a fundraiser in four years. If you can tell, I'm a little bit background angry. I can't talk about any of it, but I am angry. <laughs> a little bit about the, the circumstances that I can never talk about. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we've been trying to basically shout out other people that are with, you know, like Blaffle has just done an amazing fundraiser for the Starlight Foundation, where I believe you've raised the most that you ever have in one single fundraiser. And also the entire team has raised over uh, $80,000 for charity, which is incredibly impressive. You know, Ophi doing Doctors Without Borders. Uh, I know a few people who are doing Doctors Without Borders and it's such a wonderful charity. And again, they are having to work especially hard right now. So any extra funds towards them goes a really, really long way. Uh, I know as well with Doctors uh, Without Borders, they are also basically doing certain petitions. So if you can't donate, there are other things you can do as well. You can sign your name on these petitions. If you go to their website, there's lots of things you can do instead. Or if you can donate and you're looking to put some money towards it, if you get, if Ophi gets to, what is it, $750, there are things that they will be doing, which is basically not being mean about the UK, which is hard. You know, as, excuse me. Excuse me, did you just snap for no reason? Oi oi. But yeah, no, as someone who lives in the UK, it's very hard to not be mean about the UK for a whole week. So honestly, that's a proper challenge. Oh dear. I am himbosexual, understandable. Oh dear, poor Ophi. I know, right? Poor Ophi. That's why so many text ones are purple. Oh lord. Oh lordy lordy. Mostly, because I've seen people draw their comics and have the manga size and it confused me before, but then I'm like on the last page, like, wait a second. Yeah. Thank you, cool people. Take care of yourself. Oh dear. Do you have that animation posted anywhere? Yeah, Kian, I think I actually have it. So a couple people have asked about it today, so I literally just have it on hand. There you go. It's on YouTube. Uh, I just have it because I didn't realize that, I, I think, I've, I'm just one of those people. I talk about things once and then I'm like, oh yeah, everyone knows. We mentioned that we made an animation and we won. Everybody knows about it. In reality, that's not how it goes. <laughs> that's just not how things work. I'm so sorry. My brain is a little slow, but we do happen to have the link now. So you can go check it out. It's there. And I'm very, very proud of it, but we're going to make something better. Ah, oh, dear. The bougie man, the bougie man. Welcome on in. Thank you so much for the follow. It's very kind of you. Will we be able to talk about it one day? I'll never be able to talk about it. Never, never. It will never be, never be talked about publicly, and that's okay. That's okay. It'd be like that sometimes. Uh, is this a mermaid fin? No, actually, Billion, this is a piece of a jacket. I can hold it up and you'll see. Let me just take my actual jacket off. What was that? Is that my chair? I hope that wasn't my chair. Otherwise, I might be in danger. Um, no, it's this piece. So it goes underneath the arm here and it goes over the shoulder there and it's part of a jacket so it'll be two-sided so this is one pattern piece uh the reason it is that weird shape is because it's a very very short jacket because it's what all of the sleeves are attached to so the idea is that you can completely move the sleeves of the costume if you're feeling you're a bit overheating because i i do overheat in costumes very easily so all of the sleeves the designs are kind of like oh, hidden off to the side but all of the sleeves are excuse me you don't need the edge of the table. There you go. All the sleeves are d detachable, basically, because they're part of a tiny, tiny jacket. Uh, hard to be said. Yeah, I'm not going to go into that shifty right now because that is a that is a topic. But that is <sighs> it's a tricky one, right? Because I know exactly part of why that got set, and it's very frustrating because it happened at the same 
at basically the same event where they were speaking about my human rights. <laughs> so I, if it's okay with you, I am not going to go into details about that because that is incredibly close to home. Uh, that is something that I have been, you know, you, you know what I've been doing in Parliament and you know the stuff. It's, it's hard. <laughs> Too hard right now. I need a little bit more time on that one because that was such a shutdown to something that we've worked on for like about a year at this point uh, that it's too much. Too much. Sorry. Oh dear. I am indeed not a knower. What are we knowing? Stuff to do with animation. I'm uh, actually valiant. I feel like you knew, right? I know that we made the Iron Mouse animation and then we won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love your smocking. I want to poke it right. It's so squishy. I am in such a, a positive position here where, uh, where, yeah, I get to squish it as much as I like. I get to do all of the squishiness. Oh, you weren't around for that? Oh, Valiant. Yeah, no. We, in, in, uh, in November, we, we, so basically Iron Mouse for the first time opened a fan animation competition, uh, and anyone could enter it with any kind of animation. And, I had been getting very into embroidered animation and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, no, it was, it was, it was really, really fun. We basically spent three weeks embroidering nonstop. And then we made the animation at the end of it. And, uh, and also I, I'd actually, you know, a thing that people might not have known, which made me really, really, made me well up a little bit, to be honest. Um, Iron Mouse put my animation in their highlights of 2023 video with one other animation as just the, the two animations that made them smile. And I was just like, <laughs> so as an artist, I don't know how other people feel about this sort of thing, but having someone who your work makes them happy, especially when it's someone that you you really enjoy. Like I loved Iron Mouse for years, like someone who you've really looked up to uh, as a streamer and as someone I've really looked, like always really enjoy their content. Having someone like that, like really like your artwork, <laughs> it, it gives you the big warm. It's, it's why fan art is such a lovely thing to be able to make for people because if someone, if someone really appreciates your fan art, it gives you such a warm feeling as an artist. And so like, yeah, that's the first time I'd ever made something like that. And to have such a lovely response, not just from Iron Mouse, but also the whole community, because I lurk that community hardcore. She's an evening streamer for me. So I'm normally very, very lurky around that time. And yeah, to have such a positive reaction was just like, ah. and so then, so to be picked as a winner was one thing, but to also be in the end of the year highlights video was like, oh. I am a small emotional artist bean. So yeah, it was really, really cool. And I'm very happy. I'm really happy with that. But the next one is gonna be a little more low key. Uh, it's gonna be more intense animation work, but it's not gonna be for like another content creator, especially not one so much bigger than me. <laughs> Cause that's the thing, making it for Iron Mouse was amazing. And I had such an amazing time and I'm so glad they liked it, but I would rather not have as many eyes on me next time, just so that I can grow more as an animator, as an embroidery artist without so many people watching. Uh, because sometimes it's a little intimidating when you have like 31,000 people watching you <laughs> and, and judging. It's, it's, it's fine. And it, I, again, everyone was really, really nice. So I don't want you to think anyone was being mean to me. No one was being mean to me. But I just would like to grow a little bit quieter. And yes, 31k. If you click the video, it's had 31,000 views at this point, I believe, if memory serves. Uh... Yep, 31,000 views. It had 10,000 concurrent co views on Twitch when it was debuted because it was debuted quite far in, which means when Iron Mouse played it was already, they'd been live for like three hours and they had about 10,000 viewers. <laughs> so 10,000 concurrent co co viewers on its debut, 31,000 separate views on my YouTube. It's been quite viewed. That's why I want to make something a bit more low key because I am, I am but a hobbyist. But a hobbyist. It looks like a satisfying texture. It's very satisfying. It's very satisfying. I think I, you're, you're all good. I've just been following since the end of December. Oh, end of December. In fact, I see. It feels like you've been around for years, Valiant. I don't know why. You got one of those vibes. It feels like you vibe very well, this community. It feels like you've been here for a very long time. That's great. GG's. Good morning, Amazonia. Good morning. How's it going? I hope things are going well. Oh, dear, it's incredible. Yeah, it was quite intense. What is it? I thought it was like a small streamer group or something. Whoa. Whoa. Well, I'm, I, I, I am small. 
It was a lot for me. It was a lot for me. The smoking is looking so cool. I still don't understand how you get it to look like that on the front. It's, it's really easy. It's just, yeah, it, it does change a lot. Because, like, one stitch makes it look so different. But you get so used to it, it just becomes, like, a little, little you know, doing the same thing over and over. And we're slowly getting it to be, like, that more square look now. It's getting there. Oh dear, how many entrants were there? 60 something, I believe? There were technically more, but certain people got disqualified because the, there were rules to the competition. One of the rules was that it couldn't be longer than a minute, so anyone who submitted one was longer than a minute. They still got shown on stream, but they couldn't win a prize. Uh, and then there was one or two that got disqualified because... So uh, anyway, I think most people here will know Iron Mouse, but if you don't, Iron Mouse is a VTuber. They have their face hidden, and I believe a couple people were disqualified because they had basically drawn what Iron Mouse might look like IRL, which is a bit of a faux pas in the VTuber community. Even if they've given any descriptions about themselves in the, in the past, just for their own safety, you don't normally draw what they might look like behind the screens, right? Because they're faceless. So I think a couple people got disqualified for that. Uh, but I think that was about it. Most, most people did get in. Um, so yeah, you, and so I think it was about 60 people, or oh, 60 animations. I take that as the ultimate compliment. Yeah, I know, it was a huge compliment. <laughs> Final days on commission! She still hasn't emailed me to say what address she wants to send it to, so it's very odd. Okay, that is odd. But in more positive news, I saw the pictures you were posting on Twitter about the new outfits. Yeah, I was gonna say, in good news, I, <laughs> I saw the pictures you were posting and they look so pretty. Oh my God. I have no interest in watching House of the Dragon, but my God, the, 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 the costumes are just, they're stunning. That, that, that piece, oh my God. With all the texture, so pretty, so pretty. I look. I, I'm assuming you're going to be making a few of them, and I look forward to seeing them. <laughs> this is witchcraft. I have no idea how you're doing this. So basically, there's all these little, uh, these little bits, and I've painted them purple in the middle, which is why they have that like slight color variance, and you can kind of see it. It's not the, it's not the light playing tricks. I've like individually painted all of these so that they have a slightly darker purple in the middle. What I do is I peel back the the bit here, and there's like a little stitch in there. So when I peel it back. I go through that same stitch again. So there it is. I don't know if you can see it very well, but it's in there. It's a tiny, tiny stitch. I go through that same stitch again and then pull it through. And then I go to the other side and I like put my needle through and as far as it can go and go into the same stitch the other side. So it's like yeah, just about there. And then we pull it tight and then that box becomes a bow. <laughs> now it's a bow. It's not a box anymore. Now it's a little bow. And Bruce, good morning. Welcome on in. I hope you're doing well. I have, I've known about Ovi for a year or so, so maybe we're aware of each other, but I hadn't official joined here yet. No, no, it's very fair. Ovi is my morning comfy streamer. I love them very much. I also, the thing of, for anyone in my community, weird amount of Welsh people in Ovi stream. Genuinely. I feel like every time I go in, I see like 10 people who are talking about being Welsh. And it's like, how do, why is everyone Welsh in Ophi stream? Also, why are all these Welsh people are, like up and awake at 6 a.m.? What's going on? <laughs> What's going on? All these Welsh people are gathering in Ophi stream. Hilarious. Very funny. Oh dear. Whenever I pop in, it's like, there's someone talking about being Welsh and it's like, what? Another one? What the heck? Oh dear. <coughs> Thank you for the generous donation of piss. Yeah, it feels a bit uncomfy. It's just not something you really do. It's a, it's a faux pas. The post address is the one my friend did a lot of embroidery for, and I haven't got the possession of the whip close-ups, so I can start the embroidery as soon as I'm back to the UK. <gasps> oh my god, even though the full dress hasn't been revealed yet, that's so exciting, Amazonia! Oh my god! Is there? Yeah, there's a lot of Welsh people over there. You'd be surprised how many Welsh people you can fit in Ophi's stream. <laughs> NDAs aren't broken uh, unless it's to help a friend make a costume. Yeah, then then maybe like a little, a little bit. Playing more started and officially started my modding journey. I've never modded any games before. You're loving it. Hell yeah. It's probably me. It's you. I live in Wales. I'm not Welsh though. I just live there. Uh, OP stream is a lot of short people as well. So short and Welsh. Here we are. Uh, Ovi is my morning comfort streamer as well, especially when I'm up before sunrise. Yeah, yeah, like early morning for me. Whenever I have to get up particularly early, I, Ofi's always on and it's like, hell yeah. I can watch Ofi as I'm having to get up annoyingly early and that makes me happy. I like that. That's good vibes right there. You, you know, 
I don't watch television in the morning. The first thing I do is turn off Twitch. You need someone like that who can wake you up in the mornings, but not too intensely. Uh, you know, like a mild wake up. Like it's cozy, a little cursed, but mostly cozy. <laughs> Welsh people are so much rarer on Twitch, and Welsh speakers even more so. I've maybe about 10 people, but no other Welsh speakers. I'm learning Welsh, but I am learning Welsh specifically so that if I ever have a child, which I'm not planning to do in the near future, but if, uh, that I, we could teach them first language Welsh, because my partner is first language Welsh, and most of the schools in Wales are better funded if they're first language. There's also a lot of stuff you can get at higher education, which are like grants and bursaries, if you translate your documents into Welsh as well. So for instance, if you were to write a dissertation, if you translate it into uh, Welsh as, and submit both of them, you get huge grants and bursaries, like thousands of pounds for that kind of stuff, because in Wales they're really pushing that. So. I am literally trying to become not not I'm not going to be ever be fully fluent, but well enough in Welsh that we can speak Welsh around the house, so that my child can be dual language Welsh and English, and so that they can get more grants and bursaries as they go through school. <laughs> literally, is the only reason I am learning Welsh because uh, as as cool as I think it is to have two languages, I am far more like I've done a lot more Spanish and stuff like that, so it would make normally more sense for me to just keep doing that. But it is useful to have Welsh as a language because yes, it, it does help you, but you have to agree to also submit everything in multiple languages, which is extra work. But if you've already written it and you're then just translating it, it's not quite so bad. And also again, the bursaries that you get are big enough that I think that it's very worth it, to be honest. And it's just because there isn't a lot of specific Welsh literature in, like when it comes to like, if you're say doing studying like microbiology or like something like that, there isn't a lot of papers that are written in Welsh at this point, they're mainly written in English. So they will give you big grants and bursaries if you are writing a paper like that to put it into Welsh as well, to increase the Welsh literature in more specific fields. Again, this is all very much planning for the far, far distant future, but it's why I'm starting now, because uh, Shiny can speak uh, Welsh fluently. Their whole family speaks Welsh fluently. They often speak Welsh to each other, uh, but I don't because I'm English. <laughs> so I need to I need to get on board with it. But it, it's a good a heckin' reason. It's a good heckin' reason to learn. <laughs> oh, damn, I didn't know that. I'd like to go to uni at some point. And I think it's really good to know. It depends what you're going into, what you can get. Again, if you're going into a very specific field, you'll likely find there's more options available to you because if you went into something like performance theatre, there might not be as many papers that you have to write, and so you wouldn't get as much. But again, if you went into like biology, if you went into a science or something where there was a lot of papers that you would be writing and a lot of documents that they might not have in Welsh already, then yes, you're basically being paid as a translator while you're in university. Uh, and I know a couple people uh, in Chinese family, but also in other families as well, who have done exactly that, and it, they're big bursaries. <laughs> If you can already speak fluent Welsh, you can get some really good, and again, because it's like, it's not loans, they're grants and bursaries, you just get the money. Like, why not? If when me, Jack, moved to Wales, do you think it's worth us learning a few key phrases? If you're, if you're living in South Wales, you'll never really need it. As long as you know, like, if someone's saying like, borrow da, print hand da, uh, da, all, all, all that kind of stuff, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. It's mainly just like, greetings, uh, diolch. You'll see kutch around a lot if you're in South Wales. You'll get like the general ones like hello, thank you stuff, but like you won't really need any Welsh. If you start going more into West Wales or especially North Wales, a lot more people will approach you in Welsh rather than English first. And at that point it can be useful. Also, if you're going to some of the larger craft fairs, for instance, like one of the ones I really like going to is the Royal Welsh. Uh, it's a huge, huge farming fair, but a lot of crafts and artists, people will go there and display their stuff. A lot of people will only speak to you in Welsh there. So if you are looking to table at one of those events, having some Welsh knowledge is good because you're more likely to make sales. Even if you're not fully fluent, like just the, the effort that you're putting into trying is enough. Because again, Welsh people aren't mean, you know, and a lot of them will just appreciate you giving it a go, even if you're not getting it 100% right. Uh, so it's like, yeah, if you are planning to table at craft fairs here, having a base level of, of Welsh will get you more sales because again, it'll get people trying to talk to you. It'll start a conversation. And again, if you're going more West or North Wales, more people will approach you in Welsh first, English second. Yeah, yeah. But if you're only going to be living in South Wales, like Cardiff, Swansea, Newport area, like that kind of strip, you'll probably be fine with just English. 
It's only if you're going further afield that you might you might want it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope that explains it. If you speak Spanish to your child and your partner speaks Welsh to them, you'll have a trilingual child. My Spanish is probably not going to be good enough, though. Like the thing is, I I trust that Shiny can do very good Welsh, so it's like in that case, yeah, that that helps. Uh, and so does their whole family. This is the thing. Like when you get them all together, they will just be speaking Welsh to each other, and that's not something. That that's something that I would like to be able to have in our house too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas Spanish, there's no one for me to speak it to. <laughs> Oh dear. Like 50 page documentation, it's gonna be a while, but maybe say because I'm terrible at formal Welsh, so it'd be a lot of googling, even for me, yeah. North Wales, best Wales, live in Anglesey and around farmers most of my life, and I have no idea the Royal Welsh was except uh, farmers. Oh my god, there's so much more there, Royal Welsh. Like literally, there's so many craftspeople. There's like, um, there's, what do you call it? You have like jewellery makers. You have lots of food crafts because it's obviously farming, but you also have like a lot of like handcrafts, like knitting, crochet, all that kind of stuff, felting, uh, baby clothes, gloves, socks, all good stuff. Second hand as well. Yeah, I love it. I love Royal Welsh. <laughs> We go. We don't do the summer one. The summer one very often because it's a bit too intense. But the winter one, perfect. Muddy. Let me go when it's muddy. Uh, that does. Yeah, we're sticking real south east or near Bristol. Yeah, you probably won't have any issues. It'd only be if you ever wanted to table other craft fairs around that it might be used having some basic stuff. Outside of that, you'll be fine. You really would be fine. Good morning and bye. You bye. Welcome and in bye. Well, no, welcome and bye. Welcome on in. Nice. <laughs> Same. Jelly's bye. Yeah, I'm also bi. Are we collecting the bisexuals here? Wait, did F Skrill say they were bi? Oh no, they said trilingual child. <laughs> we got them good views. It's like, wait a second. Are we collecting bisexuals? I'm okay with that. We can collect. The short Welsh bisexuals. <laughs> a very specific collection. Sounds awesome. I used to go to the Woodland Festival at first. Oh, okay. Oh, man. I see. Yeah, that's it. That's a good way of putting it. Artisan market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An artisan market. There's, There's like... And it's growing every year. Yeah, yeah, the artisan market. Thank you. Words. <laughs> you know, the problem is I struggle with English and that's my only language, let alone learning a second one. But, you yeah, know, we, we, we do it so that if I ever have a kid that they have more opportunities because, yeah, in this country, there are benefits to speaking first language Welsh, for sure. And I wouldn't want to... I, if I physically can give a kid that benefit, then I would, you know? Especially since I have someone who can correct me at all times. It'd be much more difficult if we were both learning Welsh, but it's just me. Uh, although, it is still my favourite thing is to take Duolingo's Welsh to Shiny and be like, is this right? And then Shiny, like, blow up. <laughs> be like, what are they saying? This is ridiculous. You're mixing, you're mixing two different tenses. What are they even saying? That's not how you do it. <laughs> I love it. It's so funny. My favourite thing is to give my Duolingo to, to Shiny and have them write complaints. <laughs> about the way that Duolingo is doing their Welsh. They're like, that's not how they do that. That's not it. That's not the mutation. They've got the wrong one. And it's like, okay. <laughs> Hilarious. Hilarious. Will always make me smile. Ah, oh dear, but I'm not at a level where I could pick that out. Genuinely, I just, I, I learn what I am taught. We're already, I'm only 30 centimeters tall. I'm very sure it could be try <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, uh, it's awesome crazy. oh, sorry, I've read that one already, my bad, my bad. Add me to the short buy list. Yes, <laughs> another one. <laughs> oh, they'd be a very niche Twitch team. Hello, we are the short Welsh bisexuals. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> it would be, be such an odd Twitch team. It's so weirdly specific. <laughs> Oh dear, we'd have to have some real rules on what counts as short though, because technically I'm actually not short. I'm short in my friend group, but I'm not actually short. I am very much, like, I am one inch above average height, so I'm, I'm technically, technically tall. But in my friendship group, I'm one of the shortest. I'm only technically tall. Oh dear. It'd be nice to have a kid who could correct your English. Genuinely, I think that's what's going to happen. I'm going to have not just one person correcting me anymore. It's not going to be shiny. It's going to be shiny and child. <laughs> Everyone's going to be collect correcting my English and my Welsh. I'll just be being corrected 24-7. I'll come to stream just to escape. <laughs> oh, dude, the only Welsh I know is what's a Kieran. Anyone under six foot is short. Yeah, that's kind of how my friendship group is. Everyone under six foot is immediately counted as short. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why people that know me IRL call me short. It's because everyone is like six foot in my friendship group or more. And it's like, oi oi, why is it just me? Why am, why am I not six foot? This isn't fair. But 
it does mean that I am perfect makers and crafting height because a lot of the people that I've met from makers and crafters we're all the same height we're all five six it's really funny because we have uh, when when me Sun Koi and Hut Armory is all met up we were all exactly the same height and it's very I don't know I just makes me smile I like finding other people the same height as me we're all the same height ah oh, dear and then uh, and then uh, Vile Mods is also 5-6, five, uh, six, five, uh, five, six, not 6-5, six, oh my god, <laughs> I've added a lot. Oh dear, short go, yeah, I'm 5-11, yeah, oh the same, oh, I'm 5-10, uh, I'm the exact, not that short, but tall, start, uh, but tall height of 5-10, oh okay, and you're just 5, wait Blackpool, you're just 5 foot? You have a tall personality then, because I just assumed you were taller than me. You got that tool personality, Blapple. Oh my god, Yuri! Welcome on in! How are you doing? We're talking about heights. We're all comparing our heights to each other right now. Because we were considering making a very specific, very specific Twitch, Twitch team of short Welsh bisexuals. <laughs> and it's weird that we've had so many offers. Why are there so many short Welsh bisexuals in here right now? Also, Yuri, good morning. Welcome on in. I hope you're doing well. How was your stream? What did you get up to? I oh, wait, were you playing Animal Crossing? We're literally playing the Animal Crossing OST right now. It gives me good vibes. Oh, uh, dear. 5'10". Five, 5'10 ten. Five, ten's a good height. It's a good height. Don't worry. I will not be the same height. You will not. You're going to be so tall. I wish I was Amazonia height, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> really want to be seven foot, that would be cool, that would be cool. Also, Fluss, welcome on in, and Yuri, four seven? Oh, <laughs> welcome on in. I hope you're doing well. And Melody, good morning, it's the mini computer with a big heart. The Yuri Express is pulling in at your station. Yuri, heart raid, let's go. Welcome on in, I hope you're enjoying your Animal Crossing. For anyone who has not met Yuri before, we've been having some really fun conversations with Yuri recently because... We were, I was, what was it? We were talking about the Honkai Star Rail thing and I was like, I don't know if you're gonna like this, but there was this really cool dance between two of the female leads and I thought it was really, really cool. And then Yuri comes in like, I literally have Yuri in my name. <laughs> like, I don't know why you're asking me if I'm gonna enjoy this. <laughs> Boreta, tentacle Boreta, welcome on in. Uh, Twitch scream. Yeah, we're, welcome to the Twitch scream. Lurk with lucky and have a lovely look. Take care of yourself. I'm a cis lady though, so under six foot, I still get so many, wow, you're tall. Can, you can you can have her from me. Wow, I'm very jealous. Playing Animal Crossing, hell yeah. How about a tall Welsh bisexual? I, you know what? I'm not against it. I'm not against it at all. <laughs> we could take a few tall Welsh bisexuals. We could have two opposing teams. <laughs> we could have short Welsh bisexuals and tall Welsh bisexuals, and then for like charity events and stuff, we could all come together. <laughs> oh dear. Massive. Two hundred and fifty nine. I'm very jealous. How can I become 259 centimeters? They're like a whole meter taller than me. Oh dear, you're fabric sized. Yeah, fabric sized. Oh dear, 140 of power of power. Now I mean, God, I, you were just adding 10 centimeters at a time. How can we all become so tall? Oh dear, gay by name, gay by nature. I'm the shortest dog gay in the family. <laughs> you could make that a Twitch team. A Twitch team of all the people that identify as the shortest gay adult- uh, sorry, the shortest gay adult guy in the family. Yeah, there you go. Oh wait, no, shortest adult guy, not a short- I read that as shortest adult gay, it's because we've been talking about bisexual. <laughs> the shortest adult gay. Can we change it from shortest adult guy to shortest adult gay and make a Twitch team of that? Because I kind of like that. Also, Melody, thank you for the follow and Armenia. Sorry, I haven't introduced anyone to the stream. Hello, hi. My name is Jelly. I am a cosplayer based in the UK. I predominantly have an interest in beading, embroidery, sequining, anything fabric related. We also do uh, animations out of embroidery. We also do other bits and bobs. I'm actually, instead of going to show you my cosplay reel, though, I'm going to show you the animation because we've been talking a lot today about starting a new animation. Next month, instead of doing cosplay for a month, we're going to be making another embroidered animation. And here's one we made previously which we entered into the iron mouse animation competition and won uh, there we i go. feel like i should get my class like first you know an introduction of sorts and also amelia and tentacle thank you for your follows uh, yeah you. yeah i'd love to join the country club i got my snake skin boots ready i had to bend over uncomfortable yeah nothing is built for you if you're tall it's just not yeah, airplanes aren't built for you. It's a really long stream, but really cute and soft. Grant, oh no, it's late! Right. Yuri, if you need to go look after yourself, if you've had a long stream, you need to go chill. Please, please. What the fuck is this? If you need to go do stuff, you're all good. 
Very nice. Very nice. Ah, oh, dear. Breathe, breathe. I'm thinking about it. Soon, maybe. You have to have some breaking security tower. No, but you take them back in. Just take them back in and they'll fix it. If you have the receipt. There you go. There's a thing we made. There's a thing we made. As a gay person, now identify as the shortest adult gay. I'm the shortest adult gay in my family. <laughs> we should make a Twitch called Play Crafty Team, honestly. Yeah, honestly, that would be kind of nice. That, it would be lovely to have a cosplay specific team. I'm so nervous about Twitch teams though, because because when I started streaming was in an era where there was a lot of very predatory teams. Uh, I know that that's not necessarily the case anymore and things have changed a lot, but I'm always so anxious around teams because I'm like, oh, there, there's just a lot of, there's a lot of un feelings in there. But I guess a cosplay one wouldn't be bad. Uh, and voice animation, incredible, yeah. Oh, is that Connor? Yeah, that's a, that's a Sea Dog, Sea Dog, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, dear. If you like, uh, if you, if, like, you literally talked over the animation again. I do it every time. I'm so sorry, Blapple. You can't shut me up for even two seconds. What was the prize? 2k in dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got 2k dollars. Uh, which was really, really nice because it's literally funded my birthday present for Shiny, which was great. It also is funding parts of the wedding, which is fantastic. And then the rest of it helps me do my embroidery next month. So it did all, all get kind of allocated kind of quickly because it's an expensive year, but I'm still very happy for it. Also, Mighty, thank you so much for the follow. That's very hecking kind of you. Uh, dear. Would you like them to show? Do you want me to show you the cosplay as well? I can. I have it on. I have them all like here. There you go. There you go. Here's a previous cosplay we made. So we make big sparkly things. We're just big sparkly people who like big sparkly costumes. The cosplay we're currently working on is the collector from the Owl House because I love the Owl House. But we are specifically doing it using only techniques from the 16th century. So yes, we're doing like a lot of old, older fashion techniques, but with a slight modern twist, you know? So that's why we're doing smocking, because it's a uh, manipulating fabric by using knots. The, by the way, this entire costume, there's 160,000 beads and 20,000 sequins, and all of the gold you're seeing is either beading, sequining, or embroidery. It took us a year to make it, uh, but we got to debut it at TwitchCon, which was really, really fun. And uh, yeah, I'm really, really proud of Mateus. Mateus is a costume I love. This one's going to be better, though. I'm going to make an even better one. Hell yeah. Ah, oh, dear. Oh dear. If you ever do want to make a team, I'd be super supportive. Thank you very much. That's very heckin' kind of you, Amazonia. I really appreciate it. I, I've considered it, but it's tricky. I, I have a lot of feelings about teams, and so it's it's something that I've thought about before, and I, I don't know. I don't know. I might have to have a newer think about it and look how things are in the ecosystem now. Because I'm definitely not against it, but it's it's tricky. It's tricky, you know? Oh dear, that's fancy. Yeah, we were super fancy that day. We were like a we were a fancy lady and our sparkly. And I still I love that costume so much. I'm still very fond of it. I love gold and that costume is so gold and sparkly. But no, we're doing the collector and we're going to be we're making a lot of panels like this. So this is a technique called smocking, where you basically just knot and fold fabric over and over again until it makes really pretty patterns. And this is gonna be part of the jacket. Uh, we have done a lot of this pattern previously. We've actually been working on this costume since about this time last year, like slowly over time, not all at once. And uh, yeah, it's it's a big one. It's a big one, but it's good. And I'm really enjoying it. Also, it is time for a Discord art share. Ah, oh, dear Mello loves you. Oh, bless you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mello. I appreciate it. And yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I really love making costumes. Again, next next month, we're going to be making an animation. We'll be taking a little break from cosplay, which is kind of why I'm getting a bit more of it done now. And we do have... Do I have any bits and bobs I can show of like how it's going to end up looking. Yeah, yeah. So once it's all been fully decorated, it ends up looking like this. So we edge it with gold, gold for daytime, silver for nighttime. So we have the warm colors in the day and the cold colors during the night. And then it has these little stars in it and it's got sequins and they're meant to look like tiny little stained glass windows because a lot of the fabric is inspired by the architecture in the third season of the Owl House because it all comes from the brain of the collector. So the thought is if the costume is being redesigned as if the collectors designed it but from the 16th century, the mind of a child, it would have a lot of the same movements that it has in the third season where they do redesign a lot of the show. And so yeah, it's very sparkly. It's got like iridescent sequins in it so it sparkles it's all beaded it's very intense on the back <laughs> because they take a really long time to make but it's worth it it's worth it 
Princess Fabric. Yeah, you. if you need to go look after yourself, please do. Uh, I, we are about to do a Discord art share, which means if anyone has done any art in the Discord, we're going to be having a little look at it now. I know anime is posted so I can live stream chat. <laughs> ah, yes, Big PP Energy. That's a good hacking name. Okay, okay. So that is that. There. I will look at that more after stream, but... We do have anime posting in a collar for a turtleneck sweater. Wait, 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 two seconds. Let's have a little look at this. Let's have a little look and see at this. So this is something that Anime Boy Stars and chat has been making. Is this crocheted? Are you crocheting like your own stretchy, like the edges bits? For a turtleneck sweater? Oh my god. That's really hecking cool. I what's it called? Is it like the cording bits on the on the wrists and the neck that you sometimes get in jumpers? You're making them yourself? <gasps> I don't know if I've ever seen anyone make them themselves. I normally just see people buy them. What the heck? That's really, really cool anime. Oh dear. How long is that taking you? I'm assuming quite a while. It, feel, it feels like a, a bit no, tight because it's a lot of heck and damage, a lot of hecking time. Yeah, every hour we take a little break, we have a good old stretch, we have a nice sip, and we look at the, the Discord. <laughs> and we see what other things people are working on. Yeah. I'm making a full crochet turf neck because I don't like the ones in the store too itchy. Ah, I see. <laughs> also, thank you for the flex tape and thank you for the horn. Hell yeah. It's a lot of heckin' damage. It's a lot of heckin' damage. That is a horn. The horn is a lot of heckin' damage. Oh dear. All right. Very heckin' cool. Thank you so much. I think that's everything for now. I think we are pretty early in the stream right now, so people are still chipping away. So we haven't got quite so much to show, but that's okay. We don't mind a quick Discord. I actually... I'm going to hold off on doing a stretch because I am feeling a little bit in my left shoulder, which is not the one that's really working out. So I'm going to give it a bit more of a break before we do our next one. I haven't kept track of the time, but I started in January. Oh, I see. Wait, you're going to make me? You're going to make me wait? <coughs> I can throw something in. Oh, you want to throw something in the Discord? Go on then. I haven't reset the timer yet. You have a minute. You have a minute. Uh, and I'll, I will not start sewing for just a second. I'll be a good bean. Take an actual break. You know, I could do some stretches, even if I'm not going to do... Uh... I'm sorry if that... I'm really sorry if the mic picked that up. That was kind of disgusting. Excuse me, shoulder. How dare. Sorry, it just like cracked four times. What's wrong with you? Why are you so weak? Oh dear. I had the cuffs and one front panel and the collar working on and some other things I had to do. Oh. Nice. Okay, so you've actually been doing quite a bit then. Hell yeah. Ugh. Yeah, I feel it a little bit in this one, but we have done four days in a row, so I think that's why. Like, uh, for streaming last week, we did five days in a row though, so I don't know. Maybe it's just a, a built up thing. It still feels better than it did. Oh my god. Yeah, basically, when we did the animation before, for anyone new here, we we, we had to, to get all of the frames done for that. Uh, and I say we had to as if I wasn't enjoying it. I was having a great time. But we had to basically do six embroideries a day uh, for three weeks straight, which meant that I would often be, uh, like, embroidering for anywhere from about 10 to 16 hours a day non-stop without breaks like it was really intense i was quite literally waking up early in the morning so that i could start earlier and like going to bed and like every day it was really really intense it was a really intense workload and like it was really good i really enjoyed myself and like i'm very proud of what we ended up making but like it it was intense right it was very intense and so from there, I have been having some slight back problems because I have basically just, you know, overdone it. Repetitive strain. So we're now being very, very careful when it comes to doing our stretches and also lifting weights in the middle of stream because we're building up some back and arm strength as well. Found a tiny bit of sticky something on my controller. So of course I have to do a full controller cleaning with rubbing alcohol and it's very pretty and clean now, very nice. Oh dear, what I post art in the art channel. Also, speaking of, <gasps> Blapple. Bla oh my God, alpaca. Okay, we've got two things here and they are both gorgeous in very different ways. First of all, we'll do Blapples first because I went all Blapple first. This is so good. This is so, so good. Oh my God, what a good Charizard. Hell yeah. What is this made out of? Is this oil? Oil, it is oil. Oh my God. Hell yeah, nice Charizard. Very heckin' nice Charizard. Immediately recognizable. Very heckin' cool. Oh, I think I actually saw you work. Were you working on this? In, were you working on this yesterday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think you were, right? Hell yeah. Did you finish that today then? Very cool. Very cool. 
And then, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> They're just like me. For real, for real. In Jan Fair, Pul Gwilgin Goger, Ugh, Quinn Drobol, Hantasilio Gogogog. It's too hard. It's too hard. I like that they put the pronunciation underneath. That's not quite how I did it, but oh, I would do it. Jan Fair, Pul Gwilgin Geru. It's gonna go Geru. And then Hantasilio Gogogog. Yeah, so you do the last, I'll do the last bit all together. It's Quindrobel, Hantasilio, Gogogog. Yeah, Quint, Quindrobel, yeah, Quindrobel, I would do all together. And then Hantasilio, Gogogog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When did you last go to? Lanfred, Pull, Quind, Quindrobel, Hantasilio, Gogogog. It's been a while, <laughs> clearly, because I'm still struggling to say it. It's been a hecking minute since I last went. Where, do I have a- do you get bisexual flags? No, you don't. I get rainbows though, and I'll take some rainbows. Listen, I might not be able to give you flags, but I can give you rainbows. Oh, the, oh my god, lemon! Wait a minute, wait a heckin' second! Is that a lemon? <laughs> lemon! Thank you so much for the rain! Oh my god, we have been blessed with friends today, Jesus! How was your stream? I hope you had a really good one! It is a lemon! Lemon! How was your stream? What did you get up to today? Moonlighter? How was it? Did you have a really good time? Welcome on in. We've actually just had a bit of a break. We've just had a little bit of a break and a little bit of a stretch. And we're setting our time as we go again now. Oh, do people just look at the sign and be like, damn, that's a long name. <laughs> yeah, kinda, kinda. How are you doing? I hope you- oh god, wait two seconds. You can come in. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so we might actually be taking a longer break than I thought, for I have been delivered a vegetable fried rice. Delicious, delicious, a vegetable fried rice, which I now have to consume. I was supposed to draw- oh, yeah, uh, Dory Akrita didn't cooperate. I was being angry, so I switched to Moonlighter. Honestly, fair words! <laughs> Let's go! Yeah, it's- I literally got one minute into that time, and then it's like, oh, guess it's lunchtime. Building shop, gathering equipment. Honestly, very fair. That sounds like a that sounds like a nice wind down if you've been having like tech problems are not fun, especially when you're live on stream and everyone's watching. So I completely get you. That sounds like a good a good thing to do if Crete is being a funky a funky bean. Let me have all my little sticker. No, new sticker placed. Oh, the light kills my eyes. Fair, fair. It's a really cute game as well. Hell yeah, pick. Oh, I do love a bit of pixel art. I do love a bit of pixel art. I, I, I cannot deny. It's all the cross stitches. They've gotten me into pixel art. Oh dear. To do words or to go back to farming? Such a difficult choice. Yeah, for anyone. Uh, so because I've just been delivered my lunch, uh, if you've come in with lemon, first of all, I will do my quick streamer intro before we go into this, but we are about to take a very quick lunch break. So first of all, if you came in with lemon, thank you so much for joining. Hello, hi, my name is Jelly. I'm a cosplayer based in the UK. We make cosplays with a specific focus on beading, sequining, embroidery, and sewing. At the moment, we are doing a piece of smocking, which is the uh, like basically knotting and tying fabric into pretty patterns. So the back is quite messy but the front is becoming really really pretty and we're just adding our beads and details around the bows at the moment to make it look really really pretty this is a panel that's going to go on the front of the costume and that's what we're working on today uh previously we've made some really really big costumes no, like oh, not that one not that one <laughs> wrong one wrong one like Mateus from Final Fantasy Tactics Advance, this is another costume where it had a big emphasis on beading, sequining, and embroidery. And yeah, all of the gold is beaded, sequined, and embroidered. This one took about a year, and we debuted at TwitchCon. So this is kind of what we do here. Uh, on Thursdays, we play horror games also for funs because I like horror games. All right. I think, I think that's, that's about everything you need to know about me. We will be doing more cosplay in a minute, basically. I just need to quickly eat my lunch. All right, you got a dash? No, you're fine. Thank you so much for raiding. I really appreciate it, but no, take care of yourself. Completely get it. Aha, yeah. <laughs> me and my very, very messy setup. It's so easy to get lost and not remember where you are. Okay, so first of all, get rid of that. And then we can also get rid of the time till next Discord break because we are we are taking a break right now. If you've never played Words before, am I too late for what on Discord? You will be before lunch, but you can post it in there and I can have a little look after lunch if you're okay with that. Because yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna eat this rice before it gets cold. But if you've never played Words before, if you see a word, you type it in and that's your word. Also, Puffles, thank you so much for the follow. That's very heckin' kind of you. All right, yeah, I see face as well. Let's see if I can get one before I mute myself to eat. 
Oh my god, Eden! Two bloody years! Oh my god. Eden, thank you. Thank you so much for two, 24 months. Thank you so much for 24 months. I really appreciate it. You've joined just as I'm about to quickly eat some, eat some snacks, eat some lunch. But I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so, so much. And yeah, you also had time to like win at words. Good luck, everyone. I'm now gonna mute and eat some rice so that you don't hear my chewing noises. Not that you really chew rice, but you know what I mean. Nice job everyone, well done. We have Eden in the lead, followed by Yuri and then Orti. Then we've got Black Apple, Grobit, myself, Ambrose, and Valiant. GG's everyone, also well done. I know a lot of you are getting words very quickly there. It's tricky when you're all typing at the same time, but you all did very heckin' well. All right, back to muting again. Also nice nude. Honestly, me neither, Orti. I haven't seen a single word here. That being said, B, welcome on in. Immediately getting origami. A nice imago. Well done. Well heckin' done. We had Grobit in the lead that round. We're, overall, we have Grobit in the lead, followed by Yuri and then Euden. Then we have Orti and B in joint fourth. Then Blapple, myself, Chalky, Ambrose, Valiant. Well done, everyone. GG's. And yeah, welcome on in, Chalky. Welcome on in, B. I hope you both had a good week. B, I'm looking forward. Isn't it tomorrow? B, aren't you part of a tournament tomorrow? I think B isn't part of a tournament tomorrow. I think if we exclamation mark B, we can all go over and enjoy B's tournament potentially tomorrow. I think it's tomorrow. There we are. We got it. We got it. All right, back to back to muting myself. But good luck, everyone.
Jeez, well done! Nice beep. <laughs> I don't know what beep is, but nice beep. We had Eden in the lead that round, and we have Eden back in the lead over all, followed by Grover and Yuri. Then Orti, myself, Clues, B, Blaffle, Jockey, Ambrose, and Valiant. GG, well done! I don't even know what a veep is, but good veep. Very nice. We love a good veep. Back to mute. Swag! I <laughs> back to mute. <laughs> Swag me. Oh, nice swing. Okay, the A is fake. I wondered. Bye right, bye. -bye. Oh my god, I barely got to eat anything. You're too quick. You're too quick. GG's. Clues and Orti for the um, joint first position in that round. Overall, we have Eden in the lead, followed by Grobet, then Yuri. Then we got Orti, Clues, Blaffle, myself, B, Chucky, Ambrose, and Valiant. GG's. I smashed it. Jesus, it was fast. I had like one mouthful of food. My god. I think you guys have it down here, so I'm just gonna quickly nip downstairs, make a new cup of tea, and then I'll be right back. Okay, just because my, my old cup of tea is finished. Back in just a second, you got this.
Oh my god, we got to the hard levels really quickly. What the heck? But well done, everyone. Well done. <laughs> oh my god. I thought you just come back and was like, Jesus Christ. It's all the hidden levels already? I, I thought we were still a few away from those. Well done, though. Well done, though. Uh, okay, nouns. Good nouns. God, what is it? Non-user and neurons? Those are hard, long words. Jesus. Also, not good morning. Welcome on in. But what the heck? Excuse me. Skipping three levels again? Oh my god. Excuse me. We have Eden in the lead that frown. Overall, we have Eden in the lead. Followed by Grobbit, then Orty, then Yuri, Clues, myself, Blapple, Greedy Bee, Ambrose. Also, no, Chucky, Ambrose, Valiant. There we go. Well done, everyone. Double heck. I'm so sorry. Wow, you're not doing good. Everyone's doing really good. All right, we got this. Is it magazine? Maybe? Yeah, it is magazine. Nice magazine. Hmm, magazine. 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 Uh, oh, anime. <laughs> nice anime. Oh, uh, yeah, an anemia. Nice anemia. Hmm. Magazine. Oh, amaze. Amazing. Nice amazing. Uh, oh, Eden. Enigma. Magazine. Ma. Hmm. Magazine. Doesn't feel like a word anymore. <laughs> image. Nice image. Manage, nice manage. I'm doing poorly, me too, Orty. I, I am impressed by everyone else, but I ain't seeing nothing. Nice mange. Or mange. <laughs> uh, can you do... No manga. Hmm. Again, nice again! Nice gamine! <laughs> oh god. I swear it's gamine. I, I, it is gamine! Why is it gamine? I don't know! Nice maze! <laughs> oh god. I don't know if you can have minge, but I'll try it. Nah, I was gonna say, I don't think it's gonna take that. That's a... Uh, nah. Oh! Amine! Nice Amine! Oof. You know what we got through though? GG's. Well done. Grobbit leading the pack. Overall though, we have Eden the lead with Grobbit right behind. Then we got Clues, Orty, Yuri, then Blapple, myself, B, Chucky, Ambrose, Nut, and Valiant. Very heckin' well done. It took slut last night. Stop helping me. Oh god. <laughs> All right, we got this. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, wrong, wrong? Nice wrong. Oh, wrongs. It's a hidden S. So I can have tongs? No, wait, there's no T. I'm an idiot, I'm an idiot. Gro is it growing? No, it's wrongs. Like wrongs as in you, you are wrong and these are your wrongs. Uh, rowing, nice rowing. So there's no T. T is fake. And N it no. S is hidden. S is hidden and T is fake. Wrongs. It's six setter. What? Wait, is it not wrongs? Oh my god, was it something else this whole time? It is growing. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. I'm so sorry. I thought it was wrongs. It's growing jelly. I am an idiot. So that means that. I is hidden, T is fake. I got you, I got you. Nice, nice. Owing, nice owing. Gringo, nice gringo. Oh dear. Hmm. Hmm. Ring and groin, nice. Oh my god, yeah, sorry about that. I'm like throwing you all in the wrong direction. You did not deserve that. I thought the long word was wrongs. <laughs> I was wronging. I was wronging all over the place. Oh dear. There's one left. Got scanned by auto mod. Yeah, probably. 
I believe it. I believe that Autumn would do that to you. I just wanted to call you wrong. Oh, I see. Also, well done, Nut, for leading that round. Overall, we have Grobber in the lead, followed by Eden. Then we have Clues, Orti, Yuri, uh, Blaffle, myself, Nut, B, Chucky, Ambrose, and Valiant. I got nothing. I got nothing as well. You got scammed by Order Mod? I'm so sorry, Eden. All right. Grobber stole my word because they're VIP. Oh, wait, do you want me to pause this? This is kind of hard, huh? There you go. How's that? Is that better? Good luck. Good luck. Uh... Hmm... Oh lord, this is a hard one, huh? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, Rancid was a really good idea. Oh! <laughs> Who got it? Nut got one. Which I think was action. I think it was action. got tonic nice tonic oh god it's so hard they move so fast okay d okay okay cashin thank you well done d is fake r is fake u is hidden a tonic nice a tonic caution nice caution Auction! Nice auction! Oh god. Oh, nice count though at the end. Very good. Oh, GG's. Nice count. That being said, well done everyone. That was really hard. That was a very, very... The value got so many considering how long it took us to get a single word. Well heckin' done. Those moves so fast, they do. It's why I freeze the screen when I can. Well done Nut and Aussie for leading that round. Overall, we had Grobber in the lead, followed by Eoden and then Clues. Then we had Orti, Yuri, Nut, Blaffle, myself, B, Chucky, Saki, Ambrose, and Valiant. Well done, everyone. Well heckin' done. All right, let's bring it back. Bring back this. Uh, we are going to go into the Discord because we do have more art, apparently, that has been posted. Let me just get everything back. There we go. And then, if I pop over to the Discord, uh, Yuri said they were modelling something, I believe, in 3D. Yeah, there we go. We have one more thing to show before we get back to work, which is Yuri's work, which has been making some 3D models. Hell yeah. So this is, again, this is making of a 3D model. This is very complicated and there is a lot going on here, but they look really good. The hair looks great. Oh my god, like there's a lot of detail in there. It's looking really, really cool. I approve your teeth, thank you. How long has this break been? About 20 minutes, I think, Nat? Maybe? <coughs> I'd say about 20 minutes. That is beautiful, it is. It's really, really good. Hell yeah. Got it in the last second. Well done, Saki, well done, Saki. That tea is cold. Oh no, I literally just made this tea blaffle. It's boiling hot, boiling hot, actually. Cause that's where I ran off to. I ran off to go uh, to go make my tea because I needed a new cuppa. Uh, my latest model not finished, but good enough to stream with. Hell yeah! No, it's really, really cool. Oh, you need to leave? Take care, get some good sleep, Apples. Lovely to see you. Uh, as much as it is you disgusting, it is always lovely to see you. No more break speed runs? No, we've been really good in that. We've actually got as well to one side. Every single time I go on break, I'm either uh, lifting weights or I'm doing like a full set I'm using the bands. I li I, I, I'm doing like a set of a set of uh, either weights or bands every single break. So I'm at least taking as long as it takes to do a full set. Yeah. Ah, uh, the the brocade pattern took a while to make. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Oh, oh, I should set my timer on the go as well. There we go. Right. It is now an hour till next break. So duck proof smells, but it's not the worst. Without context, leave. That is a very suspicious sentence you've just put in chat. It's like, what, is, what the heck is Schleeves doing? Why are they sniffing duck poo? Oh dear. What, what in the hex? Oh dear. Bye chat. Take care, Blaffle. 
Uh, there are bands. Yeah, yeah. So you have a few options, but it means that we take really good breaks now. Uh, the, how far do you get the thingy? The, here I am. Here I am. So you can kind of see us working our way up it to getting all of the beads and the pretty bows in and stuff. But we are slowly but surely chipping our way with the goal to get the whole way up by the end of stream, which I hope we'll do. It's still very slow because, of course, it's a lot of one stitch at a time. And, and you know, these are a bit more... You have to pull it apart a little bit to, like, do the stitch so it's not quick. But it's getting there. So pretty. Thank you. Yeah, it's getting there. We're, we are we are getting there. We've done a lot for like a week. You did a lot while I was asleep? Hell yeah. That's always nice here. Also, I got you. I hope you got some good Zs. Yeah, we have uh, we have been doing pretty good this week, honestly. Pretty good. I'm glad to hear that the duck poop doesn't smell too bad. <laughs> as, as, as odd and suspicious out of context it is, I'm very glad to hear that it's not too intense for you. Oh dear. But yeah, no, we've been... Uh, we're chipping away, we started this on Monday, so this has just been one week. It might not seem like a whole lot of work for one week, but we've really been going for it. Like, we did, I think, a six-hour stream on Monday, starting it off. Then we did, like, nearly eight and a half hours. Oh, no, we did a Tuesday, because we didn't stream on Monday, did we? So Tuesday, we did, like, a six-hour stream. Wednesday, we did, like, eight hours something. And then today will be, like, another six hours. So, like... Even though it doesn't seem that long, we've been pretty consistently chipping away at this and it's still taken so far just to get to this stage. Uh, you know, minusing breaks and stuff, but like with the whole stream, I guess it'd be about six plus eight is 14. And then so far we've had like three hours today. Six, eight, so we've got 14. And then add three, 17, 17 ish hours. <laughs> we've been streaming this process so far. Uh, and that is not even to include the fact that I did all of the maths off stream. So I did all of the, the pattern stuff completely off stream. So none of that counted, but that takes several hours as well. So I think if we added those hours, we'd be at about 20 hours so far just to get to this stage. <laughs> it's really, really time intensive. Oh, my friend has some pet ducks that when I'm in the house would constantly poof on the carpet. Oh, I could have some spoiled plants this year. No, I'm glad though, it's nice. You know, we had such up and down weather in the UK, being able to spoil them a bit is kind of cool. It's kind of cool. They need that. Ah, oh dear. Yeah, it's been a, a slow process, but a very, very fun process. And I, I very much, in, I like streaming this. I know it's slow and a lot of people aren't as keen on slow craft, but it's just like, you can kind of take your time with it, have a chill time, chat, you know, or vibe, good vibes and such. I like it, personally. I, lo I like streaming stuff like this. I find it to be very, very fun. And very fulfilling. I'm just gonna get a couple stitches on. I actually still need to stitch the whole way around the outside of this and I've not done that yet uh, but I do need to at some point stitch the whole way around the outside of this because yeah holding it in place is quite important and it doesn't hold in place naturally unless you put the stitches in so yes later we will do that we will sort that out not right now but later probably at the end of stream that can be like the last job for today. There we go Lots of moods, so lots of efforts for a small thing, but the results were amazing. Oh, for sure. Like, and I think as well, like, if the process was really not fun, if it was like really unfun work, then I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't. But because it is fun and because it is relaxing, and I do find it like, you know, almost like therapeutic, I don't mind it. I don't mind it because it feels like if anything, I've just spent like twenty hours of self care on this, which is nice because I find it really, really therapeutic. Again, if you hated it, you might not have that same experience. <laughs> but because I really like it, yeah, it feels like I dedicated 20 hours of my week to, to therapy. <laughs> Which is nice. <clears throat> it's only been three days and the peas and the leaves have started sprouting. Oh my god, green fingers much. Wow, wow. You loved watching this? Pineapple does not belong on pizza. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. Anything that belongs on pizza, as long as you're happy, as long as you enjoy your food, anything that you want on it, as long as it's not hurting other people, you put whatever you want on your pizza. You want pineapple on your pizza? You enjoy pineapple on pizza. You want banana on your pizza? You enjoy your banana on your pizza. You want uh, every type of tinned fish from the supermarket on your pizza? You put every type of, every type of uh, tinned fish you want on your pizza. You do whatever you want. I think too many people spend too much time policing other people's lives. P p pay attention to your own. <laughs> you may put what you want on your own damn pizza. Who cares? Ah oh, dear. Ah oh, dear. So I want p uh, pizza now, but I don't have pizza. Peanuts on pizza? That doesn't sound too bad. I like one. Okay, so I get judged for this one, but there's one that I really like, 
and it is curry on pizza, which we've talked about on stream many a times, but the new people might not know. And it's basically, you get like a supermarket margarita pizza. So a cheap margarita pizza, which is just like cheese and tomato sauce, right? Just that. And then you go to your local takeaway and get like a sagaloo or something, like some kind of, I always get a vegetable curry because I'm a vegetable curry fiend, but like, I like a sagaloo, which is like a spinach and potato pizza. Uh, sorry, spinach and potato curry. And then you take the takeaway sagaloo, you put it on the pizza, you bake it in the oven, and you have curry on a pizza. Now, is it kind of stoner food? A little bit, but it's delicious. It's so, so good. I don't know, just the cheese with the curry and everything. Oh my God, it's so nice. It shouldn't be so good. And it's probably awfully bad for you, but it's so tasty. Yep, yep, yep. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, the curry, curry on pizza is epic. It is, I love it. Because pineapple is a tropical fruit. Yeah, I know. A lot of people get really up in arms about it, but I just don't understand why people care so much. Like, why do you care? <laughs> uh, like, I think if you ask people, like, when they do the whole, like, oh, pineapple doesn't belong on pizza, but, like, why do you care? <laughs> as long as someone's not force feeding you a pizza, I can't imagine a, a, a situation where you'd ever have to eat a pizza you didn't like. So, like, why do you care? Why does anyone care? Maybe I'm just a simple minded person, but I generally don't understand. Oh dear. I take the mick out of friends, but like for like if this, I feel like the pineapple on pizza is like a strangers on the internet kind of thing argument, and I just don't understand. I just don't understand. Curry up uh, bread plus curry and chmeez. Chmeez, yes. Pineapple belongs on my pizza. Yeah, if it does, if, if, uh, if, what do you call it doesn't, peanut doesn't want it on their pizza, you can have it on yours instead. I like salmon and goat's cheese and spinach on pizza. Don't knock it till you try it. I can't have goat's cheese, unfortunately. Uh, it's like one of the foods that makes me... I love it. It's so delicious. I've had goat's cheese three times in my life and every time it's made me throw up, unfortunately. But it's so good. And like the first time I had it, we were trying it. My parents were like, do you like it? And I was like, yeah, it's really good. And then I was immediately started throwing up. <laughs> and then uh, and then the, the second two times I knew that I couldn't have goat's cheese. But uh, yes, I, I, I didn't realize it was in the dish and it made me very ill. Yeah. It's the only only thing that I have like a very typical allergic reaction to, I suppose, which it just makes me really sick and I don't know why. I'm assuming goat's milk is the same. I haven't risked it. It's not worth it. But the times where I did get to eat goat's cheese, whether on accident or not, it was delicious. And I bet that it's really good with salmon and spinach and everything. Ugh. <coughs> you playing golf? You like a margarita. Nothing wrong with that. I like a margarita too. Uh, I'm having ramen and boiled eggs for breakfast. Oh, I think there are people who don't like to see it as cursed. Maybe that's what it is. I had a big omelette for lunch. Lunch was great. I had spinach and peppers and onion and cheese and bacon and it was yum yum. Honestly, I just like to see how people react and see if they take it seriously or not. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, no, we're not very serious people. <laughs> if I have an opinion, uh, uh, if I have the option, I'll always add pineapple. I think it depends on the type of pizza I'm making. Because I feel like pineapple ba balances nicely with other things, but I wouldn't have it with certain things, you know? So it depends on the pizza I'm having, but I do like it as a topping. But then I like most toppings. But I feel like a lot of them have their place. I don't like most toppings all the time. I just want some some of them for some things. Curry is usually a tomato -free sauce eaten with uh, curry bread. Tomato, a pizza with tomato -free sauce on bread. Yeah, but it's so good. Oh my God. I used to get heavy judged in university for that one, but oh, oh. It's, it's another one where it's like, don't knock it till you try it. It's good. It's really good. Oh, that's really interesting because Ghost Metros is usually the hypergelic one people with milk allergies have. Yeah, I don't know why. We've never got me tested for it because it's been quite an obvious reaction. And it's not like I never had like the throat going or anything like that. I ju it just made me sick. I couldn't. I don't know why. I don't know why. Because I thought it was delicious. It didn't make me sick because I didn't like the taste or anything like that. Um, yeah, and it's happened three times. Three times now. But the first time we didn't know, and the second two times we did know, and it was an accident. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's a weird one, but yeah. It's the only one that I have, like, a very- there's a few foods I can't eat. That's one of the very few where I'm like, well, I can eat it, but not for very long. <laughs> It will come back. It will come back relatively quickly to haunt me, so I, tr I tend to avoid it. Ah, uh, there's like Marmite. You either love it or you hate it. I do see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pizza bagels. They never did get their pizza bagels. Yeah, they for, for Mama Dahlia. They never did get it. Oh, dear. 
Oh, you did Aiden and I focus on a baguette right now. Delicious, delicious baguette. And you know what? I can't blame you for that. How are you with Parmesan? I don't like the smell of Parmesan. Okay, I know it's tasty and I know it's delicious, but I really struggle. I don't, I don't know why. Like, I, there's something about the smell of Parmesan that all of my friends love it, but it just really rubs me the wrong way and I can't describe why, but the taste of it's fine. I've had it in food, I think, and I've not noticed it like in a bad way. I might have to double check actually to see if I've eaten Parmesan, but the smell of it, like when they bring it over to the table and they're like, do you want it on your food? I'll normally say no, because I don't like when they bring it near my head because I can't deal with the smell of it. And I don't know why. Again, like, and I eat like blue cheese. I eat other really stinky cheeses and it doesn't bother me, but Parmesan specifically, it's just something about that smell in particular. Really do be, really do be. Ah, oh dear. Just jelly special biology, yeah. <laughs> Actually, Amazoni, if I ever meet you in person, I'll give you a little list of the foods that I'm not allowed to eat, and I would like to watch your face. <laughs> because it's not something we really talk about on stream very much, because I don't want people to ever feel bad about talking about food around me. But you should, you should see the list of food that I'm not allowed to eat one day. Um, I think it would give you a heart attack. Of all people in this chat, I think it would give you a heart attack the most. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, Parmesan gives me the same reaction as for cats. Yeah, there's just, I don't know why, it just gets me, but this, I'm sure the taste is fine, but the smell of it's just like... Oh dear. Uh, it's never smelled bad to me, but people call it smelly. And maybe it's that, maybe that's what it is to me. So like nice of the vegan cheese as well, and the one that tastes good is stupid expensive. Why is in vegans intense for having cheese? Why not just leave it out? I think it's because once you've had something in your life, the more that you can't have it, the more you miss it, right? It's like when someone tells you, oh, you can't have, uh, you can't have uh, a bagel anymore. Not allowed it. Well, suddenly you're going to want a bagel because they've told you you can't have bagel. So I think if you're eating with like dietary restrictions, the things that you'll start craving the most are the things that you can't have. <laughs> and whether it be like a self- like vegan- veganism is one where it's like you choose to be a vegan, but it doesn't change the fact that just because you've made the choice yourself that you don't necessarily miss it, right? And as soon as someone says you can't have something, it's human nature to want that exact thing. And so yeah, that's why, I think, if I had to guess. You and Jack can compare your ridiculous- yeah, hell yeah! Honestly, it's always kind of uh, refreshing when you meet someone else who's like, yeah, I can't eat that either. And it's like, oh, pff, madness. Me neither. <laughs> blue cheese, not blue cheese is lovely. And also cheese is delicious. As a former vegan, don't do it because they hate the taste of real cheese, but for other reasons and they miss it. Yeah, a lot of the time it's not because they dislike cheese. Although I do agree that 90% of vegan cheese does suck, unfortunately, but it's getting better. And things that are expensive to make at one point, if they become more mass produced, will get cheaper. Here's all like nuts, pine nuts, peanuts, avocado, Raw undercooked egg, melon. Oh my god, that's rough. That's rough. Egg's a really difficult one because egg is like in everything. Um, like, or like egg powder, or I guess if it's just raw undercooked egg, maybe it's fine. I imagine egg is a difficult one. Oh dear. Oof. Current theories are not actual allergens other than nuts, but it's a histamine problem. Yeah, it could be. I mean, there are tests they can do at the hospital for certain things like that. But like, I know that the waiting list, especially as an adult, are super long. And it's like, if you can just kind of work it out and avoid them so that you're not making yourself ill, it's probably a little easier. It, I guess, only be if you wanted to experiment with a lot of different foods that might be useful. Your bastards, yeah, the immune system is terribly complicated. And I've seen it meet me and my cells go wild and it's terrible. Kit, good morning. I understand the list of foods I cannot eat. I'm there too. Yeah, we don't discuss it too much because I don't want I don't want people to ever feel awkward about bringing up a certain food and being like, Jelly, can I talk about this food? You talk about whatever food you want. If you enjoy a food, you tell me all about it. I don't care. This one, the connector goes by uh, both he, them, and they, them. Yeah, yeah. He, him, they, them, non-binary. Non-binary being, I think, the third non-binary character in the Owl House. Pretty heckin' cool. I follow someone on Facebook that has on allergens and they actually just uh, started to use like baby formula. Oh dear. Oh, that sounds really difficult. Oof. Oof. That's oh dear. That sounds, that sounds very difficult. Ah oh dear. What made you vegan? I think I, I'd be interested as well. Like if there are reasons that you've chosen to like be vegan or vegetarian or pescatarian, was there any reason? Just if we are having that conversation, if anyone in here starts to like shit talk anyone for the decisions they've made about their own food you probably will be removed from the conversation 
you know, even if you don't agree with it yourself, even if you yourself are not vegan, we respect people who are. For instance, if someone doesn't eat beef, we respect that. If someone isn't eating during Ramadan, we respect that. So heads up, we can have that conversation <clears throat> with the level of maturity that we respect other people's decisions about their own meals. Okay? <laughs> you have to be careful with this sort of thing. I think 99% of you would be fine with it. Ah, oh, dear. Main rain. It's Masha Rain the Collector. I don't know if there's any more. There might be more. I technically, someone brought up that technically Hootie's non-binary, but I don't want to accept that. <laughs> I don't know if Hootie's the non-binary representation the LGBT needs. <laughs> But someone, someone did bring it up once they were like, technically, technically, Hootie is only ever referred to as really they them. <laughs> technically. But I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know about that one though. Kinda cursed. Oh dear. UK. Oh, Undercooked Egg is fine then, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's also a chef. Oh, that's really good. Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, you said that because he was going to open a mac and cheese place, right? Very exciting. Very heck. Best food to have. Uh, definitely best food. Uh, Fox is addicted. Aw, yeah, new Stardew. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hootie, yeah. I know how the title is by gender. Yeah. How am I meant to learn a language from straight out? <laughs> true. It's hard. As long as uh, it's not they're all evil by ratio. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> they're, they're not. And an it. Yeah, no. To be fair, I would also refer to a completely separate of their gender identity and entirely to do with their personality. I would call, I would call Hootie an it. <laughs> oh, dear. A creature. Oh, my God. When I was vegan, I chose for health reasons and animal rights reasons, and I've since learned there are ethical farms, but I dislike commercial farming practices. I moved from pescatarian to vegetarian because eating food from pantries is very difficult with such dietary restrictions. Honestly, very fair. Very fair. You know, in the same way that we are predominantly vegetarian in this house, it's just because meat's expensive. And then, you know, if anyone wants to come for me with that, it's expensive. Carrots are like 10p. Meats are like more than that. <laughs> Oh dear. You ever like, oh, three years ago? Oh my god, it's established. An established Mac. You found a good person there. Amazon, you probably get this a lot. You've, you've got a keeper there. Someone who, with, who has mac and cheese as a business and they're established? <laughs> oh dear. You'd very quickly know that somebody had good taste if they'd opened a mac and cheese business. That's like all green flags. Oh my god. The best of taste. <laughs> I mean, if you guys were on a dating app and you saw someone owned their own mac and cheese business, would that not be the greenest flag you ever saw? The most greenest of green flags? A mayo drink, it's addicting. There's a mayo drink that is, you can drink mayonnaise now, which is perfect. It works well in tandem with the new farm type where it automatically gives you chickens. I have a more nuanced view now than I had before, such in regards to leather. I'm a fan of leather products, plus he bought secondhand because it's more sustainable than vegan. Yeah, yeah. Secondhand leather is a really good option if you're going to use it because you're... Yeah. It's there already, and it's, it keeps for a good long time. Uh, I miss the UK pro uh, produce prices so much. No joke, it's so expensive here. I have heard that, uh, I think France, I think I've heard about, and a couple other countries where food is particularly expensive. Mac and cheese is a very serious business. Ah, oh, dear. One almond takes uh, water to grow. That's not the best for the environment. A lot of people, I will say, though, grab it, drink almond milk and stuff like that because they actually can't drink other things. So it's more of like a avoidant... Uh, because of allergies so there are there are legit or like not just for veganism like lactose intolerance or allergies there's other reasons that people might do that so even if you might think that it's unethical it's also there are other health reasons people might do it so it's up it's again we we're not here to poo poo on other people's choices even if it's not one that you agree with yourself because yeah it's a uh, yeah <laughs> i don't want that to be this space that's not what this space is about ah oh dear you can drink mayonnaise you can drink mayonnaise you can uh, how do I get protein? Bitch, peas. <laughs> Literally swiped him on Tinder because of the mac and cheese business. <laughs> we accidentally met that thing out on something without realizing. Oh, meant to be then. Hecking meant to be. Uh, since when that was a thing? Since a few days ago. Oh, uh, dear. Yeah, I can't drink dairy milk. Yeah. Gives people more options. I never look at the fish dogs. I wish some of them had food trophies with floggers. Ooh. It's always even worse. Oh, it's arguably the best for the environment. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think there's a lot of reasons people drink different ones, and like again, I don't want to poo-poo on anyone's decision. I think I, I'm quite careful about this because when people come in and say, "Oh yeah, what you're doing is bad for the environment," it can feel quite attacking, even if you don't mean it like that. 
And yeah, I think personally, as long as people are happy, you all make your own decisions. You're all adults here. We're a mature stream, so you should all be adults here. <laughs> oh dear. I prefer oat, actually. I like... If I'm in coffee shops, I get soy. If it's in the house, I get oat because that's what my friends will drink. But if I'm on my own, it's just normal milk and I just suffer and take lactase pills. <laughs> but that's because in my case, I don't have a full on allergy. I'm just lactose intolerant. Oh no. A lost beard? No, no, it truly is lost. That's gone. Oh dear. Oh, when it comes to non-daily. Fair enough. When I'm in the UK, because buying shit buying oat milk, I use barista oat milk for normal milk purposes and hazelnut for hot, hot chocolate as it's yummy. Well, that makes sense because hot chocolate often comes in like a hazelnut flavor anyway. So I can imagine that going well together. Ah, oh, dear. Do you want to be an adult or mature? Because I can be one of those. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. We'll take adult first, yeah. I drink way too much milk to be able to sell a tablet. Soy milk for me, yeah. I, I don't have so much milk in my diet except for like cups of tea and I put like a splash in. It's not enough to make it that bad. It's mainly for like, for instance, with the lasagna this week, we used full full normal milk and cheese. And like for that, yes, I require a lactase. <laughs> but for like my regular cup of tea, I'm okay. Ah oh dear. It's not bad enough unless I have a full meal of it. And then I suffer. Ah oh dear. Now that I can't go with health on earth, I'm kind of doing because my disabilities. It's, it's part of the reason, and the other the other reason is, yeah, so I have a few friends uh, with, I I believe the term is ARFID, like an avoidant food disorder, right? They really struggle with eating new foods, and the more that I've heard them talk about it, the more that I've been more careful with my own language regarding food, because one of the things that I've heard from them is that they are constantly shat on for their choices in food, and they already have, like, you know an avoidant food disorder that you know there's some people that would just call them picky but then there are some that are like pretty nasty to them to be honest and it's it's normal because you know oh you can't eat that come on you're an adult grow up just eat it like you'll be fine it's like it's a legitimate disorder like it's it's not it's not something that you can just get over so these days i'm a little bit more careful when it comes to sh you know talking about other people's food decisions because i don't know you i don't know why you might be you know doing that and so it, because i don't know i don't want to make those assumptions of being like why are you being so picky why aren't you drinking this instead why aren't you eating that instead why aren't you doing this it's like because there might be reasons whether it's financial whether it's health related or or even like yeah in the cases like that where it's like it's a process trying any sort of new fo food is really hard for them i wouldn't want anyone to feel looked down upon within this community because they can't eat all the foods we're talking about you know <laughs> Yes, I'm, I'm a little more careful than I used to be. Um, not because I've had any la like lashback from the community here or anything like that, but because I've heard from my own friends and it's like, ah, oh, shoot, sometimes I am a bit judgmental. Sometimes I am a bit like, oh, why don't you try this instead? Why don't you do this instead? And it's like, maybe I should be a bit more chill about stuff. Hence why I preface the conversation with we're not here to shit on other people's food decisions. And also why it can be harder for some people to try one thing than another could be financial reasons, it could be where you live in the world, but also, yeah, it can be other health conditions too. Uh, I love soy, I don't know about soy and oat milk, but it's great. Hell yeah, I like it too. I like all of them to be fair, but for different reasons and in different places. Ah, oh, dear. I used to only drink oat milk, but I was in China for four months where they work and they only find soy, so I grew to love it. Fair enough. Fair, that makes sense. Yeah, if you've had it a lot. Half is a difficult one. It is, it's a tricky one. Also, Miss Banjo's gotta go outside. You Miss Banjo, go outside. Also, Kit, thank you so much. Oh, bless you. No, no, you are fine, honestly. I, I think we, we talk about this sometimes, but if people wanted a perfectly edited, you know, like, thing, they wouldn't be on Twitch anyway. They'd be on YouTube. People come to Twitch because it feels a bit more real. It feels a bit more, like, legit. And that means that people come here because of the scuff and because of the weirdness and because of things not being perfect. Because if people wanted a perfectly curated crafting video to craft along to, they would go to YouTube. <laughs> They're here because they want you with your scuff and your, your extra bits and bobs and all the chatting. So yeah, don't, don't worry about it. Do not apologize. You are fine. And your, your stream yesterday was perfect. I think that's exactly what people come to Twitch for. Uh, I need to try bugs. Yes, packed with nutrients are super effective for you. I want to try them again because I had pretty cheap ones and they just tasted like salt, which is fine. But like, I would like to try something a bit more interesting. 
I'm also not that big of a keen fan of salt, to be honest. I should eat more salt, but yeah. You have sensory issues and it's like, people like, oh, you just eat it, it's not gonna kill you. Like, no, that's not how it works. People act that way about allergies, they do. I, I have heard, and I, I, at the time, did not speak up about it, because I was like, it's so normal, that's just what you hear. I would speak up about it now, but I have heard in friendship groups that I've been in, someone be like, can you, you know, someone say, hey, I can't have that because it's got shellfish in, and they, someone turned around and was like, you're just being difficult? Come on. Everyone else wants that meal. Like, let us have it. And it's like, I, at the time I was like, not really, I guess, as close to everyone else. And also that's something that you hear a lot. But yeah, no, people, I have I have heard in real life, in real friendship groups I've been in before, there was that kind of rhetoric of like, you're just being difficult. And it's like, they, they have an allergy, <laughs> come on. It's not just being difficult. We can't have it on the table. We can't have it as a sharing meal because someone can't eat it. Uh, I don't know if people don't realize that allergies can literally kill you. Yeah, no, I think some people have never seen an allergic reaction and it shows. You see someone having an allergic reaction, you'll change that tune very quickly. Very, very quickly. It's terrifying. Genuinely. Uh, I Very, very, very... Like someone having anaphylaxis in front of you. Yeah. Very scary. Very, very scary. It's a very scary situation. With You need a calm head. Oh, dear. I don't understand how people do yet, don't realize it. Twitch is interactive, exactly. Oh, I had super tasty crickets. See, that's what I want. I want that experience where they've been like properly flavored. It's not just salt. Cause I had crickets too, but it was just salt. That's all I tasted was like crunchy salt. Like, okay. It's, it wasn't unpleasant, but it also wasn't much. And I would like to try it again. I think the one that I, I might struggle with is the lava because of the texture. I would give it a go once, but I wouldn't order a lot to try because I don't know if I'd like it. I try it once though. Uh, Bosnian people mix up allergies with intolerances. Yeah, intolerances and allergies are two different things. Uh, I have predominantly intolerances. There are some things that I cannot eat without danger though. Technically they're still intolerances, but I will normally call them allergies. And the reason I call them allergies is because it will look the same as an allergy and it's easier if people understand that. So while technically it's an intolerance, it can kill me. <laughs> so I will normally name those as allergies because yeah if you call it just an intolerance people don't take it seriously at all and so yeah i'll be like yeah no it, i can't eat that i am allergic is how i'll normally say it technically it is not an allergy but it might as well be you will it will it will appear as if i am dying <laughs> i will swell up and, and pop like the girl in in what's it face the, the blue the blueberry girl i'll do that <laughs> Feel free to put shellfish in your food, you're cooking for me, but I will shit myself. <laughs> Assertedly as well, it's your fault. You asked for this and now you get this. Oh dear. Oh dear. Uh, I'd be, I'd be sure if you wanted to spend the night at the hospital with me, so stupid, yeah. Intolerances make your stomach a bit upset, allergies can be lethal. Intolerances can also be lethal. I, I think, I think, allergy, what is, the way that allergies, allergies is, isn't it your like autoimmune system fights back against something, whereas intolerances are something different. I can't go too much into it, but intolerance can be deadly too, but I can't tell you why without going into a condition that I really don't want to talk about on stream. So I, you're just going to have to take my word for it uh, or do a little bit of Googling. Uh, either is. Uh, there are some things I just don't talk about on stream and that, that I will not. Well, not. Nah, 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 nah. That's my, that's my private stuff. Oh, dear. Vi yeah, Violet Bo Beauregard in, what's in it? Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yes. I forgot everything except for Blueberry Girl that blows up. <laughs> Anaphylaxis allergies is terrifying. I have an EpiPen in my bag, always purely for Jack, and I'm terrified he'll have a reaction someday. It's really scary. I think, I think it's, it's incredibly scary. <laughs> Make an extra mess in the bathroom. Uh, intolerance upset, your stomach allergy can be lethal. Uh, yeah, fear food can cause extreme anxiety and panic attacks. Yeah, 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 for sure. Tolerances aren't just stomach issues, it can also be skin and a lot of other things as well. Yeah, again, I can't go too much into detail about that for me because it gives away a little too much about myself, but I do have some very severe intolerances. Um, you know, part of the reason that I was hospitalized when I went to MCM last time was because of that. And that was an intolerance. It wasn't just, it's not just one thing. For me, when I have a an issue <laughs> like that, where I've eaten something I shouldn't have, it lasted about three weeks. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's no like EpiPen to get rid of it. It's I just have to go into hospital until I'm better kind of thing. Uh, and I never want to go to hospital in London ever, 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 ever again. My God, Jesus Christ. Whew. I don't like going to hospital normally, but hospital in London, 
it's, it's a whole nother ball game. I don't know how you guys do it. How'd you get sick in London? I don't know. It sucks. <laughs> it sucks so much. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, yeah, no, I, I get sick enough that it's, yeah, you just have to stay in hospital for a while until you get better. Yeah, it's great. Great fun. Love it. I have to be real careful. Next time I'll be much carefuler. It's my own fault, honestly. But this is the other thing. It's so annoying when it's intolerances or allergies. Because, like, it's one thing if you get served at a restaurant without asking first, right? But I, I did it to myself. <laughs> I full on did it to myself. I, I I ate something and I didn't double check it and it was right before we traveled. And so <laughs> I have nobody to blame but myself. And I, I, duh. Immune system, intolerance, digestive system. There you go. And the tamest of ways, bloating, cramps, nausea, and diarrhea, yeah. And the problem is if you upset the balance, like the reason for me, without going into too much gruesome detail, is you can dehydrate if your body can't recover from it. And if, if you have a very strong intolerance, it can be very difficult for your your body to bounce back, right? Which is why I get hospitalized because I'm so low on fluids. Um, after several days of not being able to keep food down, <laughs> you you end up getting stuck in a place where it's like, well, I kind of just have to go on fluids and until it eventually fixes itself there's not nothing nothing you can do really except wait and take a lot of fluids but also a lot of the other what do they call it the, the stuff that that's meant to help regrow the bacteria in your gut so that you feel better again sooner i can't remember what it's called i'm sorry <laughs> to be fair all the times where i've had to do stuff like that i haven't been in a very good place so i, I probably best that i don't remember <laughs> fluid train yup uh, I think the question is, how do you London? How do you London? How is it? Let's try Shifty, welcome back. We're talking about shit. <laughs> I hope you enjoy talking about poo while you eat. Oh, come on in. I was also the worst confirmed, like, God bless the doctors and nurses. Oh, for sure. Yeah, no, they work really, really hard and they deserve a lot of love, but my God, it's rough. Just to make sure, uh, chat bugging, and yes. Ah, oh, dear. One of the ends. Yeah, it could be rough. I'm gonna try that a little work won't hurt later in the hospital. Dang, you're low on floors. Oi, oi, oi. Oi, 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 oi. Although I will say shiny, very sweet bean. Very sweet bean, helps me out a lot when I'm not well. Always looked after me. Probiotic, that's the one, thanks Shifty. Pump you full of probiotic until your gut can regrow itself. Shit, nah oh, man, sorry, we don't take shit donations just yet. Also, thank you for the hydrate. And coach, good morning on YouTube. I hope you're doing well. We don't take donations for shit, but thank you for the offer. It's very kind of you. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, you're gonna get an all day breakfast? You weren't talking about those the other day. Yeah, you were saying like, I will I will agree, a, a good all day breakfast when you've had like a really busy day at work or if you know you're gonna have a really busy day, all day breakfast just hits the spot. I think it's really good, especially on like, if you're moving house that day, get yourself a massive breakfast. Gets you through half the day. You'll be lifting boxes all day, but you'll be lifting them with vigor because <laughs> you have, in fact, uh, you have eaten a, a full breakfast. Very, very big. Oh, dear. Scott. Oh, bless you, coach. That's DJ. very heckin' kind of you. Thank you also. Thank you for the DJ. Thank you, thank you. And CJ! CJ, thank you for DJ. Oh, dear. I miss English food. Are you going to have a, a, a full English when you get back? A proper big old breakfast? Who can get fecal transplants? Interesting. I'm not super hungry, but I want it. Do you like it with- what, what do you prefer? Toast or, or fried bread, personally? I, I like fried bread, but I do find it kind of heavy, so it really depends on the day for me. If I'm really hungry, I get fried bread. Uh, but if I'm not, then toast is fine. Oh, the French food is great, but there's no seed oils here. Give me fried stuff! Yeah, I find I'm gonna be trained to manage my fluids at home. I feel like I could monitor this stuff myself, but then again, I'm addicted to bed. <laughs> you can stitch in bed. Yeah, you can. I want to join my live stream? No, thank you, coach. I'm good. I'm good, thank you. I got my own stuff going on here. I'm busy bean. We're gonna be here most of the day. Ah, oh, dear. Ah, uh, fried bread and toast, both. Fried bread is a nice treat. Gotta put beans on the toast, yeah. And, L and egg yolk for me. Gotta have some egg yolk on there. Gotta have a little bit of the, the yolky from the egg. Gotta have, uh, gotta have some beans. I like the tomato as well. Fried tomato is quite a diverse one in this house because half my family love it and half them hate it. But I love the tomato in a fry up. I will say I prefer like where they do like a charred tomato, however they do that in the oven. I prefer that, but I do, I like tin tomatoes too. I love tin tomatoes. 
<laughs> you want to just slop some tin tomatoes on my plate? I'm happy. I'll eat that. The bacteria in the poop helps build immunity. I see. That's actually really interesting. I haven't heard of anything like that before, Grobbit. That's really cool. And that makes more sense, honestly. Now that you've like, spelled it out, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> Stop making me hungry, Dad. I can't. I can't. CJ, thank you for the beans. I might have cooked breakfast for dinner. Delicious. Nothing wrong with that. We get both ends of the digestion process. <laughs> yeah. The eating and the pooping. We do it from start to finish. We, we, don't, we don't stop halfway. We just keep going. <laughs> That's very cursed. Very, very cursed. I'm really excited. Actually, speaking of food, I mentioned this first thing on stream. We've had a place open up nearby that do cheesecakes. Speaking also of things that I'm going to have to take a lactose pill for. We're going to go do some, some cheesecake tasting after stream today and I'm very excited. We're just gonna go get a little selection of them and taste them and see if we like them because if we like them then we have had a wonderful shop open nearby that we can go and get cheesecakes from every time so we're really really hoping that we like them. Ah oh dear. Is charred or fried tomato is great? Hating when they put a regular cold tomato on the plate though. Yeah yeah no it's got to be cooked. It's definitely got to be cooked also. Yes, I love a tin tomato. <laughs> I preferred fried tomatoes over tinned. I like both. I, I, I honestly, if they gave me the option of having both fried and tinned on my plate, I would take both. I like both of them. Baked or non-baked? The cheesecakes, I think they're baked cheesecakes. That's what it looked like on the line. Feel so bad for kind children not to deal with bad classes. Yeah, oh, for sure. Teachers don't get paid enough. They don't, they don't. Like, speaking of jobs that don't get paid enough, teachers definitely don't. The circle of life. You can eat a tomato like an apple. I don't know if we can talk anymore. <laughs> you know, I don't consider myself to be a particularly judgmental person, Robert. But, but I might have to judge you. <laughs> you eat tomatoes like apples? <sighs> that, might be, that might be a step too far for me. I don't know. I don't know if I can handle that. I might have to work and do some meditation to become a less judgmental person before I can let that one slide, I'm afraid. You eat Marmite. Marmite's delicious. Salty bread. Baked beans, cheese... <laughs> no! <laughs> no! Why would you say this? <laughs> oh. There are savoury cheesecakes. I think, yeah, no, I think I have heard... I don't think they do them at this shop, I should all say. I think it's mainly a dessert place. But I have heard of savoury cheesecakes before, but maybe not baked bean ones. Oh dear. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, the eating the tomato like an apple, mildly upsetting. M mildly upsetting. <laughs> oh dear. You'd have to monk before you had to let them go. Yeah, yeah, I'd have to do some intensive training before I can let the eating the eating the tomato like an apple go. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. Oh, let alone the taste. Yeah, I mean, baked beans are kind of sweet, I suppose, aren't they? Would we? Okay. Would we say that baked beans are sweet? Because I think that's true. I think baked beans are sweet. <laughs> um, so I guess baked beans on a cheesecake would be a sweet thing with a sweet... It's really making my tongue curl, I will say. Like, my body is having a very visceral reaction. But I think it would just be sweet with sweet, which I guess is manageable gonna tweet Iceland that's right up their street yeah mildly hacking displeased oh dear yes but no at the same time yeah they are I season my beans they might be less sweet after you're through with them then I guess I was heading and I thought they said this you weren't sure if Hootie was LGBT rep I wanted needed and I was like there we go a trans wrong <laughs> well I think yeah they're non-binary right so I guess technically we could count them as trans wrong uh Hootie the Hootie the Owl or in this community, that's just trans wrongs. <laughs> I added salt, pepper, paprika, chili powder on an oregano. Yeah, I'd probably feel a bit more savory after that, to be fair. if uh, That does sound really like a nice way to season beans, so actually that does sound like... It sounds like you're having some pretty nice baked beans. But, uh, I don't know, on a cheesecake? I would try it once, as with many things. I'll, I will eat it one time. <laughs> I can't promise anything, but I would give it a go once. See how I felt about it, yeah. Anyone chat watch the Mona? I haven't, so I'm going to ask if you don't mind not posting spoilers in chat, please, because that is actually one that I'd like to watch at some point. So yeah, don't, don't. I, I don't normally immediately shut down conversations, but I want to watch that at some point. So please, please don't discuss it too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to I wanna go in 
not knowing about it too much at some point <laughs> when I have the time and the and the mood to. It's on it's on the list. It's it's very high on the list to be honest. Incredibly high. It might be top of the list. I really want to watch that one. I really love how like when I saw the trailer, the animation style was really pretty, and I'm, I just want to see it. I just want to see it. But yes, I, I haven't seen it yet, so I can't, sorry. <laughs> cheese and beans. Cheese and beans is a common combination. You see it all the time on... Okay, wait, actually, sorry. Can I bring up a really con controversial conversation? How do we feel about baked potatoes? And how do we feel about shops? <laughs> how do we feel about buying baked potatoes in shops? Because I have quite a strong feeling about baked potatoes and buying them in stores. Now, here's the thing. I liked baked potatoes. I think they're good. Jacket potato? Delicious. But I wouldn't spend like seven or eight quid on one in a shop. And I don't understand how there were so many potato takeaways. And like, honestly, make your bag. Hell yeah, clearly people are buying it. But I don't understand personally. I just can't understand. Because I can make it myself so cheap. Or I could go and buy it for like eight quid. And I just don't understand. Do you see what I mean? This is where I'm coming from. It's like, if you like baked potatoes, power to you. I like baked potatoes too. But how are there so many shops that only sell baked potatoes? And who's the audience? Who is the audience for those baked potatoes? If you are here, I would love to hear your reasoning. I'd love to hear why. Because outside of, again, like, selective food disorders where it's hard to eat anything else and you need to get something while you're out and about, that one I can understand. But, like, I feel like that's a very small percentage of the population. There are definitely more of the population funding these potato shops. Who are you? Who are you? And why? Ah, oh dear. <laughs> Cheese and beans are, uh, are okay, sorted, yeah. I don't like skin on a jacket potato. I always want to leave it. Yeah, that's fair. I sometimes go for it. I sometimes don't. It depends if it's crispy or if it's chewy. Don't like it when it's chewy. Love it when it's crispy. Potatoes are dirt cheap. Yeah, you can buy like a massive bag for two quid. I love a baked potato. I've never seen a baked potato shop though. So there's a chain. I'm going to just double check that this is a chain actually before I talk about it because I don't want to dox my myself. I think it is. That will two seconds, two seconds. Oh! Wait, what? Wait, 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 wait. It's saying we don't have a shop near us, but we do. Okay, what other potato ones are there? There's others. I can't, I won't say this one because Google is saying that it's not open near me, but I'm like 99% sure that actually it is open near me. But there's another one. Uh, what's the one that was used to be in Cardiff? Was it Spud you like? It was just a potato store. It was just a potato store. Ah, oh, dear. Ah, uh, I've always been lunch when I'm at work. Ah, okay, so what a work shift. That one I can see. That's that logic. That makes sense. Uh, I have a jacket potatoes very specific where I wouldn't have it. Like, I like a crispy skin and not a chewy one. Potato skin is the best part, but not chewy ones. Also, you got to leave a bit. Take care, peanut. Look after yourself. Have a good rest of your day. Jelly left some of those sell potatoes. We've narrowed it down, guys. Well, no, no, but I wasn't sure if the one near me was a chain or not. I think that it is. Spud you like is the one that we used to be in Cardiff, isn't it? Yeah, Spud you like. That's a that's a chain. That's a chain of potato shops. They do potatoes in there. Schroding is potato. <laughs> well, Google's saying that apparently I don't have this other potato shop near me, but I'm like 99% sure that I do have that potato shop near me, but okay. But I won't say what it is, right? Just in case, because like I'm a bit confused now. <laughs> Google's confused my eyes. Ah, oh, dear. But yeah, I had a funny joke with my friends about how dressing like a spot you like. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's a pretty that's pretty good though. That's pretty good. Ah oh, dear. But yeah, no, I never really understood like I don't know. I guess yeah, if you're on a lunch break and you really just fancy a potato, we have those days. I have those days where sometimes I just fancy a potato. So I guess that could make sense. If you hadn't planned in advance and you were having a lunch break and you just really fancied a potato, they're just it's very expensive. <laughs> How do you feel about sweet potato? I like sweet potato. I like sweet potato in stews. Uh, I like I like sweet potato. I, I will say though, I can't eat a lot of it if it's on its own, like sweet potato chips and stuff like that. Can't eat a lot of it because it's too sweet for me. <laughs> oh dear, it's a bit it's a bit much for me. But I do I do like it. Uh, either in as an as an ingredient in things or as like a small part of a bigger meal. I like it. Yes, yes, yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Imagine being around a 50s diner at a sushi restaurant and a burrito restaurant and Nando's and choosing a jacket potato. But that's the thing, is like there must be a reason that people are choosing a jacket potato. 
And I just don't know what it is. Like, please tell me what. Because, like, again, I like jacket potato. I am not a potato hater. I love potato. But I don't understand. Um, it's just the, it's just an odd one. I guess, yeah, unless it's the only one nearby. Or, yeah, for work and you just happen to fancy a potato. But I just don't imagine that would keep someone in business. I used to like sweet potato, but for some reason now it tastes like someone dumped perfume on it. It's a bit much for me a lot of the time. But I like with other things. Jacket potatoes are good, though. They are, but like for eight quid? Would you buy a jacket potato for eight quid? Like, I would only do that if I was having a particularly bad day and I just needed a potato. I was just having one of those days where I'm like, damn, what a bad day. You know, my customers have been trashed today. Everyone's been mean to me. I've got yelled at. It's time for potato. And then, yes, yeah, sure, I would. But like, it wouldn't be regular. Like, I wouldn't daily go and get my potato, you know? Because it would be expensive. It, it would it would add up too much. But maybe that's also because I was a retail worker, so I wasn't exactly earning a lot in the first place. That might have helped. If I was earning a bit more, maybe I'd give myself more potato potato coverage over the week. <laughs> oh dear. Depends what else is on the uh, jack of potato. Yeah, I like beans. I like cheese. I don't like tuna. I love tuna, but I don't like tuna on my on my jack of potato. I don't know why. Because I love tuna and like everything else, but not on my potato. But yeah, beans, cheese, cheese is good. Uh, little bacon bits is nice. Like that. Cheese and just bacon is really good. Oh dear, there's been something really close to. Oh, did it close? Yeah, that would make sense. How many potatoes did you get? Is it like one for eight? Yeah, one one potato. One potato with toppings on it. So it's not just the potato. You are also getting toppings. Kind of like Subway, but, but, but for potato. <laughs> you imagine Subway, but take out the bread and put in a potato. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I've never had tuna, even though I worked as a sushi chef dealing with tuna every day. I like tuna. I do. I just... I don't know why. For me, it never was the one that I'd go for on a potato. But I do like tuna. I feel like I'm going out for a lot of I'd rather just push the boat out and get something great. Again, I do have potato days, so I can kind of get it. But again, the thing is, like... They must have a regular clientele, and that's kind of- I'm not, I guess, not thinking so much about people that just have a one day with, like, a really fancy potato, but like, who's the regular clientele? Who is eating those potatoes? I wish to know. Oh dear. Maybe I could be converted. I could be- con I, I'm not- I'm not a against being converted to a potato person. I could be a potato person. <laughs> every now and again I am a potato person. It's just that it's an every now and again. Vegans. Whoa, I, mm, actually, Grobit might have a really good point there. You know, a lot of the places around them would probably have less vegan options than the potato one. That's a fair point. That's a fair point. Vegans. <laughs> Potatoes are vegan. Actually, that's a... You know, you might have you might have actually just solved it there for us. There, potentially. That might be it. <laughs> the regular clientele of people that need to know what's in their food for whatever reason. And whether it be veganism, vegetarian, pescatarian, yada, yada, yada. And would like lots of options. Because then Subway or, or like a Spud You Like-esque type shop would probably be best where you can build it up a bit at a time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's that's big brain. You're thinking with the, the whole brain right there. Oh, dear. There's a lot for just one with toppings. Yeah, it is expensive. Same with Subway, though. Subway's expensive, too, for just a sandwich. I mean, at this point, all fast food's kind of expensive. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. You assumed it was meant to be a healthier option? It did kind of market itself as a, uh, as a healthier option at points, didn't it? Yeah, you're not wrong. There was definitely a vibe that it was like the healthier option. I don't know that it necessarily was, but I get what you mean. Yeah, there was like a vibe where it felt healthier maybe than like fried chicken. Oh dear. Like I couldn't have had non-hard food growing up. So I usually forced to go vegetarian places without any options. Yeah, like, and a lot of places use the same oil, don't they? To like do different things. So you just would be screwed. Yeah. I, I get that. If you if you have those kind of like dietary restrictions, something like Subway or Spud you like would have more options without feeling like you were being limited constantly. Yeah, there we go. That's actually a really that's a big brain point. Oh dear. I guess so. If you said Spud you like had been replaced with chopsticks, I feel like chopsticks is not so dissimilar in that in that you kind of build it up, don't you? So you can make sure that you don't put anything in it that's like against your dietary restrictions or requirements. 
I guess in some ways it's good that it was chopsticks that replaced them because yeah hopefully hopefully any vegans or vegetarians or people that ate halal uh, or had dietary restrictions of any kind could go eat there still it's just a different restaurant oh dear yeah i mean it's the same with subway it's meant to be healthy but it's also kind of not i had never had subway before <laughs> before we moved here and I, I still have never ordered a Subway sandwich because I'm just too- I just can't do it. There's something about making that many decisions in a row that ruins the fun of lunch for me. I understand why, and I understand that the people are not rude or mean or are, like doing anything weird. They're not quizzing me for any bad reasons, but I just- I just really struggle answering that many questions in a row and like trying to remember as soon as like they ask me a question all of my brain flies out of the window and I just can't remember what I like anymore but I have had Subway salads and I liked them they were very unhealthy and it gave me a lot of joy I love a good unhealthy salad oh dear in Ireland Subway bread cannot legally be called bread because of the sugar content nice hell yeah you love chopsticks I like chopsticks too very nice. I never associate Subway with healthy. <laughs> I think you probably could make your sandwich healthy, but you'd have to make the effort to do so. I don't think it would automatically be healthy, you know? I think you'd have to make the, the decisions that would mean that whatever was in your salad or sandwich was not that unhealthy. <laughs> because, I thought, you know, yeah, a lot of it's not exactly the best, but I to be honest though, I, I am a big believer of if I'm eating out and about and having like a nice time, I am not trying to be healthy. Of course, there are some times I need to know if certain foods are in there, like goat's cheese, so that I don't get ill. But um, yeah, no, I, I, I'm, I if I want to be healthy, I will food prep in the house so that I can be on top of it. When I'm out and about, I just want to have a nice time. But that's me personally. That's how I personally do it. Whoever makes you happy. <laughs> Lemon, welcome on in. I hope you're doing well. Welcome back. We have been slowly but surely chipping away you can see the bits we've done versus the bits we haven't done but it's getting there and it's looking pretty heckin neat i'm pretty happy with this the goal is by the end to get the whole way to the top so we this has taken about four hours so far but we're doing really well okay we're doing really well this is a very slow process it always has been and it probably always will be so to have gotten this far i'm really happy I'm very, very happy. And it's 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 nice to see such a big piece of it as well because we've done such small strips before. Having the pattern next to each other, it's very satisfying. Very, very satisfying. I think Mike is trying to rebrand it as healthy. They technically have salad. I've had the Mackey salad because there are times where like, you know, everyone's going to it, so you go along, but you're not really feeling that hungry, and so you just get like a you just get something smaller like a salad. I've had the salads and they are so hit and miss. Sometimes they're fantastic and actually really tasty. I think it depends who makes them because sometimes I've had the same salad and I've not enjoyed it nearly as much. Or maybe the other issue is it could be my mood. Like sometimes I just was in the mood for it where sometimes I wasn't. Oh dear, it's looking really good. It's pretty, thank you. Yeah, no, it, I, I really love this. <laughs> Being able to make such a big piece of it as well. I think it really emphasizes the whole pattern, which we don't normally get, but uh, yeah. Oh dear, I'm feeling well. The run was nice. No unleashed doggo. Last time I got chased and was super scary. And I have a lunch now and I have saccharin milk tea. Oh, heckin' delicious. What a heckin' night. That sounds pretty good. That sounds very productive as well. You've done a heckin' lot since we last saw you. All I've done is eaten some rice and uh, and just done more of this. <laughs> You've been very, very productive. I've been having a bit of a discussion about foods. I, I brought up the controversial opinion of I don't understand the potato shops, but I do now. I have left that conversation. Slightly more understanding the potato shops. <laughs> so what I what I, I started I have learned something today, potentially. It's kind of a theory, but you know, I, I, I have gained a perspective. Which I'm happy. I'm happy about. You know, we had a little a little perspective gain on a Friday at the end of the week as well. Wow. Ah, uh, did I never order a whoa sorry, sorry. <laughs> my hand did a weird thing and i got a bit surprised um i've never ordered this out at a restaurant you were saying jack potatoes are way too money 12 quid for a nah but this is the thing like all right all right now i'm going to try and give you a, a change of heart to do with the salads all right i agree a lot of salad is trashy and overpriced you're not wrong 
However, however, there are salads which have everything in them. Like they are a proper meal. Like you can get salads which have like meat, fish, all that kind of stuff in it that have like lots of cheeses, some biscuits, some stuff crumbled in there. Like it's not just lettuce. It's like a load of different vegetables. There might be some cooked, some not cooked in there. Um, onions and all that kind of like flavoring. You've got the sauces. Like it's a proper meal all in a bowl. And like that is technically still a salad. It's just like, I think, I think some salad is shit <laughs> and it gives all salads a bad name but like a really good salad is a whole meal it's everything in one and it's like you know similarly to like customizing your chopsticks order or your spud you like order or your subway order you do the same sort of thing with a salad when you can pick and choose what you put in it you can have just a fantastic salad like lettuce should just be the base just the base of it it shouldn't be the majority it is the base that you build upon <laughs> <laughs> and then a good salad builds upon that base and adds lots of other things into it as well and creates a full meal and i i think good salad is fantastic bad salad is in, it belongs in the trash and and i think there's very little in between actually i think i think there's very little that i feel in between it's either a really good salad or it's a really bad salad because i was very anti salad to be honest as well until we went to amsterdam and I, I was just having a day where I was like, I had a migraine recently. I wasn't feeling super hungry. I wasn't feeling that good. And we were out and about though. So I ordered a salad because I was like, you know what? I just want to pick at something for a bit. And salad is good for like picking at things, right? And I had this salad and it was the best salad I had ever had in my life. And like, it just, it was so good. It was so refreshing. Everything tasted so fresh in it. It had meat. It, well, no, this one had fish in it. And it had like, other, uh, olives, other bits and bobs, nuts, which I think you could remove, but I added them in. Uh, you could have it with egg, you could have lots of other bits and bobs, and it was just this huge salad with this beautiful, like, homemade dressing on it, which was just stunning. Like, sprinkled cheese. Oh my god, every single bite tasted slightly different. Uh, and it was really, really good, but like good in a good way because you'd have like a different, there were so many things that you couldn't get them all on your one spoon at the time. So every single time you'd have like a slightly different combination of flavors and they all tasted fantastic together. So it was just, it was just an amazing, I just cannot comprehend. I've never, I've not had a salad that good since and I've never had a salad that good up to that point, but it did kind of change my mind on salad in that it can be good when people put the effort in to make it good but i think a lot of the time salad is just an afterthought or it's something they're like oh we should probably have it on the menu or we just whack some wet lettuce or some tomato and then there you go it's a salad uh, i think if you do that then yeah it's shit and I, I fully agree and i would not spend the money on it unless you know i wasn't feeling well and i just wanted to pick at something literally that's the only reason i'd normally buy it but a really good salad oh fantastic i don't i still don't think it's going to be for everyone in the same way that subway is not for everyone or like you know spudgy like wasn't for everyone or uh, or chopsticks isn't for everyone but i think i do think there's a big difference between a good salad and a bad salad <laughs> oh dear yeah 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 but not all salads were created equally and a lot of them are trash and you have my full agreement there <laughs> a lot of trash there's a lot of trash salad out there Oh dear, great conversation. And like honey mustard salad dressing, I do, or a salad bowl of cereals like uh, quinoa or barley. I must say I haven't had that, but it sounds interesting. 12 to 13 euros acceptable, I'd say. Depends on how big and how much you get. Yeah, usually tiny bits of meat in it. See, I had like full bits of meat in it. Like they were small, but they were like chopped up from a larger piece. So you could see like when you first got presented it, the whole piece of the, it was on top and then you could mix it in. So it was like a full piece of meat on there, right? But uh, yes, it was cut into very small bits. So when you mixed it in, it was all within it. Yeah. Ah, good rep for another country. You got good salad. You did. You had one really, I don't I can't speak about all your salads, but that one was the best salad I've ever eaten. You're doing it. You're getting the breakfast. Hell yeah, Shifty. Enjoy that breakfast. Yeah, some salads are ooh, and it's the only option the menu. Start eating. It's frustrating when it's bad. It is. And quinoa here is pricely. It's probably cheaper making one at home. Oh, okay. Oh dear. Like they say throw iceberg and some tomatoes and call it a salad. Yeah, that's that's it technically is it a salad? Yeah, but it's shit. <laughs> no one wants to eat that. That's oh boring. Creator really doesn't want me to work today. Oh god.
Oh, does it have, is it doing like updates or anything today? Lemon, is there like any, has Twitter, like I know Twitter's a bit of a cesspool a lot of the time, but has Twitter said anything about it not working for other people? Because if you, if you go onto Twitter and just in the search bar type Krita not working, you might see if other people are having similar issues to you, just so it doesn't feel like you're so alone if it is having problems. I like adding raspberry pomegranate seeds. Oh, pomegranate seeds are delicious. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. You want a little sweetness in there? There's a little tiny sweetness. It's a good little kick. Oh, so I see that our timer is hit zero. God, the hours go by so quickly. So quickly. Aha, uh -huh, a full piece of meat. Yeah. Honestly, you can get really good ones. But like, again, a lot of people just don't spend the effort on the salad. Thank you, by the way, Maggie, for the hydrate. A lot of people don't spend the effort on it. And it, you know, it means you get like a really trash salad. That being said, even like a really good salad is not going to be for everyone. You know, I know a lot of people are not so keen on the texture of leafy greens anyway, and leafy greens are often a part of a salad, right? Or they're not so keen on cold foods and stuff like that. So even even if you get a good salad, it's still not going to be for everyone. But I do think that, yeah, again, salad is not created equally and there's some really bad salads out there. And I had mostly eaten bad salad up until, like, you know, up until yeah about a couple years ago and yeah I've, I've i've done a bit of a 180 not that i like those salads any better i don't but i like some salads better ah dear the only salad i like to eat there is iceberg sal i forgot the english one but it's a very similar name like iceberg lettuce just putting washing on the line but it's wrecked my eyeballs oh god hay fever and dodge oh no Okay, has anyone posted the Discord? I don't think they have this time, so I don't think we need to do a Discord art share. But what I will do is hide my camera really quickly and I'm going to take like a little stretch break. So I'm gonna lift some weights, uh, which means I'm going to hide myself because I, I just feel a bit awkward about it, but I'm still gonna be here. You, you'll hear me, you just won't see me for a second while I lift some weights quickly in the background. Don't mind me. Just, oh my God. Ah! Don't mind me, just creating earthquakes oh my god sorry about that guys i don't know did, it, did anyone notice do you think anyone noticed that i don't feel like anyone noticed i think that was pretty subtle i don't think i don't think anyone saw that don't worry about it <laughs> yeah don't mind me just gonna be lifting some weights ah duh Whoa. i don't check that but i had the latest version so i didn't think about that oh okay being an open source program, I don't know, maybe I should report the bug? If you can report it non-publicly, that might be a really good idea. <laughs> also gonna lift some weights. Hell yeah, CJ, it's le it's weightlifting time. Ooh. Yeah, did I leave a banana pill there? You did. Just, just under my elbow. <laughs> so my elbow slips and, and hits the camera off the desk. My bad. My whole body doesn't slip, but my elbow does. Oh, dear. Ooh. There we go. I'm gonna give me the strongest shoulders ever. I will say this is honestly though still more of a a workout for my legs I feel like than my arms because you have to hold a consistent squat for like two minutes straight. That's a really long time. I'm actually gonna take a break halfway through. It's a really long time to hold a squat for. <laughs> Like, I can do squats, but holding, like, a half squat that long is like, oh, oh, my knees, my knees. All right, back we go. <laughs> I didn't notice the earthquake or the grunts. Hey, nice. Hell yeah. Don't worry, there definitely wasn't an earthquake. I definitely didn't elbow my camera off the desk. <laughs> that doesn't sound like me at all. Ooh. And then... Up. One more. Okay. That's another set of ten done. Yay! Slow but steady progress. We're doing it. We're doing the thing. We're slowly getting stronger. Oh my god. I'm sure it'll get easier over time as well. The longer I do it, the easier it'll get. <laughs> Ooh, I definitely feel it in my shoulders every time. I mean, it's meant to be. I'm doing stuff that specifically works my shoulders out, but like, you do feel it in your shoulders, my God. All right, until next break. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, 
Uh, the potions are done. Yeah, nice, nice. I did heavy lifts today. We do we do like one and then the other normally. So we do a set of uh, a set of weights and then a set of bands and then a set of weights and then a set of bands just to mix it up a little bit. So because I don't, I'll be honest, I'm still pretty new to this. I don't really know what's like better for me or worse for me. So I just do one then the other and the rest of the stretches I do off stream because they are like you need to be lying on the bed to do them. And so, funnily enough, <laughs> I'm not doing it here. Ah oh dear, you did, it does get easier. I struggled with it doing just 10 for ages. Yeah, like I am at a stage where I can do 10 weights pretty easily, but the bands, oh my God. I didn't think I'd find the bands as hard as I do. Doing 10 of the bands, <sighs> I don't know why. I, I, I picked the, so I have both of them, right? And I thought that the bands would be like an easier version of the weights, to be honest. I just, which very naive, clearly, because the bands, destroy me oh my god i don't know when they're I, i'm on like the easiest setting i have like the extra firm band i think for the full like because i have to have my full arm width out but like i am at the very tips of the bands and i can't i can't get tighter at all and like finish a set of 10 like absolutely not those ones whoo, like i really i feel in my shoulders so much it feels like i'm vibrating by the end of 10 oh my god and I'm, yeah, I'm sure it will get easier. It will. Like, the longer I do it, for the, the better I'll get at it. And I will eventually be able to go tighter and stuff like that. But right now, <laughs> I I feel like a little, like, shaky, shaky lady afterwards. I was like, okay, you're going to do 15, then 20. I would love to get to the point where I could do, yeah, more. Because I meant to do, not all in one go, but, like, 20 of each of these a day. So two sets of 10. That's what I've been told to start with. So that's what I'm doing. I do a set of 10 every hour. <laughs> Because I might as well spread it out throughout the day since I'm still sewing and such. And then then the other ones, the, st the stretches I meant to do sets of 10 on each of them, but they're all like lying in the bed ones. So it's easier to do those all one after the other, like first thing in the morning or last thing at night. I think we're working. I'm doing specifically shoulders and back. So it's a lot of core, like a lot of squatting while you do stuff and like sticking your butt out, which is again why I don't show it on stream because it's like, it's... All of this, all of this, but mainly the shoulders. The shoulders is mainly what needs to be worked out. You feel it in your shoulders. <laughs> you feel it in your bones. Hell yeah. Let this stuff all around me so the work it grows. Feels like it. It feels like it, but I'm glad. I'm glad that we got something. It feels like I'm doing a good thing for my body. And that's nice, even if it's a bit difficult at the moment. Uh, bands may be working muscles you don't use as much compared to the weights. Maybe. Yeah, must be that. Because I thought bands, I've been doing them for a couple weeks now and it's still really hard. <laughs> like, when when do the bands get easier? Ah, uh, dear. Good on you for sticking to the exercise. I cannot motivate myself to work out at home, even basic stuff. I'll, I'll be honest, without stream, I think I'd be in the same boat. Um, streams pushed me to work harder at my hobbies over the years and like improve and get better but with that comes you know you want to have more strength to actually be doing the stuff that I want to do and so you know getting those injuries I only got them because I didn't have the strength to do what I wanted to do and again like very much every hour having that kind of like well at the end of an hour I do a set of 10 for now and then we have a whole hour break and then I do another one. That's been a really easy way where it doesn't feel too overwhelming because I'm not doing like four sets back to back kind of thing. Because I think that would be too much for me. And I think that would at this stage discourage me a lot if I was to try and do four sets back to back because it's too hard for me right now. I think, I think it'd be too much. So yeah, having it every hour doing that, I think it's a good start. And then if this does get to become too easy, like um, CJ said, doing 15, then 20, or even doing two back to back and then doing two per break instead of just one, you know, that there are options for growth with time. It's just one of those things, isn't it? It takes a really long time. Uh, but I want to get stronger and I, I want to stop injuring myself from embroidery because it's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> and I want to... I want to be stronger so I can attempt more projects. So I think that that has motivated me more. Yeah. Ah, uh, dear. Would you be able to share the exercise in the Discord? Probably. Actually, would you guys be able to help me identify what exercises I'm doing and then I can find them and share them in the Discord? <laughs> because we I wasn't given names. I can just show you what they are, if that's okay. Um, <laughs> I'll do just one. And if you guys know the name of it, I'll find it on Google and, and you can pop it in the Discord. Um, so the first one, one of the band, is 
Hello, I, I'm gonna have to squat while doing this, I think, just so you can see me, hello. <laughs> it's normally not done squatted, but you take your hands in both bands and you stretch it the whole way out so that you're like not going further, just going to there. And you hold that for 10 seconds and then you bring it forward and you hold it there for 10 seconds and then you hold it there for 10 seconds. So it's that one. And the weights, the weights are the one where it's like, I'm going to have to be a bit careful because you do have to sit, st stand in a specific situation, which is squatted with your butt out, right? And then you hold them to the side so that your, your shoulders go back and then you bring them down and then you bring them back up again like that. Uh, and you hold it at each point for like five seconds. Yeah. But it's quite important that you stick your butt out and you put your shoulders back because you are, yeah, stretching your shoulders. That's why I don't do it on stream. <laughs> because the positioning is a bit intense for Twitch. Uh, do you know what they're called? <laughs> and if you do, I will find them on Google and just whack them in the Discord for later. Because again, when I was shown them, I wasn't told their names. I just got told what to do. Jellyfishes don't have bones, right? No, just muscles. Made of pure muscle. Yeah, I think I'd do it to do uh, PT and weights training, but I want to be stronger for aerial hoop, yeah. Having like something like that's really motivating though. Would you be able to- oh, sorry, sorry. I think it'd also be good for me if I did something like that for my stream, since I do see a lot there too, yeah. If you're doing like a lot of arms. Is it a chicken stretch? The weight one looks like a variation on a row. Ooh, okay. Well, let's have a little look. Let's have a little look if we- I'll, I'll look up chicken stretch first. And see if, uh, if that comes up. Uh... Mm. I don't think it is chicken stretching, but I can imagine that would still be good. Uh, if I do a row... Ooh, I see what you mean. Yeah, it does look like a variation on a row. That one's probably right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very si similar to the up row. Yeah, Chris, I think, I think it is a variation on a row, probably. And yeah, it's to put your shoulders back towards the center. Not sure what the banded ones, uh, not the one, but words like banded isometric shoulders should help. Oh, the chicken was just you being silly. All right, my bad. Uh, let me see, banded isometric shoulder. Yeah, it's, it, it's one of those situations where I don't have them anywhere, what they're called. I was just shown what to do. Oh, okay. God, yeah, the whole stretching it apart and then bring it together. That's the one that really gets me. And it gets me like across here, which maybe that is a muscle that I don't use very often, but I feel it. I feel it when we're doing that stretch. It gets me. Ah, oh, dear. I'm happy to show you what I'm doing, even if I don't show you the full set. But uh, yeah, the, the ones are lying down stretches. I can't show you those. So, well, I might just have to do a bit of Googling because there are two others that you don't know about right now. Um, that I might have to do a bit of a Google on and see if I can find what they are. But yeah, it, they're all to do with basically sorting your shoulders out and moving them more towards the center of your back so that you build up muscle between your back and your shoulder because that's where I'm getting injured. It's the bit between my back and my shoulder and it's from doing this too often. So it's that repetitive motion because it's using more than I have and it's meaning that my, my shoulder is going forward here and back here. And so that's where, why I'm getting injured. <laughs> So uh, yeah, that, that's the one they've given me to try and f prevent that injury in the future, which is very specifically a sewing related injury or an embroidery related injury, yeah? So yeah. Oh dear, if I can pass anything on from that. I, again, I'm not a doctor and I'm not a physiotherapist. And I think if you are having pain that you should go to your own doctor and get that checked out. But yeah, that is at least what I'm doing to try and build up some strength though. Mm. So your physiotherapist doctor might have just had some change bands when you're doing high difficulty because Different bands are for different strengths. Oh, okay. Right. Ah, oh, maybe, yeah. They gave me the extra firm band. Uh, so if you're interested in the band that I'm using, it's an extra firm. Um, that's the one that they gave me. <laughs> they literally taught me through everything. So I was like, okay, you want this one, this one, this one, this one. I was like, okay. I found the video for the weight when it's called Standing Bent Over Dumbbell Row. That sounds about right. That sounds like everything I'm doing. Let me have a little Google of that. I think, I think that sounds right. I don't, again, it doesn't have a name in my mind, but yeah, 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 that does look like it. Bent Over Dumbbell Row. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, I'm just watching like a video of it. 
while holding a dumbbell in each hand with a neutral grip. Oh, but no standing up. Torso is roughly parallel with the floor. You stay squatted in the one I'm doing. But it's very similar, yes. Actually, standing up might not be a bad variation of it if I want to do a different one. Oh, no, they, they are staying squatted and then they're standing up afterwards. Okay, I see, I see. Repeat for the desired number. Yes, yes, this is it, this is it. A bent over dumbbell row. That is what I'm doing. You can stick your butt out like a chicken. And then, yeah, just lift to the side and it puts your shoulder blades going into your back. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the one. Well done, sleeves. Well done, sleeves. All right. If you haven't posted this, I will post it in the uh, in the in the Discord, in the live stream chat for anyone who <laughs> who is going to be like, what the hell are you talking about, Jelly? What was this? There you go, there you go. Bent over dumbbell row. That is exactly what I'm trying to do. <laughs> um, well done. Well done, sleeves. Oh, dear. There we go. Yeah, I used to be weak there and my scapulas would be called chicken winging. Oh, really? <laughs> you called it. And yeah, standing wouldn't work the same. No, I didn't think so either. I thought you had to be squatted with your butt out. <laughs> yeah, you do. You do have to be squatted with your butt out. But uh, yeah, no, I just do it as well with I have one kilogram and two kilogram weights. So I'm not using heavy weights or anything like that. And I wasn't recommended to use heavy weights. I think the difference is that, like, the way that I was taught, like, shown it, is it's the idea of building strength, but not necessarily being, like, a buff bodybuilder, you know? It's just about having, like, a little bit more core strength to keep going and doing the stuff that I want to do. Now, I wouldn't be mad about looking like a little bit of a bodybuilder, but, <laughs> but I think you'd have to do more work than that. And just the, the little bit. Yeah, more about building strength for specifically what I wanted to do. Oh god. What I want to do right now is thread this goddamn needle. Yeah, you won't get buff from those exercises alone. Yeah, you need a bit more than that. If you wanted to be buff, you'd up it or ask to, uh, be asked for it. Yeah, so you'd have to do a bit more to to get fully over buff like that fella is. But yeah, no, I was asked. I, I wanted specifically stuff that I could do to help with, you know, the muscle aches I was having and work out a long-term solution so that I didn't have to lower the amount of embroidery I did. How, what do I need to do to keep up with my current stuff? And they were like, yeah, do this, 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 and this, and this will get your body stronger so that you can keep going at the level you are now. And it's like, perfect, that's exactly what I wanted. Again, I'm not against becoming muscular, but I think it would take more than just this. This is just for my shoulders and back, really. Ah, oh dear. Do you want to be buff? Yeah, you'd end up asking for it. I did two 100 kilogram deadlifts today. <gasps> My God, that is like a lot. <laughs> that's, that's, that you, you lifted nearly two of me. That's a heckin' lot. Ah, oh dear. Wow. Wow. I don't think I could even lift one of me. Heckin' impressive. Maybe one day though. No, I'm speaking defeatist. One day, maybe I'll be able to lift one of me too. Or two of me, even. Ah, I used to work out four times a week before I got really ill. Now I do physio exercise and they look ridiculously easy, but they help and that's what matters. Exactly! I lifted my noodles closer to my mouth! <laughs> that sounds pretty good, honestly. That's, like, that's an important lift right there. You had a good breakfast? What did you get? Did you get fried bread or toast today? What, what, what were we vibing with? Did they have hash browns? What kind of sausage did they have? I hope you had a good one. I'm very jealous. I'm back. Welcome back. Would you believe we might still be talking about breakfast? Although we are talking a little bit about weights and lifting at the moment because I just did my uh, my lifts. Time to make a workout regime for streams. It'd have to be quite infrequent, I think, at the moment. I wouldn't be like... I, maybe you could do it. You might be fitter than I am, though, because you do so much swimming anime. But uh, yeah, no, I, I, I wouldn't be against it, but I can't do that right now. <laughs> I, I can only do like one set at a time, so, so later, later, when I'm stronger maybe, but you could do it now. Oh dear. The resistance band exercise is called Bank Apart- oh my god, sleeves, really? Did you find both of them? Did you find both of them, sleeves? Oh my god. For real? Let's see. Oh, that is it! That is- yeah, 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 yeah! Oh, yeah, yeah, except that you have to hold it a lot. Like, I was told to hold it for like 10 seconds at each spot. This is really quick. But you know what? Sure. You know what? I will post this one. It's literally this, but just hold it longer. And that's what I was told to do. Nice. 
There you go. There you go. Got two of them. Two of them. Two of them there. Nice. Thanks so much, Sleeves. Ah, oh, that's perfect. Now everyone knows the, the, at least two of the exercises. The other ones I'll have to find myself because you haven't seen them, but I'll, I'll find them and, and add them in. Sounds fun if I'm not the only one doing it. Yeah. Jealous of my full English. Very jealous of your full English. Jealous of breakfast. Ah, talking food. I like it. I like it. Do a one hour cooldown. You could. Yeah. I think with a one hour cooldown, I guess it would be possible. I just would have to have the long core down. The main thing I work on is uh, my PT is, is strengthening my shoulders because stupid movable joints. Yeah, for me it's also shoulders shoulders to back really. But yes, oh meant for you. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Anime would probably do a great job at it because they were already pretty fit. My Google Foo magic, honestly impressive. Genuinely, <laughs> well done. Because I've never been told the name of the exercises. So <laughs> genuinely incredibly impressive. Well done, sleeves. From just a, a very brief explanation of it, you found it. Holding is hard mode. Well, that's what we were told to do, though. We were told that maybe that's why I'm struggling so much. Because <laughs> I was told to hold it for 10 seconds out and then 10 seconds in and then 10 seconds out and then 10 seconds in. And I find it so hard. <laughs> oh my god. That was because, like, the weights I can do, like, they get me a bit puffed, but I can do them just fine. But the whole, the bands? They, they wreck me every time. I find that so hard. Fast will burn more energy, but holding hits strength. Maybe that's why I was told to do the holding then, but oh my god. Yeah, like, you feel the burn. It's like, oh, oh my god. Burn, burning, burning from stretching. But it does feel like it's doing something good. Like, it doesn't hurt so much. It's just like, whew, tiring. It's tiring. But yeah, I couldn't do, like right now, the idea of doing more than a set of 10 is like, nah, because I barely get to 10. I think 10's a good amount right now. Ah, oh, dear. You could use a lighter resistance, man. I could, but this is the one she told me to use. <laughs> and I'll be honest, she's, she, I'm just going to trust her. Like, I think other people, if you were doing it, yeah, like use whatever is right for you. But for me, I've had someone tell me that they think I should use this one. So it's like, oh, God. I trust her. She was really good. So unfortunately, unfortunately, yeah, I will do. I will do what she says. For now, at least. For now, at least. Quick question about the cosplay. How do you think you'll get the sunrise on the end of the jacket? Oh, you mean like the suns and the moons themselves, or do you mean like the purple fringe? Because the purple fringe we're making out of uh, crocheted lace, uh, but the suns and the moons are going to be gold work and silver work, depending on the side they're on. Uh, but the gold work and silver work will be in purple. It won't be in gold and silver purple, let's say. It's just going to look... It's the same skills, I guess. So yeah, the suns and the moons, that's going to be done in gold work, but in shades of purple rather than uh, rather than gold and silver. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, dear. I think just barely getting to 10 shows you're at the right level. Yeah, probably. I can do 10. We did do a lot of tests while we were in there as well. I can do 10. I know I can do 10. But it, it gets, it's just difficult, you know? But I can do it. Oh dear. My ability, I've never been able to touch my toes, sit up straight, legs straight. Oh god. I'm a, I'm a flexible person. I just don't have, I'm just flexible. I have nothing else. No strength, no muscles. <laughs> so that's all we're having to change. Because the flexibility, fine. No stiffness, all good. But when it comes to actually being able to lift things, pfft, I'm a little wobbly noodle lady. <laughs> Something nice, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tight pan strings, I have that. Oh, I just, I'm a flexible noodle lady. The name jelly honestly suits me better and better every year, for I am just, I am made of jelly. <laughs> oh dear, I'm just a jelly lady. Wobbly, wobbly. No strength. But only for now, because who knows, maybe by this time next year, I will have some strength. I'll be a little stronger. Maybe I'll be able to see like a proper flex for the camera and be like, oh yeah, look at all my muscles. Oh, 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 oh. Look at all this. I'm such a strong person now. Yeet. That's the goal. One day. <laughs> Not yet though, but one day. Oh dear. I want to crochet an alligator inspired by- Oh my god, it came with big doopy sleeves! I've seen- Oh yeah, sun and moon granny squares are lovely. I've seen some stuff like that and it's beautiful. Hell yeah, why not? Oh dear. When I had a personal trainer, she told me to take the band where my 10th rep would not be easy. Like the first one is hard at 10th rep, uh, at 10th rep, but you can you can use this one and increase it to the goal. It really helped me feel more positive about my exercises. Ah, it's good to have a personal trainer as well who really, really understands you and gets you. Like 
in the same way when you're working like closely with someone having someone who listens and understands what your goals are and helps you get to that is really nice an easy so yeah straight to stand on the end of a steep and then dip your heels yeah i have done that it's been a while since i've done that but i have done that one I wish I could stream areas, but no way I could afford my own rig at home. Also, the space. Yeah, it's one of those hobbies where, like, it'd be really cool. I mean, I guess... Oh, that might be difficult, might it? Like, setting up a remote setup for a stream. Like, you know how people do IRL backpacks and stuff like that? If there was a way that you could set up, I guess it'd be tricky if it's in a public space because you wouldn't want to stream other people. It needs to be, like, a private studio, and then that's going to be very expensive. Yeah. No, I see what you mean. That might be quite tricky, huh? Oh dear, I can stand on one leg like a flamingo for hours and I can lie down, lift my legs and hold for ages. I just can't turn my legs. Ah, okay. Whereas I probably couldn't stand on a leg for very long because I don't have that strength. But I have flexibility so I can turn constantly. They wiggle all over the place, but they're just not strong. Probably, probably opposite some power, do you think? Because my, my problems are all from lack of strength at all. Just a little. And like, it's not lack of strength for any medical reason, really. It's just that I don't do anything. Lack of strength for it's my own fault. <laughs> uh, when they're understanding your limits, it's really, really helpful. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, we had a uh, we had a good conversation, and it was quite clear. I think that I again, I I like the idea of being a buff person, but I know that that's probably never going to be in my future because I have other things where I spend that time on. I can't imagine spending that much time going to the gym when I could be doing sewing and stuff like that, and that's fine. But I would like to be a little healthier. And again, mainly it's just that, you know, we, noodle arms have been a joke on this stream for the longest time, but it is getting to a point where I probably should try and build up some muscle for what I want to do. The internet's so bad in the studio. Oh no. Power Pup and Jelly are both very aptly named. We kind of are. Yeah, Power's got the strength, but not the flexibility. And I've got the flexibility, but none of the strength. <laughs> Power Pup and Jelly. <laughs> I didn't notice that, but that's actually really good. Oh dear. Hell yeah. A powerful bean and a flexible bean. Yip, 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 yip. One with strength and one with flexibility. Yip, yip. Oh wait, you can turn your legs if you're spelling it. It's the hips that don't work. I see. I gotcha, I gotcha. Well, I still kind of like the idea though. Because you have power in your name and I have jelly in my name. I'll be a little wobbly lady. You need a powerful bean. I need to roll out my ah yeah 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 oh, plantar fasciitis that's the foot one I know about that I don't have it to be clear but I am aware of it I know a lot about it yeah well your foot is bad bad feet I know someone who had to roll them on ice like once a day and it sounded very uncomfortable oh 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 it still works it does still work yeah. I would like to be a little stronger, though. I would, I would. I'd rather jerk, draw and work on commissions when my body is working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, dear. I was getting buff and I gave it all away. It's never too late, Shifty. It's never too late. Hey, maybe you could do... if Like, anime said they were considering doing, like, some, some, like, just, like, simple weights or simple stretches in the middle of their stream as part of motivation to get fit. I mean, I'm doing it more because I have to. <laughs> But I feel like it could work if you had it as like a like a redeem or like something. It'd be like make the jester work out, force them to, put on some circus music, and you could lift weights. <laughs> oh dear. I get it. Uh because of being on my feet all day with hospitality work, yeah. Yeah. So when I rub my feet on the corners of the stairs, it's like a tight string that pulls on. I have zero arcs. Ah, oh, because my size one feet? Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, teeny tiny feet. That's gonna make it hard. Oh, dear. I have big old feet. Well, I don't have big feet, to be fair, but I have, I have bigger feet. Oh, dear. And again, I kind of like the idea. I don't know. <laughs> People talking about getting their perfect bod. My perfect bod might be... I like the idea of being like a silly cartoon character with big nose and big feet. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think I don't think you can change your body to have bigger nose or bigger feet. So I guess <laughs> I guess that's just gonna be in my dreams forever. <laughs> oh dear. Kids don't have arches like high heels. Yeah, no no no, they do not. They do not. 
Uh, maybe I will, but the VTuber gets a bit funny. You might almost need like a little image of you working out that you could just like shift to. Like if you had like maybe like a picture of Shifty with the weights here and the weights here and you could just flip between the two pictures and have it as like a gif where it flips between the two pictures every few seconds so it looks like you're working out and you could have the the Shifty power hour where you where you just do like a little two minute workout and then go back and that way even if your VTuber is flipping out all over the place it's fine because you're not on the scene with the VTuber you're in the scene with the gif of Shifty doing this <laughs> It's just an idea though. I don't think you have to do that by any means. It's just an idea. I'd like bigger feet, height, and curly hair. Ooh, curly hair. I wouldn't mind. I, the, the thing is, I would love my hair to do a bit more, but then I'm also like, would it then not more? Because I don't like brushing out knots. So maybe I'm okay with my straight hair. But then sometimes it'd be cool, right? I want the most unique cartoon character looking hair. <laughs> We could look like an ideal body in the eyes of the media, or I could just try and grow both my nose and my feet. <laughs> I just like the idea that like, if you saw me from the side, if my nose could go out the same distance as my feet, I don't know, they're just gonna give me joy, but it doesn't. I have quite a big nose, but it's not big enough at the moment. Oh dear. My, my day job in the library, so I wouldn't do that with her, I used to be buff because it's so unnecessary for my work. You could just be like lifting books, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. The next time someone doesn't return a book on time, he's like, you can like bring out your biceps or whatever and be like, what do you mean you didn't bring it out on time? What's this? Just like flexing as you tell them, what do you mean you didn't brought your book back? Where's that book? <laughs> you were meant to bring that back by last week. Where have you been? <laughs> oh dear. Hell yeah, good idea. <laughs> Oh, workout shifty scene. I, again, only if you'd wanted to though. I mean, for me, it makes a lot of sense to incorporate it into my streams because I'm, I'm, you know, using those muscles constantly and it's good to work them out so that I can do more over time. But it makes it makes a lot of sense for me to do it. I don't think, I don't think it's a necessary thing for anyone else. Unless you wanted that motivation or you wanted people to yell at you to do it. Oh dear. Hell yeah. Deary me, deary me. My like bones and cardigans and shushing on their like green hairs, piercings, tattoos. Maybe soon to be buff. <laughs> I, that's kind of the same with me though. Like at the moment, obviously my hair is very, very boring. I am waiting to dye it blues again soon, soon. But like most of the time when I've been live streaming, I have very colorful hair. Um, and I like the idea of being like this colorful hair, really buff embroidery artist. <laughs> I just like the idea of being the buffest embroidery artist. Ho ho ho. Sounds fun. It sounds like fun. Ah oh, dear. I, I love how we were like, I want a big nose and like a tattoo. I <laughs> extreme beauty standards. I have an extreme beauty standard and it's my nose isn't long enough. And <laughs> I'm hoping as I age that I get inches on my nose so that eventually my feet I think as well posture would help. If I could like arch like there a bit more and then have my nose like have my neck stick out, then my nose would go out further, but it's probably not very good for my back. But yeah. <laughs> oh no, yay blue! Blue is the colour I've been most of my like adult life. Uh, blues and greens generally. But uh, I often get the green dye though, because the green dye that I used, the Manic Panic one, faded to blue, which would mean I'd either be green or blue at all times, which was really nice. But yeah, I like I like that. I wish my hair wasn't so thick. Oh, do you have really thick hair? Or thin? Could be either. Oh dear, I think I added to my stream would need a PNG animation for it though. Yeah, like a little, little buff lifting PNG. Ah, excuse me. Oh dear, wanna do blue or deep emerald? I love deep emerald. Okay, yeah, deep emerald was the first green I went and it was like, it's it's consistently been one of my favorites because deep emerald like fades to like a really pretty blue color. Oh my God, it's, I love it. I love it. I've done that one many times because that's the thing. If you, I don't want to dye it every like week or two. So having it fade to another pretty color, the same with like, I had a really beautiful like royal purple that faded to blue and I love both of them because even when they faded, they still look really good and I love it. Hee <laughs> hee, a crafty buff fish. Yeah, I won't be a jellyfish anymore. I'm gonna be a crafty buff fish one day. Also, Lucas, good morning. Welcome on in on the YouTube. I hope you're doing well. Oh dear. I stick to blue greens mainly because it works best for me and sometimes purples. Save, Otty, we're all blues, greens and purples. Hell yeah. But they're, they're lovely colours to be. I love them very much. I have been... Wait, I, did I have the picture here still? 
No, I don't. I was gonna say, I did have a picture that I showed on stream because a lot of people didn't believe that my hair was normally dyed. I've had Battenberg hair, where I had it half yellow, half pink. I've done pink. I did an ombre fire red to yellow at the tips, which was really fun. Uh, I've done, yeah, greens, purples, blues. I do those ones just a lot because I like them a lot. Uh, but yeah, I've had all, all sorts of hair colors since being live on Twitch, but also way before streaming on Twitch, I've always really dyed my hair. <laughs> but yeah, no. I just had to leave it grow out for a little bit, so I've had to wait. You're gonna go yellow? Ah, oh, hell yeah. I liked having yellow hair a lot. I had yellow and pink, so I technically had both, but the yellow was always really fun because it's just so bright and so lovely. Curl for that quickly. I want pastel orange half with black undercut. <gasps> that would be lovely power. That would be so pretty. I have deep green conditioner too, so that helps maintain the color. Very smart. It has every color under the sun. I think I have two. The only color that I've been less is red. Red doesn't suit me very well. Most colors I don't mind, but red, because I have a lot of red in my skin, it kind of like they pick each other out. And so it makes me look very red by comparison. So I've been most colors. The only color that I tend to avoid these days is red because it doesn't suit me personally, but I, I like it on other people and I've tried it myself. I don't do gray anymore either. I used to do silver, um, but they, my natural hair color is just so dark that silver is like a bit risky if I don't have very short hair. Uh, when I had really short hair, I did silver because then it would grow out quickly, shave it again, you know, put it back in again. But yeah, with longer hair, I don't do silver. So unless I shaved it again, I wouldn't do it. Oh, I'm one of the undercut like Amity's epilogue hair. No, that one look like ever. That'd be so good. And yeah, doing it pink or blue, lovely. In every color too. We've all been little rainbow beans. Oh, uh, awful on me, but it looks so awesome. I love yellow. I didn't think I'd like yellow as much as I did until I did it. And then I loved it. It doesn't suit me as well as certain other colors, which is why it's not one that I do that often, but I, it was just so fun. Love me on the cut, 100 out of 10 recommend. Silver gray, but I'm too suited to oranges and red. So you're maybe one of the people that suits red better than I do. Yeah, whereas I can do grays and I like that, but they only on short hair. Actually on topic, I'm getting my hair in like 30 minutes. Oh, good luck. I hope it goes well. I hope you get exactly what you wanted. I went white and pink with the white was so hard to maintain. Yeah, that's that's kind of the, the kicker with silvers and whites. It also depends on how light your hair is. If you are like blonde naturally, you'd probably be fine with whites and silvers. Like it probably won't be too difficult. My hair color is, well, I mean, you can see, it's pretty dark. <laughs> I have a pretty dark complexion when it comes to my hair. So yeah, trying to dye that is, is, bleaching is already difficult, let alone, yeah, going to tone it to silver. I did do it, but only on short hair, because yeah, with long hair like I have now, it would just fry it. You know, it wouldn't want to be redone at all. Oh, did I found a real person classic blend, I think, oh, Paul Bright dye, dropped it in stream chat. Okay, listen, I, I'm going to peep, I'm going to peep a look, but I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to do a full break. I'm just going to peep, because <gasps> I want, I, I want to peep. That's the color. Yeah, that's the color I had. It's so good. It's such a good color. I literally cannot recommend enough. It is so beautiful. I, I love that color. That The first time I dyed my hair that color, uh, we didn't have a Christmas tree up that year. So I decided I was gonna dye my hair green and then decorate myself as a Christmas tree because we couldn't have a tree that year. And so I bought like beard baubles and I dyed my hair green. I put it into little spikes and I went to work as a Christmas tree. <laughs> And I do not regret it. It was so fun. And then I ended up enjoying that color so much that I dyed it like for a few more months, that same color. It was so pretty. And I went back to it again. It was the last color I was before I dyed it brown, basically. Oh my God, loud noises outside. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. Uh, I haven't dyed my hair nearly a year and the purple is still on the fringe. Yeah, I mean, I haven't either. And you can see, so this has all been bleached before. <laughs> Even though there's technically brown dye in it, it is so, so much lighter than my, my natural hair color is. It's also fried, the ends. <laughs> yeah, but that's why the idea is that like, you know, growing the hair out so I can chop all of this bit at the end off and go with virgin hair again. Uh, because yes, I have so many layers of color in my hair that I don't, yeah, we want virgin hair for a bit. Cause I've been dyeing my hair since I was 16. <laughs> it's been more than 10 years. Ah, oh, dear. So I need to need to have some virgin hair for a minute and then I can go back to dyeing it again. Oh, just waiting for it to reach my shoulders. But I am just getting a touch up at the bottom because that's going, oh, I see, I see. I know my hair will be the right length by June, so that's perfect. That's honestly good planning. Good heckin' planning. The color is on point. It is. 
I'm lucky my hair is very resilient, yeah. Uh, my hair is, it, it has phases. <laughs> Sometimes it's more resilient than others. I naturally have quite thin hair anyway, so that doesn't help. But these days I'm very, very good at working around it and working with it. Like, you know, I've been do doing my own hair for so long at this point that I'm used to it. I Again, this is the longest I've been without dyeing my hair a fancy colour since for over 10 years, for a very long time. But it's not, it's been nice, to be fair. I don't mind having my natural colour every now and again. It just doesn't feel like, uh, you know when you want to feel like, how to put it? it? It doesn't feel like me. I don't know how to put it. I know that it is my natural hair colour, so it's a silly thing to say that it doesn't feel like me. But it doesn't feel like me. Like, I don't feel as myself when I have, uh, when I have darker hair like this. I prefer having really bright hair. So yeah, I'm looking forward to being able to go back to it again. And I'm looking forward to getting it dyed and having prettiness again. Yeah, I'm, exci I'm excited. But yeah. I've been sitting in my chair doing my own thing and I watch you doing yours, yes? It's just relaxing to watch you sew. Oh, so <laughs> Susie, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I do the same thing to be fair though when I'm doing crafting off stream. I just watch other people do theirs and it's like having a little... Like, you know when you'd go to like a little crafting meeting? It kind of feels like that. Everyone's working on their own projects. Some people are talking, some people are not. Some people are, are just chilling. Some people are having a snack instead of doing their craft. Some people are not. Some people are just popping by to watch what people are making. And I, I like that. It gives me that kind of like coffee shop craft meetup vibes. I love that. I love that. I love that. I love a bit of that. Oh dear. The only difference is I guess if we were all in person is we, <laughs> we'd all be showing off our hair a little bit more probably. Have more people be like, yeah, look at this, look at this colour under here, and be like, whoa. But, uh, yeah, not pop, not not so easy to do over the internet, unfortunately. But other than that, it's not so dissimilar. All right, let's get a bead in that, and then I need a little more thread, but we're doing really good. Look, we've only got, like, a few more lines to go, and then we've neatened up this whole piece. It has taken the whole day, <laughs> but we're doing really good. I'm very pleased. I thought that it would, to be fair. I kind of figured what we do today was... Probably do all of the little bows, get all of them done. And then if we could do like a little stitch around the outside, just to make sure that it's not pulling up or being naughty or moving around or causing problems. Yeah. I feel like I get no work done because I'm checking out everyone else's projects. Well, that's why we have a, a timer. <laughs> because otherwise, listen, I don't want to say that I was unproductive before the timer. No, definitely not. But we, it has helped with productivity. We'll put, we'll put it like that. It has helped. It's been a big help. There we go. We just got the top bit to go now. Almost all all done and neatened and pretty. And it makes such a pretty little pattern and I love it. We do have a whole other piece like this to work on, but it'll be the darker purple and that'll be white beads, which is lovely. Oh, that's not the right thread. That's my cheap thread. I would like to use a slightly more expensive for the stuff that's going to show. Uh, it's also, you can kind of see what I mean. The purple and the bows, even though we were pretty heavy handed with it, once you turn them into the bows, you just can't, it's very subtle. It's very subtle after that. Oh dear. I try to respect the timer, but then I chat here. No, if you want to chat, you're welcome to chat. Listen, you can chat as much or as little as you like. I don't think there's any, there's no barriers. It's me. <laughs> I just can't get distracted while I'm working. I should try and do a full hour's work and then do proper stretches and then do a proper art share of everyone. And then that's better for everyone because it gives everyone their time in the spotlight in the Discord. It gives me a proper time to stretch my, my back and my shoulders. And it means that we get a good chunk of work done. So yes. Yes, it's for me. And if you want to go craft along to the timer, you're welcome to do that as well. But mainly, mainly it's for me to make sure that everything is is good. <laughs> everything is done properly and with the, the right amount of time and consideration. Oh dear. It's so cool seeing how far this has progressed the lines on the fabric. Yeah, like I don't normally, I, again, you don't normally see it because it's normally such a small piece. But with these bigger pieces, you can really see like how the neatening affects it. It looks like a wave that slowly creeps up it. It's, it's really cool. And it only really works on bigger pieces. Normally we're working on such small pieces that you never get that that effect. But yeah. Uh, hi, it's me. I'm the problem. It's me. <laughs> oh dear. I mean, you say that though, Steve. I feel like you work away for pretty good chunks of time. Like, do you get a little distracted? Sure, but we all get a little distracted. I feel like you can do a pretty good chunk of time in a row, especially when you're chipping away at your cross stitches and stuff. You know, 
probably won't put a bead in that one because it's so close to the edge. I might, I can always come back and add a bead later, but for now, I don't think it needs a bead, probably. There you go. Yeah, I'm not putting beads in the bows that are really close to the edge, just because um, they will probably have the edging pieces over it and the beads make it a little hard to put them over the top. So yes, the edge ones don't have the beads on them, all the other ones do. It's just because you probably wouldn't see the beads anyway. Oh, what is this? Interesting. Is that a knot? Okay, well, if that's a knot, that's fine. I can just tie a knot in this then. It'd be nice to take a picture at this stage. Do you think? I could take a picture at this stage. You know what? Sure. Why not? And it doesn't hurt. I try and hang out in a, in a craft along VCs. It does help me get a lot done with productivity, but having another VC to go to where no one in mind would be cool. Ah, Yeah, we don't... We, we've done occasionally craft alongs. The problem with me in, is, in my channel particularly, I... <laughs> I'm normally not very well in the evenings. We don't talk about it too much on stream because it's a bit heavy. But most of the time when you don't see me on stream, the reason that I go quite quiet quite suddenly is because I get quite sick. Um, so it's a bit difficult for me to do extra stuff outside of streaming. That being said, I know that Cthulhu does... Because uh, I've seen Cthulhu sh sleeves and chalky. You guys sometimes join a craft VC. Am I wrong? Because I feel like I've seen... I thought I saw you guys even last night, maybe, doing that. I, I would love to join one day, but I just have to wait till I'm, again, not feeling unwell <laughs> so that I can join without being ill. But uh, yeah, Thursdays. I thought I saw you last night. 7 till 10, and you do like little craft lungs in the VCs. I don't know if, Sleeves, you happen to have a link to that Discord. I'd only post it, I guess, if you would like to, because I don't feel like I want to force that. You could also go to Sleeves' own channel or Cthulhu's own channel and go go find them there. But if you have one, yeah, if people are looking for craft longs, because I know it's really common in the craft communities, and under better circumstances, it would be something that I would normally love to do. It's just a little tricky for me personally to do that. Uh, unfortunately but it again it's okay though because there are other people in the community who do do that kind of thing uh, and on the regular as well like as you can see sleeves and cthulhu you can catch them doing that every single thursday so what i don't have other people and their communities make up for in spades here's the link to the blanket fort there you go guys if you're interested in doing weekly craft longs i would love to make it one day <laughs> it's just unfortunate the evenings are normally my worst time but uh yes I would love to make it one day to be able to come along and do a craft along. Uh, and if anything changes on my side of things, it's not something that I'm disinterested in doing in the future. I just can't do it right now. Just just can't do it right now. But maybe at some point. Oh dear, well, that's pretty random and severe, but he wants to hang out there until most of the time and make me have music. Hell yeah! Oh, that was one of the things I really loved about Chromacore. They had like artist discords, but because the servers are so full, because you'd have hundreds of people online at any one time, right? If you joined and didn't talk, nobody really said anything about it, because like loads of people were joining and not talking, and people would play music and you could kind of all have a craft along. I really like that. I don't feel like I could do that in my own server right now, because I'm generally so chatty. I think it'd be kind of weird to just hear me being silent. I don't want to give people like uncomfortable vibes or feel like I'm forcing myself or anything like that. But I like I liked joining other people's. <laughs> I like joining other people's a lot where it doesn't matter if I'm a bit quieter or if I'm not really talking and I could just do a little craft along and listen to other people talk about their processes because there is something really inspiring about crafting along with other artists and seeing their work in progresses and like all that kind of I just I really like it. I really really like it. I think it's lovely. I think it's absolutely lovely. Like when other people are explaining why they do things a certain way and it's maybe a different way than I'd ever considered. It's nice. I mean, that is also the nice thing about watching makers and crafting streamers and artist streamers as well, I would say. And sometimes just chatting streamers, you know, depending on what you're doing. It's really, really nice seeing people approach things in a different way. There you go. Wah. Oh dear, oof, that's all 5 till 8 a.m. First, do you want early, early morning crafts or tea? Do you want to wake up in the first morning, be productive? It's in the afternoon here, so that's great. Hell yeah. Oh dear. Excuse me, sorry. <laughs> Little tiny, quiet hiccup. Oh, sorry, Orty, yeah, that's heckin', heckin', uh, heckin' early. You know, you'd have to really wake up with a, an oomph in your step to get up and be creative at 5 a.m. Although, <laughs> saying that, I do have those days where I, it's, it's the waking up and feeling like 
You, do you guys ever get it? I'm really good at going to sleep, I will say. We've said it before, one of my main skills, it's actually not sewing, it's actually falling asleep. I'm really good at falling asleep. It's Honestly, the older I get, the more useful of a skill it is. But one thing I will say is when I wake up, I wake up. Which means there have been times, and especially like last summer was a really big one, waking up at 5am every single day and like getting into an accidental habit of it to the extent where I'd wake up hungry at 5am because I kept eating breakfast at 5am. Oh my god. Yeah, so I, I guess I have been one of those people that have woken up at 5am and been like, well, I guess that's the start of my day. Oh, dear. I mean, y'all see me awake till 2am before, so you know I'm not going to be awake at 5am. How, Jelly, please tell me your ways. I, I, I don't know, I'm just really sleepy. <laughs> I'm just a very sleepy lady, and I, I'm not sure. I really don't know. I just, it's, some people, you know, we don't like to, we don't talk about, how to put it, natural talent too much, because most of the time it's not natural talent. It's someone who's put a lot of work and effort in, right? But I would say that I'm naturally talented at falling asleep. Um, I think I have my bed exactly how I like it, and that helps because, you know, having your bed be perfectly comfortable every time you go into it makes a really big difference. And I have, like, differences for, like, different seasons, so different duvets for summer, winter, spring, autumn. Uh, I have a lot of pillows because sometimes I need a few more. Like, if I've been feeling a bit sick, then I might need a few more pillows just so that I'm not lying so flat. But then sometimes I need less pillows. If I've got, like, an ache in my back, less pillows is good. So having, like, the options for lots of pillows means that I can always be 100% comfortable, and I like that. And then, yeah, I think the, the real trick, though, unfortunately, is just that I'm so tired by the end of the day that I fall asleep really easily because I'm so sleepy. But, yeah. Obviously, that's not a good trick for everyone, because I know plenty of people that are exhausted at the end of the day and still can't sleep. But for me, that, yeah, I'm very lucky. I'm just, again, not, you know when you're like in D&D, &D, you're rolling stats for a character? I just got really lucky in my sleep stat, in that I'm just really good at falling asleep. I can also fall asleep pretty much anywhere, which is sometimes a problem, <laughs> because it has led me to falling asleep in public a few times, but... But uh, it does mean like if I'm sleeping over somewhere, like I will just fall asleep. Like I don't have any of those problems. Uh, I'm a very light sleeper though. I might have rolled really good in falling asleep, but if there's a noise outside, I will wake up very quickly. I don't know if that's, I can get back to sleep pretty quickly most of the time, but I do wake up a lot. I probably wake up an average of like three or four times a night, I think. Like it's just because of like, if there's noises outside, they wake me up. If a bin falls over, I'll wake up. Uh, if a big lorry drives by, I'll wake up. <laughs> so it depends. Some nights I wake up a lot more times than others. But yeah. Most of the time I get to sleep, though. Uh, my constitution stat, stat is crap. Can I swap some points around, please? Yeah, you just need a reroll. Maybe if you hit a certain level, you'll be able to have the opportunity to have a, a reroll. <gasps> wake up! <laughs> Grab a brush and put on around makeup! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it's especially if it's sunny outside, if I wake up and it's light, I'm immediately awake. It's like, well, it's light. That's it now. The lights come out. I can't. What can I do? What am I meant to do now? You know? Oh, dear. But if it's dark, I should be able to get back to sleep. It's just if it's light. Unfortunately, the sun rises at like 5 a.m. or like half five in the summer. So that's why last summer I was up at like 5 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> because I would wake up around that time anyway because there was probably a noise outside and it's light so it's like bugger <laughs> bugger that's it I'm up now I'm up at five what do I do what is there to do at 5 a.m there's nothing to do oh dear no I am uh I, I I definitely rolled lucky in the sleep stats department I'm very good at sleeping I don't think there's anything else that I'm not good at it's really just sleeping <laughs> I'm just very good at sleeping. Oh dear. But yeah, maybe at some point you'll hit you'll hit a point. Like maybe you'll like explore a deep cave, get a level up stat, and then be suddenly you can switch some of your points around or something. I don't know. Oh dear. Potentially. <laughs> I'm not sure. I've already been quite good at sleeping. I'm just a tired lady. I'm so excited for my next dragon fate. Is that for delivery? It's oh wait, and you have to set up right away because it's a commission. Does that mean that the uh, the Game of Thrones ones is going to be on hold for a little while while you do the new one? 
When I make up a five, oh, when I make up a five, oh, you're on. So that's great. Ah, oh, I'm glad, Saki. Yeah, for me, one of the first people I watch is Ophi. We which we literally raided earlier because depending on the time of year, Ophi's either on at like six a.m. or seven a.m. for me, which is really really good. Because if I do have one of those days where I wake up really really early, and because like Shiny won't be awake at five a.m., I can get up and then go make some breakfast, come upstairs and watch Ophi for a bit, which is nice. Same with Doodle actually, Ophi and Doodle. Uh, Doodle is on at 3 a.m. my time, but normally goes for like four-ish hours, I think. So I can see them like the last two hours, which is nice. Again, only on days where like my sleep is particularly bad, but it is nice. It is nice. Especially in the summer, honestly, it's really nice. <laughs> because I just can't get back to sleep once the sun comes up. Oh, duh. But that brain, that brain, it's like, it's light outside, it's daytime, get up. Yes, it will only take about a month and a half to do unless, ah, oh, okay, and the other one takes you about two, got you. I was wondering if the other one would get put on hold if you had that as a commission, but that's really exciting though! Hell yeah! I hope you have a really good time with it! Ah, oh, dear. I'm trying to think, I should probably try and get more streamers that I can watch that early in the morning. The other thing is I'm kind of like a... I don't know so many craft streamers from the evenings, like when it gets kind of late, because I'm quite an early to bed sort of person. I do miss a lot of the cosplayers, because there are other cosplayers on this platform that I never meet because I am streaming when they're asleep and they're streaming when I'm asleep and I just think it's such a shame. I would love- <laughs> maybe what I'll have to do at some point is try and stay awake a little bit longer just to try and meet some of like the late evening cosplayers at least a little bit because it'd be so nice because like all the people over in America who do like evening crafting like for me it's like hitting midnight and I'm like definitely asleep by then so yeah, it's not not a good time for me but <sighs> it'd be really cool it'd be really cool to watch other people Oh, I know there are some amazing crafters on it, like late times. I just never get the chance to find them or watch them. One day, one day. Uh, speaking of that, it's 1 a.m. Oh, bless you all. No, you're fine. It was lovely to see you. Thank you as well for helping out with words today. It was very kind of you. Go get some good Z's. I'll be back on Monday. I won't see you till Monday. Yeah, Monday. I'm off this weekend. Yeah, because we've got people coming over. Yeah, so have a lovely, lovely weekend. Enjoy yourself. I'll see you soon. Oh dear. I can't wait till I'm back home and I can go watch the late night streams. Yeah, like you you are more of a, a late a late bean, right? You're like the opposite of me. I'm a early to bed, early to rise kind of person, whereas you're more of a late to bed, late to rise. If memory serves. Oh dear. I did stay up a little late last night, I will say. <gasps> I wanted to catch one fish in Stardew Valley and it was just taking me a while. So. I did stay up a little bit late last night. Not super late though. Just a little bit late. I was still up at the same time. Oh dear. Yeah, you'll have to field all the all the evening cosplays. <laughs> I wish I could stay awake longer. I get that that is, I guess, the problem of being a sleepy lady, is I get so sleepy. And I will just fall asleep. There have been times where I have just been like watching someone and I've slowly just gone down and fallen asleep at my desk like this. And like I'll get lovely prints of like my jumpers on my face and it's oh. But yeah, I have to be a little careful because if if I'm starting to get tired, I will I will just fall asleep here and now. <laughs> and I don't want to fall asleep on my desk. It's not good for my neck. It's definitely not good for my face because, oh my god, depending on what I've got on my arms. I guess if I had nothing on my arms like this, it'd be okay. But like when I have my big jumpers on, it's like, oh, you have some intense marks. Yeah, you're a night owl. I'll probably do afternoon into evening streams myself. That's I, To be honest, I think... Logically, it, it makes a lot of sense. Like, I stream when it's good for me, but if you are looking to... Because you, you you are already quite a big a big social media bean, obviously. You do very well, you have a lot of very pretty, pretty pictures, you make amazing costumes, and you've won big competitions, right? I think hitting the time where America is awake <laughs> would probably be really good for you. <laughs> like, well, don't get me wrong, we have some Americans here, and I very much appreciate them, and it's always nice to see them, but we do kind of feel the insomniacs we have a lot of uh, insomniacs from America, or people that do night shifts and stuff like that. Whereas if you stream a bit later in the day, like in the evenings, you'll get more of the Americans popping over. And I think Americans are the most on the platform. Like, I think most, the biggest percentage of, like, from one country is America. So if you were looking to grow, streaming at times where America is awake makes the most sense because there's they have the highest viewer base. Yeah. And ah, oh dear, I am American. Hell yeah. We do have a few, and we appreciate the Americans here. 
<laughs> I hope they get good sleep at some point, to be honest. <laughs> but it's it's nice to see them. I worry sometimes that they're not sleeping enough, but it's all right. Waves and insomniac, yeah. <laughs> we feel the insomniacs here. <laughs> but like, yeah, if you were, yeah, that's the plan. Thank you for shouting out Azoni as well. A very, very talented cosplayer and crafter in general. So yeah, if you were looking to get a, a proper time slot. The other thing is actually, wait, should we see if they've added Australia? Does Australia exist in Makers and Crafting yet? You can actually, uh, so anyone who doesn't stream, this might seem a bit odd, you might not know this, but if you go to research, so if you go into the analytics tab on your created, created dashboard and then go across to research, um, it will show you when the best time for you to stream at, you know, for the best averages is. So for instance, if I was to say stream language in English, I'll put, uh, I'll put viewer region any, uh, and it's like, okay, when's the best time to stream? And it says the worst time to stream is 10 a.m. GMT, and I start at 9 a.m. GMT. So it basically gives you an idea of when the best time in the day to stream in the certain category is versus the worst time. I actually stream in the worst time of day for, <laughs> for makers and crafting <laughs> because it's when most of America's asleep. Uh, the best time of day in GMT uh, is midnight. Uh, basically, though, the hours leading up to midnight are all good. So 8 p.m., 12, 9 p.m., 10 p.m., 11 p.m., uh, midnight. Those are all... Where can you find us? Go into your creator dashboard, go into your analytics tab and click research. Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That is, that is where you can find it. And you can find that for anything. It's not just makers and crafters. So you can find that for any category. So for instance, I've got it on makers and crafters automatically because I recently stream it. But if I was to put in the art category, for instance, as another very similar category, and I am looking at stream language, English, viewer region. Actually, wait, can I bring this on stream for you? Two seconds. I might be able to show you this. Uh, okay, you can actually see this. Um, so I've gone on to art. And this one's actually much more average. Um, so this will give you the times where it's best. Let me go back to the makers and crafting because this is the one I wanted to show you. So it's got the time, Monday, and then it's got all of the times here. So for instance, you can see at midnight, that's when there's the highest viewer average. Uh, but the times leading up to midnight are all really good too. The worst times of the day are here, which starts at 10 a.m. GMT, which is an hour after I start. I start here. Um, and then, yeah, I stream this, 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 this. So I quite literally stream the worst time of day. <laughs> and I'm, a, I'm aware of this. Again, I am a hobbyist streamer, so it makes sense. It makes sense. What tab is this? Research, research. Go into analytics and then click research. Analytics, research. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can't see them, I think, even if I remove them because of the zoom in. I, don't, I believe, yeah, you can't see them. But yeah, analytics, research is what you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh dear. Uh, I am a morning person, so if I did streaming, I'd definitely be at a rubbish time. Oh yeah, for me too. Like, I know I stream at a rubbish time, I, but like, it's a time that I enjoy and I've built, you know, we've built a community based on those times. So for me personally, I don't notice that it's a bad time of day because I've been here for this long and I'm happy about it. I really enjoy what we do here at this time, but I think this is interesting. The other thing is you can see it changes a little bit per day. So you can see it like the weekends might be slightly different. If I were to say, look at Tuesday, the worst time of the day is seven, uh, which is, I believe when Ophi starts. Which again, so just bear in mind, Ophi is someone who is doing very well on Makers and Crafters. So even though they technically might start at the worst time of day on a Tuesday, um, they are doing just fine. <laughs> they are doing just fine and there is no concern there. So it, it, it gets it's difficult, right? Let me get my laptop to take a look. While you stream at a non-ideal time, you're always on the top row. Exactly. So there are definitely upsides. And like, I'll be honest, I just wouldn't change my time. I'm sorry. I really like when I stream because it's like the best time for me. I feel like I'm, I do my best makers and crafters at this time of day. So like, even though Twitch has told me that it's the worst time for like the worst average viewership, I, there's no reason for me to change. I'm happy. I, I like the community we've built and I have a good time here. So yeah, there's no reason for me to change, but this is a thing you can do. The other thing is it'll put like your recent one. So for instance, we played Say the Princess recently and you can see that there are times apparently with a lot more viewers. I think if you see it like this, it tends to be that maybe a much bigger streamer is streaming at this particular time and it boosts the average for the entire category. Uh, so it can sometimes make it a little bit skew with, 
Um, we don't have that so much in Makers and Crafting, but then sometimes certain games do. And you can see there's like, there's some very, very big spikes. Whereas this is maybe a bit more normal, where it's like, there are bad times to play it once again. <laughs> Starting at nine, then 10. Yeah, literally this is the time I played it. It is the worst time to play the game. But again, that's because these are the hours when America's asleep. Uh, and these are the hours when America's awake. And America has the higher viewer space. So if you were looking to go on Twitch, you would want to really be live when you had the highest chance of being viewed, which is generally at these times. But this is all very hypothetical, to be clear. Like, this is something you can consider, but I don't think it should be the main consideration. Because, yeah, it, it, it's, it's one factor in many, many factors, you know? For instance, in my case, I've built up a community that know that I go live at 9am GMT or BST, whenever, you know? Uh, so that we, I go live at about the same time every day outside of like when the clocks change. If I suddenly started streaming at 9pm, 12 hours later, none of my usual viewers would be able to watch. And so I would probably do much worse because of that massive shift. So it's like take everything with a, pain, a pinch of salt in it. Oh dear, I like the time when you stream because it helps me get out of bed in the morning, hell yeah! Stats are important, but your happiness and overwhelming is damn important too. I think it's interesting, yeah. I think stats are really interesting, but it's not everything. Speaking of Say the Princess, got some pretty gory endings yesterday. Oh no. Are you 100%ing it, uh, Shleaves? Oh, also, I should take a break, shouldn't I? It's been. I can't believe it's been an hour. My god, does it feel like an hour to you guys? It definitely doesn't feel like an hour to me. Oh, Saki has got something to show us. All right, we have got some art to show. Let me just get this on stream so you can all see Saki's typography. There it is. <laughs> Hell yeah. Ah, oh, it makes sense why Molly gets a ton of Americans to stream and she always does late UK time. Evening time in the UK is the best time to stream here, to be honest. Um, like, if you are free in the evenings, you hit a really good time. Like you hit like, uh, if you can do late evening streams, you hit the time where all the Americans come off work and it is the perfect time to stream. So yes, there is there is a very good time period, normally in the evenings where you're more likely to get a lot more Americans. Um, and that is, yeah, there's like a little flood of Americans will come onto the platform every evening and that's the best time technically. But again, it, it's not everything. And of course for me in particular, like as a hobbyist, happiness comes first. So that's what I focus on. But like, yeah, if you are looking to grow, especially if you're looking to do things like partner pushes, if you're looking to do, uh, have that massive growth that you'll need, then yeah, picking a time of day where you can meet the most people and get the most followers and stuff like that is kind of important. But it's not important for everyone. It's important for some people, but not for everyone. Yeah. I want to, yeah, yeah! That's really cool, Sleeves, good luck. I hope, I hope you get every single uh, ending as quickly as possible, you got this. My brain just switches off after seven, I'd be useless. Oh, same, Panthera, I'm a morning person. The, the longer the day goes on, the less my brain works. <laughs> also, Saki, this is amazing. <laughs> I don't know if we've made it clear. Beautiful, love the shading, love the outside colors, love the little black lines on the inside. It just looks really, really neat. It looks really, really pretty, very 3D, but still very legible. Yeah, it's, it's just great, it's just great. I don't know what to say. It's just fantastic. It looks lovely. All right. It is then time for me to do my next set, which did I do bands last time or did no, I did weights last time, didn't I? All right, two seconds, it's band time. You, you, I'm still here, but I'm just secretive. I'm being secretive and here. Oh dear. Ooh. But yeah, no, it's difficult, right? Cause we talked about Twitch a lot yesterday. I think there just has to be that happy medium of a time where you're enjoying streaming and it works well for you. Uh, and then again, yeah, if you're considering growing, then doing the stuff that helps you grow, having schedules, even if it's just weekly schedules, having something where people know where to find you. Um, streaming at times when more people are awake is a good idea, but it's not necessary. <laughs> um, there's also posting on social media more, making sure that all platforms are aware that you're doing a partner push, if that's what you're doing, making sure that all if you can get it on all platforms where you're live, that can help, all that kind of stuff. It's a lot, it is honestly a lot. There's a reason I don't do stuff like that and it's because it's a lot and I'm very lazy. <laughs> but a lot of people do do it and yeah, it, 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 does, it works for them. And hell yeah, I think this is the thing, it's, if it makes you happy, then I'm hecking glad for you. I'm hecking glad for you. I just wanna do my silly crafts. <laughs> Oh dear. I'm not going to be able to stream too late because I'll be in a house share. Yeah, that's going to make it a little bit more difficult. Oh dear. Plus, when I'm doing noisy crafting, I can't do that post 8pm at all. So I'll probably have to go back and forth between daytime and evening streams. I think as long as people know when 
to find you like if you have some kind of schedule like even again even if it's just weekly on a weekly basis so that they can kind of get it in their brains when you're going to be there people will be able to turn up it's just if it's sometimes when it's just on the day posting it can be a little difficult for people to keep up but if you've let people know hey this week i can do monday tuesday and friday at these times and the next week i can do wednesday and saturday you know as long as people know and they'll probably try and turn up i think cool. so maybe if i start um a standard of starting around one to two would be fine and i could just cut the stream short when it's noisy stuff maybe yeah i feel like you could do that just fine to be fair, are you planning to do- Oh, actually, you're doing armor crafting, aren't you? <laughs> I'm so used to seeing you do, like, embroidery, and I'm like, what part of that is going to be really noisy? <laughs> but if you're doing- if you're doing armor, then yes, I guess it might- Like, with the sanding and all that kind of stuff, it might pick up a bit more noise. Oof. Okay, we've got two more. We're nearly done. This is- yeah, it's when it gets hard is when it's, like, the last couple. Oh, my god. Oh. And then I got one more. Okay. Oof. Okay. That's me done. Oh, my god. My god. All right. There we go. Where where am I? Where am I? Uh, we're, we're, there you go. <laughs> hello, hello. We're back. We're back. Uh, do, oh, do we have another thing posted in general? Oh, from anime. Okay, we have one more thing to show them. One more thing before we do a bit more crafting, and that is cut out all the stuff for me to make more cups next week. Eee! Look at all these pattern pieces. Look at all these pattern pieces. Look how organized. God damn it, anime. <laughs> Always so heckin' organized, but it's very satisfying though. Well done. That's, I don't like cutting things out personally. I, I find it to be one of the most annoying parts of crafting, so good on you for getting all of it done. Hell yeah. Very, very disciplined. Disciplined. Yeah. Ah, oh dear. Yeah, first few months will be quiet, Zoe, but as soon as I start, it was noiser time. Yeah, yeah. Can't have a schedule at all since we're adjusting my treatment, and it is a bit of an obstacle in my growth, but I hope it'll be easy when my to stabilize. It, it is, and it's, it's unfortunate, but I don't... How to put it it's not a reflection of you and i don't think it's a reflection of your your audience or anything like that it's just one of those things on twitch the more consistent you are the more you get pushed the more you get pushed the more people you meet uh, it is unfortunate however yeah just because you have a section where you can't stay on schedule for whatever reason doesn't mean that that's how it's always going to be and yeah it'll be fine fine plus plenty of people do grow off schedule scheduling is the easiest way to grow on twitch but it's not the only way and there are other things people will do as well. It's not like that's it. Oh dear. Keeping things organized and cutting things helps out a lot. Yeah, like genuinely that looks so nice and neat. I, I always, maybe that's it. It's, I'm too chaotic when cutting everything out and it's it makes it a stressful process. Maybe if I was a bit more quiet and organized and everything, then it'd be less stressful. <laughs> it, could, it could, to be fair, I wouldn't be surprised if I was just making it stressful for myself, really. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I always think Twitch statistic stuff is quite interesting. I'm always interested as well as other people's experiences. You hear a lot about mine here because obviously I'm I'm the streamer and I'm talking 24-7, but I'm genuinely interested in like, are there other ways people have grown on Twitch? Like what other things have you done? I you know, the things that I'll often talk about are like, well, by having more connections on Twitch, by streaming consistently, uh, by but also by like uh, you know taking part in charity events and meeting lots of other people. There's lots of really, really fun ways where you can meet a lot of people. And while you know I didn't do any of the charity events with the thought of growing, it they does help because you meet so many other people. Stuff like that. Ah, oh, but it's difficult. Everyone's everyone's journey is very different, and I'm always curious. Oh dear, you have 47 out of 97. Oh my god. It is such a big game. Such a big game. I should get a lesson on how to be organized on stream one day. Honestly, all of Makers and Crafted should pop in about that, you know? All of that. Oh dear. Uh, I should give a... Oh, sorry. Oh, silly question. On Twitch, about page. Oh god, how do you do that? Isn't it stars? I think it's stars. Let me double check. If I if I try and edit my own Twitch right, it will it will show me what I've done. I think it's the little stars, but let me double check that for you because I'm not a hundred percent sure. Because it's been a really long time since I did it. Uh, let me see. Edit panels. Uh, yes. So I have 
this at the beginning and the end of every sentence I want bolded kind of thing. This. Those. Those things. I don't know what they're called. But the, the tiny stars are at the front of the paragraph and at the end of the paragraph. And they touch. They touch the text. Yes. There you go. Hope, hopefully that's what... I think that's what did it. Yeah, so it's nice and bold. Those ones. Oh, dear. Hell yeah. Uh, infiltrate other communities. Yeah, we infiltrated. We, we, we stormed in. Here we are. And we put our foot down and we, we sat there. The hash is big bold, so stars can make sense. Yeah, it's all right. I don't... I'm sure they have a real name, but they're just the tiny stars. Tiny keyboard stars, you know? Uh, when I get the painting set up, do you want to see how I do it? Because every dying painter does it differently. Yeah, if you want to show pictures of your setup. Well, personally, I don't do dying painting. I imagine other people in the community would be very interested because we do have other people who do do diamond painting here. Asterix, thank you. That is the word, asterix. Yeah, little asterixes. Oh dear, thank you, thank you, Panthera. I say I know they have a name. I do not know what their name is. They are just the tiny stars. There we go. This is right on the edge. This is not going to need a bead. Uh, this probably won't get seen at all, but that's okay. Uh, how to get every crafter to watch your stream? Teach them to be organized. Yeah, we all need we all need a little extra organization in our lives. I think I always think of you and Sunkoi as well though, because Sunkoi also has a very organized stream. Actually, maybe it's just me, because Amazonia's stream is also pretty organized. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> Wait a minute, wait a heck in a second. Yeah, because Amazonia has like whole stream setups for each of their costumes. Sunkoi has like plants growing and like green space around their stream. So it's really nice and relaxing. Anime is everything is just very neat and pristine. Maybe it's me. Is, is this? Uh, I'm the problem, it's me. Oh lord. Oh lord. Oh no. <laughs> oh dear. I mean, could be. It's just me. I remembered it because the main ast uh, co the Asterix comic has a pun in it. I see! Very nice. Yeah, listen, if it helps you remember, it's good. Oh dear, my team is organised and what, what? Oh, in terms of decoration. Yeah, you make it look really pretty and stuff. Yeah, we just whack the design on stream. I have bubbles. <laughs> I like my bubbles very much. Um, but it's not like, I wouldn't say that I have the most organized stream. I think I have a very classic example of someone's stream who has slowly built up over time and it's just becoming more and more full of things. <laughs> like I've just been building it up and it's slowly gathering objects, you know? Ah oh dear. I like it to look pretty. I like looking at people's pretty streams. I know one crafter that's very chaotic compared to my organization. Which one? Which one? Come on, come on, me. Can't leave me hanging. Who is it? Is it vile? <laughs> Wait, is it is it vile actually? Listen, we love vile in this house, and this vile we're big we're big vile stands. <laughs> but there is always a border of chaos on every vile stream. <laughs> oh dear. We love vile, but there is that colourful border of chaos around everything. But that's part of the that's part of the draw, you know, that's part of the the charm of a vile stream. Is that you get to see a little bit of everything all at once. Oh dear. Gazeki cosplay? Uh, Gazeki cosplay? Uh, Gazeki cosplay seems like such a sweet bean though. The times that I have caught their streams, they've seemed really, really nice. I mean, not that Val isn't nice. Val is nice. But Val is also like max chaos. Max, max crafting chaos in every, in every aspect. In what they do, in what they talk about, in their stream setup. It's maximum chaos. <laughs> oh dear. But I think that's kind of charming, honestly. I think there's a charm to a Max Chaos stream. I also think it's very relatable because I'm sure a lot of us, you know, when we get really into a project, everything clean, like everything goes out the window. Like, oh my God, we're so passionate about that one project that we're working on that one time. And suddenly I haven't cleaned up the 10 other things I was working on and my costume's on the floor and everything's everything's hanging up and I'm, I've lost this. And I'm pretty sure I had scissors here, but they've migrated. And where did my needle go? And oh my God, because you're excited about what you're working on, right? So watching people like Vile and Gazeki, where it's like, yeah, there's a vibe there, and I appreciate that, because of that I feel very seen. Ah, oh, there, Lotus, good morning, welcome on in. We have, actually, if you give me two seconds, Lotus, we have nearly finished. We have nearly finished all the neatening. 
and, uh, and I can show you how different it looks to how it looked before, where now it looks really neat and pretty, and we just have to go around the outside with some thread. Uh, we will end up going back and sequining and embroidering it and all that kind of fancy, fancy, schmancy stuff, but that will be not for today, not for today. <laughs> today is, is getting the neatening done, doing the edges, which we still need to do, and all that kind of stuff, and then we'll do the fancy, schmancy stuff another time. <laughs> Oh dear. Although I say that, this is still pretty fancy schmancy, in my opinion. We are not we are not unfancy or unschmancy. Oh dear, they're very sweet. They are! Yeah! Oh dear. Everyone has their own. Everyone has their own method to approaching cosplay. They're all kind of good as well. <laughs> Even if some are a lot more chaotic than others. Mine is, I would say, pretty middle-of-the-road chaos. You know, I do keep all of my cosplay stuff in a little bag. <laughs> Um, but it's not like it's everywhere. It's mainly in the little bag, which I would say is pretty organized for me. Because if I need to find something for this costume, it's probably in the little bag. <laughs> the only problem is it probably isn't the best thing to be putting it in a little bag. Going for a walk in a bit, just post some sewing in Discord, so it may not be there for the next break. Oh no, you're fine. I will look forward to seeing it. I'm sure everyone else will too. Have a lovely walk. I hope that it goes well. And yeah. Look forward to seeing more cosplay stuff and look forward to seeing more House of Dragon stuff when they post more references. Oh dear. Yeah, it was really cool saying that on Twitter because yeah, Amazonia has made stuff from uh, Game of Thrones and House of Dragon before. So there's someone who is like a bit more familiar with all those kind of embroideries and stuff and they're very beautiful, but they are very detailed. And yeah, there's apparently a trailer dropped recently where it had a lot more of the costumes from the next season in it. So I've been seeing, I think probably because Amazonia is liking and sharing things, my Twitter feed is just costumes. I mean, I'm not mad. They're all very pretty. But yeah, it's very funny. All right. There we are. Look at this. Look at this. A neat piece of fabric. Hell yeah. We got it. It's all been neatened. It's very squishy. Very, very satisfying, and there's lots of teeny tiny beads on it, and teeny tiny bows, and it's very pretty, and I'm really pleased, and we just need to sew around the outside now so that it doesn't, it doesn't ruin itself over time, because unfortunately these fabrics have a habit of just ruining themselves over time for no good reason. Oh dear. I have bags and boxes and maps where I keep my cosplay! I have a cosplay I want to make, there's no good at sewing. That's fair. It's one of those things that I think, you know, the more you do it, the better you get. As frustrating as it is, it's one of those things. But if you find something you really enjoy working on, it definitely helps. There you go. Get that through there. Uh, how far along are you in this new playthrough of Stardew Valley? I've played a couple days. I think I'm in summer. Yeah, I think I'm in summer right now. Yeah, we just had the Lao, so it's going summer right now. Yeah. Cloth bubble wrap. It is! You made the full? Oh, you're ahead of me then. I'm in summer still. Neat pieces of my It looks so cool. I still don't understand how you did that! You just gotta... You gotta go in and make all the little knots and stuff and, and eventually it looks like this and I'm really pleased with it. It's really fun. Alright, let's go the whole way around now and just start... Basically, I'm just gonna do like a really simple stitch just to make sure anything in the corner, like up to about a centimetre in, has like a little stitch around it. It's just because the edges like to fly off and get damaged and hopefully that doesn't happen but on the off chance it does I'd rather be safe than sorry because at this point I've already spent like a pretty long time working on it and it would suck for it to get damaged just because like you know a bit of it's sticking out a little much or something or it hasn't been stitched around. So yeah, I'm just gonna do a really simple stitch around the edge so that it stays nice and safe. I've done this with every single piece so far because the first piece I made I noticed a couple pieces got caught and they were really small so it wasn't a really big issue but yeah the thing is like on a piece this big it would suck so we have, we have to be careful neat piece of smock yeah we did it now just to make sure that it never gets damaged ever again ever ever please no flying off no random bits because I, I have sealed the edges with fire but there's probably some bits in here as well that haven't been touched by the fire because there's like the folds and the bows. Oh dear, quick shower thought type thing. Could you make a fidget toy out of the smocking? Uh, with the poking through and back? At this stage, you can't poke it back through. But if you did it at a much earlier stage, you probably could. You'd have to probably wait, like leave it at the bit where the, the uh, what do you call it, the petals are. Because, yeah, if you... Oh, I was going to take a picture of this halfway through, wasn't I? And I completely forgot. 
Oops. I'm sorry, Sleeves. It was a really good idea. I just genuinely forgot. I got distracted. Oh, dear. It's okay, though. We're doing another one. We're doing two of these front pieces, so I have a second chance to remember that. <laughs> but yeah, no, there was... If you if you sort of stopped earlier, you might be able to. But yeah, no, th at this stage, unfortunately, like a lot of the neatening is basically stitching bits in place so they can't move anymore so none of these bits are mobile anymore they're all very very solidly in place which is is good for me because it means i don't have to worry about the fabric moving around as i work on it right but for fidget purposes would probably have lost a lot of its fidgetability fidgetability i don't know what you'd call it like the, the fidgetableness it's lost a lot of its fidgetableness at this point oh dear go also, let me just make sure this is matching the shape of the pattern. Where is the pattern? There it is. Does it still match? I haven't pulled it in any awkward directions. Okay. Yeah, it still matches. Okay, that's fine. It, it looks a little bit taller there, but I think actually, yeah, it's just that. Cool. It's a little bit coming out the bottom, but we can work on that later. It's close enough. It's close enough. And it, I'd rather it be slightly too big than slightly too small. So it's maybe still slightly too big. But so sm so small that we can work on that later. I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about that at all. That's all good. Uh, let's take this and sew all this down. There's also, yeah, there's like a, the folds. Bits like that, having them really lumpy is really annoying. Because then when you try to, to put the edge over it or you try to sew it into a seam, there's like just a lump to work around. So sewing it kind of flat now makes it a little easier. Makes it just a teeny tiny bit easier. How are we doing on time, by the way? Okay, five and a half hours. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of what I assumed, honestly. <laughs> I thought it would take about that long. It is it's a really slow process. I can't wait to go back and add all the sparklies as well. Like we are very much not finished with this just yet. Uh, this will have the same decoration as the sleeves bits, which means all of the the recesses between the big like poofy smock, smock, smocked panels, they are all going to have sequins on them. Uh, they'll have embroidery in them so you'll see all the little stars inside them and then we'll edge it with the same gold stuff but only on the bottom edge and we probably won't actually edge it until after the back's been attached i think just to make sure that everything lines up really nicely so yes we will edge it but not yet uh, i can tie this off here because this bit at the top is really nice it's very very neat and honestly i don't feel like i need to fix that at all it's mainly these bits that i'm more worried about this bit, this bit, and this bit for some reason are really neat, but these bits I'm a bit more worried. You can see they've got like a little weird bits where it's been cut in the middle and I just want to flatten them out a little bit and not have to worry about them so much. There we go. You won't see any of those edgy bits anyway, but still, still, it's mainly this bit to be honest. That's why I tackled that bit first. This bit is not perfect, but it's not bad either. Yeah, the next step will be to do all of the detailing bit on this. But what I have done, I could show you actually, I've I've done the grid on the second bit as well. I said I mentioned I might do it the other day and I did do it the other day. Uh, I just have to find the big piece. Where's the piece? Where are you? Not you, you're scrap. It's you, there you go. So yeah, this is, oh, actually, this is an interesting one. I don't know if it's going to show on screen, though. I can show you the original size of the fabric versus the size that it becomes post-smocking if you're interested. I say if you're interested, I am literally setting it up, so you better be interested. <laughs> oh, dear. I have given you no choice but to be interested. So this is the original size before it's smocked. If you get it close to the camera, you can kind of see the grids on there. So this is the original size before smocking. And this is the size post smocking. <laughs> Look how big it is. It's huge. Massive piece all the way up the end of the desk. I mean, technically it's just double the size, but it is such a big piece comparatively to what it ends up in because you could probably make a whole top out of this for this. But uh, yeah, it, it shrinks a lot. These are, the, it's a good example of it shrinking so much because it gets so much smaller. Yeah, no, this is, this is how much it shrinks by pretty cool it's insane yeah it's, it's a pretty intense that's why i did so much math because i didn't want to waste a lot of fabric like by doing it in a square because i could have just done a massive square but then i would have smocked a lot of stuff that i didn't need to and you can see well, you know over the last week how long the smocking takes you don't want to be doing smocking on things that you don't need to smock because uh you're just wasting hours and hours of your life doing that uh and then yeah <laughs> it just takes a really long time and also wastes a lot of fabric 
if you if you cut it too big so yeah i was like being really careful not to cut it larger than i physically needed like getting it the smallest that i could without going too small like without you know cutting into where the seams and such would be but the smallest i could physically go so that i didn't waste too much fabric and we did the same thing with this of course uh, which is why you can see like the edgy pieces like because all this bit at the end will be cut off eventually like all that so you can see it's still got it's like normal edge on it because i was like well if it's gonna get cut off anyway i might as well just leave it on there i need to rejig the back i'm still not exactly sure how i want to do the back so the back i should probably get some designs for you guys to see at some point because at the moment i don't have anything the back um i, I could do a quick drawing give you an idea of what i'm talking about because i would like to discuss it a little bit and i'd be interested in the people's opinions um doo -ba -doo -ba -doo. let me just that's a sleeve we'll get a new page so the back piece it kind of is in uh this sort of shape where you have like this the arm going over where the neck is the arm and then this and then maybe not to that extent actually probably more like that yeah there you go it's pretty small at the sides and that's kind of ish what the pattern looks like for the back piece very 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 vaguely bear in mind <laughs> not very accurately but sort of uh, and then the idea is it's split down the center because one side is light purple one side is dark purple and then it would be the same smocking as on there but <laughs> it's a pretty big but I want to have a really big emblem in the middle similar to the emblem that you see when you first see, meet the collector where you have this like uh, do i have the picture i maybe do let's see if i have the picture it, actually no i do have the picture somewhere i don't know where i've saved it on my computer is the only issue uh i think if i go into research it'll be in there yeah this one so one of the first times you see the collector they look like this and i effectively want that whole design on the back uh, in, in the circular piece and we're going to be making some resin mold for certain parts of it like each of the bits for the sun and stuff like that so we have some custom bits and bobs to sew on to the back but there's going to be a really big circle just cut out of the back where all of that is right and what i'm trying to work out because this is all going to be smocked at the sides do i make the whole piece smocked and then attach this over the top or do i make a little bit of it smocked and leave a gap around the outside for where the smocking is. Do you get what I mean? I, I don't know if how well I'm explaining this, but I don't know if I should make the whole back piece smocked and then attach it over the top like an applique, or if I leave a space in the smocking, like only smock half of it, and then sew that in as an extra piece, you know? So like cut it into pattern pieces like, like that, with a circle in the middle. I'm not sure because that would make it less 3D. But then it would be so much harder to pattern that. So it's like, do I want to spend more time smocking or do I want to spend more time patterning? And I like both of those things. So I'm not mad about either choice, to be honest. Like I don't, neither of them I hate. But yeah, no, it, it really is a choice of like, do I want to make my life harder with patterns? Or do I want to make my life harder with smocking? Because I feel like neither of them is life easy, unfortunately. You'd leave a space for your sanity. Is that to do with like the amount of smocking though? Or is that to do with, cause that, it would still be hard. It would suck to do all that smocking and then covering it up. Yeah, no, I, I do feel you on that. Like it would suck to do that and then cover it up. The positive would be if I wanted to have breaks in the design to have the smocking show through, I could, but like a lot of it still would be covered and it would be more difficult to do beading and stuff on top of the smocking because it's 3D. But then it, having the, the pe peekaboo smocking bits would be kind of... It's so hard. You can see why I've, st I've struggled with it, because it's, it's still something that I can't quite make a decision on about how I want to do it best. Because I don't mind doing all of the smocking. I also don't mind doing all the pattern work. Both of them are fine. But it's how they'd look in the end would be different, right? Do I want peekaboo smocking panels? Because that's kind of fun. But then it would be much harder to do the rest of the beading and sequining. Or do I want to just have it as a separate piece and the smocking will just cut off around it? I don't know. It's hard. Both is difficult because both have positives and negatives. If only one of them was a worst, like just an infinitely worse choice, then it would be easy. But I like both. But I don't really have... I mean, I technically do have time because there's no deadline. I could technically do both, but it would be a bit of a waste of fabric, so I probably won't. 
I think it'd be fun, fun learning curve for you to do the pattern work, you think? I mean, I've done patterns like that before, so I'm not too worried about that. There's one thing, I've always made my own patterns for cosplay, and I actually really enjoy pattern making, so I don't think that it would be... It, it wouldn't be ridiculously difficult. It's something that I'm used to, if that makes sense. It's not outside of my wheelhouse. Neither of them are outside of my wheelhouse, to be honest. Uh, which, is, again, also makes it difficult, because if one of them was outside of my we wheelhouse, I probably would feel differently about it, but neither of them are. I'm, I'm quite confident in both. But, uh, yeah, it's really just do I want it to be more 3D or less 3D, I guess. Oh. Oh. Not in my thumb, please. Oh, oh yeah, stop it. Sorry. Um, yeah, it's tricky. I get, I think I am leaning towards having the cutout, even though it means I can't have a peekaboo smocking panel, which is like... But then, you know, do I need a peekaboo smocking panel? Probably not. It's kind of ridiculous, honestly. <laughs> but then this whole costume is ridiculous. It would fit so well. Oh my god, yeah, so here I am. Yeah, this is my brain at like, you know when you're about to fall asleep and you're like, hmm, peekaboo smocking panels maybe? And it's like, come on brain, now is not the time to start thinking about stuff like that. But the problem would be, yeah, if I was putting it on top of the, uh, if I did put it on top of the smocking, it would be thick. And I don't know if that's what I want. I mean, it's already going to be thick because of the smocking, but it would, it would, it would be thick. Thicker than maybe I'd want. But peekaboo smocking panel. Oh, god. Hard. Hard, hard, hard. Thinking more of contest too, like you can show off different things, smocking and cool pattern work. Yeah, true. Uh, yeah, it probably would be better for like a competition to do the pattern work. That is true actually, anime. Good point. Well made. Because it is a bit more of- not that the rest of the arms are not complicated. Like, can I hold up a pattern? Where are- where is it? I have this- like, stuff like this just flowing around. Not that the rest of this is particularly simple, you know? <laughs> I just pull out. Can you see all the stitching inside of there and all that? Not that this is simple, but like, you know. Oh, yeah, let me just... Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, this is one of the sleeves. This is the older one version of the sleeves, but I like it a lot because it dips under the arm a little bit more. So I don't know if you can see. They get like a good amount of space under here, which makes... Even though it's stiff, it's actually much easier to wiggle on because I can go down to here without it being too much of a problem. It's not being held up right now, but I can go down to here without it being a problem. But I can also lift my arm up and it like lifts up nicely. Yeah. I like this one more. It's still not perfect, but it was closer. It was a closer arm to what I wanted. <laughs> Oh dear. Boop, 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 boop. I like it. I love my I love my just random I have a few arms just dotted around at the moment because I've been going around other stuff. On the flat fabric and make a faux peekaboo. I could do a faux peekaboo. That's very true. True Panther. And if it was a faux peekaboo, I'd also have more control over which bit you'd see. Because it wouldn't randomly just be popping out. Ah well, yeah, I see, I see. Shows of all the stuff you could do, yeah. Ah. Ah, I see. Okay, okay. I'm liking this, yeah. So we could have... Just do the pattern work so that there's a circle cut out in the middle that's not done via smocking. I can do that pretty... I, I can sort that out in an afternoon, honestly. I'm not too worried about that. And then do the smocking pieces. I can still thicken the bit up in the middle a little bit so it's not super thin comparatively because that would probably warp because the rest of the fabric is quite thick. Um, but then... Yeah, then have the design in the middle and then I could make some very small smocked panels if I wanted to and have them as faux peekaboo. And then if I'm thickening the fabric anyway, I could just cut away at whatever bits are thickened and have those underneath instead. So instead of like a layer of felt, have a layer of smocking in some places and a layer of felt on the others. I can just sort that out based on where the pattern is. I could do that. You're right. You're right. I could. I could. I could have both. <laughs> have everything that I want. Also, Maggie, sorry, thank you for the hydrate. I appreciate it. I want everything. <laughs> yeah, there's no reason I can't have both. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. I like that. I like that. Good, good, good. I, well, I'll have to do some, like, designs of- because I have, like, obviously a vague plan of what I'm doing. You know, I want this in the back, but of how I'll sew it together. And then, and then we can work from there. <laughs> and the Montana, that shit. Yeah, have everything. I want everything. <laughs> oh my god, get a bit of everything. Doesn't Smock tell Yoda his he's his father? I'm pretty sure. But that is that is film spoilers. You grab it, and you know you. Would... <laughs> Someone might not have seen Lord of the Rings yet, so you have to be careful. <laughs> oh dear. I, especially, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I don't want to spoil that for people. All right, let me tie this off because that is actually the bottom. The rest of that's fine. And I think, think that's us done for the day. I think we did it. I think we finished our work. We would, I think we were good productive beans. So this is, yeah, a panel piece for the for the jacket. If I, where did I put the jacket? I think I unpicked it, unfortunately, so I might not be able to show it, but I can get, I can at least show where it sits on me. A little bit of everything, all of the time, yeah. This will go underneath the arm, so it comes down to like where that bit was at the shoulder, and then this goes above, and then you have this, this. This is a bit far across, but I think the reason, the reason this looks like it's a bit far, <laughs> if we're being perfectly honest, is because this is patterned on me when I'm binding, uh, and when you bind, uh, especially for binding for cosplay, you're using a binder, you shift your tits to the side and down <laughs> to make them like look like you have a flat chest, right? Um, and the problem with that is that means that when I've patterned this, there's probably a little bit more in here than there normally would be because I've gone, you know, and I've flattened myself and but there's like they don't disappear so they have to move around. So yeah, it looks like it's going over too far, but bear in mind that it's probably gonna sit more like this because when I'm binding, my chest sits in a different place. It's gonna be a consistent confusion when we're trying things on on stream and things might not fit me so well all the time unless I'm also binding on stream, but I only bind for cosplay so I'm not gonna be doing that regularly anyway because especially coming into summer, uh, I am not that kind of masochist. <laughs> a sewing masochist, yes, but nothing else. Depends on how you're closing it, sometimes it goes over. If you use the buttons, oh, okay. The ones I have anime are the ones you step into and you pull up, and then as you go in, you smush things where you want them. Um, I don't, my ones don't zip or button up. Mine are like, uh, mine are, yeah, like you pull them on. <laughs> you, you have to like pull them over your ass and get them all the way up, and then it's like, whoo. <laughs> I like them very much. I got. I, I. I very much enjoy them. I really. You know. I used to, especially when I was in university, just randomly wear them sometimes because, like, you know what? Sometimes outfits just look better when you're binding, and I don't know why. They just do. The problem is they are very warm. Very, very warm. You know, you can get used to the feeling of wearing them, but they they do be heating you up. Oh no, the jacket. I see. <laughs> I was gonna say like I. I've, I've never seen a a button binder. That's new to me. I mean, I'm not disinterested, but I haven't seen it. All depends when you're closing. Yeah. So the, the, the clasp will be here. They will line up pretty much on the dot, but the clasp is quite big. So it covers that entirely. So you won't see the bit right in the middle, but they will be lining up because I'm going to have uh, hidden underneath the clasp, like three hooks basically, that they can just ding, ding, ding. So that it's relatively easy to take it on and off, even for me, because when I'm wearing the costume, I'm wearing a mask that covers my eyes. So looking down to try to undo things might be a little bit difficult if it's like anything complicated. So little hooks would probably be best uh, and they can be very much hidden behind the big clasp in the center that way i don't have to worry about it i don't have to worry about it i can still see and i can still do it but yeah i'm very pleased with this it's 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 cool i've seen someone make a bindy corset style though really oh that sounds a binder corset style i'd love to see something like that that's really interesting what an interesting take hell yeah I'd love to see how that made people look as well. I think that would be really, really cool. Let me switch back to this screen. You've seen where it fits on the body. You've seen the color it's meant to be. It does look a bit more blue in this screen, but that is, that done. We have the other one to do. We still have the sequining to do as well, but we won't be doing that today. That will be for another day. In the meantime, though, we do have our, our last Discord share of the evening. And I believe, yeah, Amazonia has finished one sleeve. Look at all of these stitches. <laughs> Oh my god, so many stitches, so many. And they've been doing this constantly, they've been doing this everywhere. Whatever this costume is, it has a lot of these like Y-shaped stitches all over it. And very, very detailed. I mean, there's a lot of this. I see them find the YouTube. Yeah, if you, if you happen to spot it anime, I'm sure it's not just me. I think a lot of people would be really interested. I mean, a lot of people do express their different gender identities via cosplay and something like a binding corset. I feel like that could give you something really interesting if that's what you wanted. Even if it was just like for casual wear, maybe maybe costume, maybe whatever you wanted. I'd be interested. I'd definitely be interested because it's a little different. Also, this is really, really nice. It's all, all of Amazonia's work is absolutely lovely and flawless and beautiful, but it, it, it is in fact lovely and flawless and beautiful and no one is surprised, but it's really, really nice. Oh dear. All right, I think 
I think that's us done for the day. Uh, in that case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be like, stick around everyone, stick around. I'm going to find a sweet bean and we're going to raid into someone else. And so you can spend the rest of the day with them or until they raid on. DJ. And then DJ! CJ, thank you for the DJ. And then it'll be with somebody else. And then maybe it'll be with somebody else after that. And then potentially even maybe somebody else. All right, let's see who is live and who is doing what. Uh, and how long have they been live for? Ooh! Is, is Kels making socks in a fish tank? Inside of the fish tank? Do you guys want to go watch Kels make some socks inside of a fish tank? That might be fun, right? Oh dear. All right. Thank you for the stream. No, thank you so much for joining. Thank you everyone and for like helping me bounce ideas and for chatting with me. Uh, I am going to not be here now until Monday. Monday. Yeah, I'll, I'll be gone till Monday. So I'll be gone for just two days this time. <laughs> and then next week, hopefully we can do a normal schedule, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Sock. It is time for sock. <laughs> We're gonna be raiding, raiding Kells, who is making the good sock right now. Take care, no, it was lovely to see you again. Thank you so, so much. Take care, everyone. Take care, Panthera and Grobbit and Eoden and Clues. Uh, take care, have a lovely weekend. I'm gonna go eat some cheesecakes. <laughs> <laughs> See you soon. Bye bye. And if you're on the YouTube, thank you so, so much for helping me get my uh, YouTube hours up. I really, really, really do appreciate it. It goes a really long way. Thank you so much. And I'll see you.